Gentlemen, welcome to Force Guy. Make some noise for yourself. It's time to leave it on the line. It's time to get onto the main stage. Now we should get higher. Make some noise for the Air Force. We are going to dive into the action. You called it that first hill right there in the bottom bit. What a game and what a series. Xavier Woods here in the building. To the MVP. And that is coming. to have a perfect tournament, okay? Give it up for the Air Force one more time! What's up, everyone? We are live from the Boeing Center at Techport here in the heart of San Antonio, Texas. My name is Fighter Tip, and I couldn't be more thrilled to welcome you all to ForceCon, the Sport Council's official esports event of 2024. Now, before we jump into all of today's action, we will be having five branches of the U.S. Armed Forces duking it out in some Call of Duty action. So we do know that the Army and Air Force Gaming may be the reigning champions, but here's the deal, guys. We could see a new branch emerge victorious here at the U.S. Armed Forces Esports Championship. So I was proud to invite you guys all in to the third annual Armed Forces Esports Champion. So we got to make some noise. Let's go, y'all. I already mentioned our branches, but let's get them out on the stage. Let's meet our competitors, kicking things off with the Army. Delivering ready combat formation, continuous transformation, strengthening the profession. Now give it up for the Marine Corps, fighting side by side. They protect our nation and the advancement of its ideals. Next up, we have the Air Force, focused on providing next generation air power for today's sport. The newest branch, Space Force, solidifying freedom by securing our nation's interest to and from space. Last but certainly not least, give it up for the Coast Guard, ensuring the nation's safety by protecting our maritime interests. Give it up for our competitors here on stage. Thank you all so much and everyone. Before we begin all of today's action, I would like to ask you guys to join us in respecting our nation with the national anthem. If you are sensitive to loud noises, this is the time here to make any necessary arrangements because they will be coming to you live from the Tesla coils over on my left.
Thank you all, and thank you to our competitors live on stage. I'm excited to see which one of you will emerge victorious at the end of today's event. Now, I do have a very special guest that will be joining me live on stage for some opening remarks. Everyone, please welcome in Colonel Carolyn Ammons, Commander, Air Force Services Center. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is great to be here to celebrate the third annual Armed Forces Esports Championship. We have 20 gamers, five branches, a number of ambassadors, bases, and support from around the Air Force. Thank you for being here. This is a competition of sportsmanship, elite gaming prowess, and camaraderie, and it is a great event to be here for the Air Force today. I'd like to thank just a couple of folks who helped put this on. First of all, our Department of Air Force Esports team, all of our service representatives from each service, the Rally Cry team, Techport, and all those who had a hand in making today a success. So ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready and have some fun. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Thank you once again, Carolyn, for joining us up here on stage. Guys, that just means the action is about to get underway, which means we need to throw it over to our casters. Vision, Seymour, take it away. Thank you so much, Fighter Tip. That was an excellent introduction here and a great way to kick off the show. Of course, I am Visions. That is Seymour. I am amped up. I'm fired up. How are you feeling, buddy? I'm ready. The crowd's ready. The venue's ready. I think it's a good day to crown a champion, Austin. I like that. I mean, we are certainly going to get there. It's going to be a bit of a long day, but hey, that's what we're here for. It's going to be a lot of great Call of Duty played out on the day as well. So let's take a look at how everything's kind of taken place up towards this point. We obviously did have a bit of a round robin yesterday. We are going to show you you guys a bit of that bracket and take a look at everything that did in fact take place so of course number one army coming through with the 4-0 they looked very clean and those guys are certainly looking like the favorites the army on top i mean the defending champions of force con from last year's action on halo space force and number two three and one it trickles down air force marines and the coast guard and you can see that marines and coast guard they got a lot of work to do today yes. to get through and be a champion at force con you know day one Brown Robin might not be your day, but here in the bracket, when you're on the main stage, when you're looking across at your opponents, you can maybe talk a little bit of trash. <laughs> it's time to turn things around. That's right. You're going to have to if you're going to want to try to have a chance at being able to make a run. Also important to note that you do have a secondary chance if you do drop out, so we'll have to see how they're going to be able to perform, but certainly a lot of expectations coming in towards today. We'll take a look at our schedule as well to see everything that we do have planned throughout today. And as you can see, we will be kicking off our very first match, Marine Corps, up against Coast Guard. Those guys will be set the tone for the day, Colin. A lot of Call of Duty. A lot of Call of Duty that we're going to be looking at across the schedule. As you can see, you know, like you said, Marine Corps, Coast Guard, to start things off. And then Space Force versus Air Force. You know, a rivalry <laughs> in Air Force gaming that has kind of been around for a long time. And I think that's going to be uh, quite a spicy matchup to be looking at. Yeah, I love that. It certainly will be. Also, we will mention that these will be best of three. So just like played out during the round robin yesterday, there are best of threes. But when we get to that winner's final, as well as that grand final, that is when we will get ourselves to those best of fives. And you take a look at the road here, it's gonna be a bit of a long journey, right? You got a lot of games you're gonna have to win if you want a chance of making it to that grand final con. Yeah, and starting off with round one, Marine Corps versus Coast Guard, everybody already getting set up on stage. This is kind of your time as the number four, number five seed at the bottom of the leaderboard from the standings of yesterday to step up. You don't wanna be the first team in the losers round one match. You don't wanna have to fight through that gauntlet of action and I think it's going to be a fun one to see these two match up. Man, I can't wait. Great way to kick off the day, like I said, but now it's time to welcome in Marine Corps as we take a look at their content piece. First name's Eric, last name Calderon. Oh man, how I created it. I, I don't even know. I just switched it to Frizzy and I think it's been like that for a couple years. My name's Sergeant Damon Stern. My in-game name is Schnapp, but I didn't know how to spell it because I was like six when I made it. Staff Sergeant Zach Shanahan. One of my favorite things was playing like zombies. I would just play Origins all day long and I called myself the Origins God. So that's where my nickname, my game attack comes from. My name is Kevin J. Ronquillo. My IGN is Spiffy. You know, Google search auto-generate the name. I just stuck with it. So I saw like a tweet, a random tweet saying, Marine Corps Gaming takes map two off of Team Notorious. I was like, wait, I didn't know this was thing. I could've been doing this the whole time. I've been heavily invested in like Call of Duty, like esports and all that. I saw them on Twitter one day and I'm like, what? And just now knowing they have a 
Call of Duty team. It gives an opportunity for us, not only for the Marine Corps, but other branches to get involved with other people. It's like a culmination of like all the work that we've been putting in like behind the scenes for the past couple of years. So it actually means quite a bit. I think all of us are pretty excited for it. These two came in uh, after the Toronto Major last year when we almost pulled off the impossible and beat two seed as a 63. I'm main sub right now, so just hitting the routes, you know, doing all the snaky things and playing my life. But not snaking, because G is, yeah, not that. <laughs> we all rely on him whenever we lose a map or lose composure, he like talks to us like, hey, like, don't worry about it too much, just focus on the next map, we'll do better. He's like our SND guy. So maybe he plays SND all day, so that's all he does. He kind of like gives us like the little ins that's going on during the SND scenes. I want to play Flame. He's on the, he's army. on the army. Yeah, me and him, we, we go yeah. way back, we know each other. So that's that's like a good matchup that I want to play against. Yeah, we're, we're about as right as we can be. And now, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Marine Corps to the stage. No eyes in basic training. These players know teamwork like the back of their hand. Not an ideal day one, one in three series count, but that's not the Marines that we were prepared to see, Austin, today. Cryo joins back in the team for the bracket, and I'm sure they're letting us know that they're going to be very vocal about making that run to the championship. Yeah, absolutely. We take a look at that roster that we do, in fact, have for you guys. And uh, this is a very strong squad. Like you said, they were without their fourth. They were playing with their coach yesterday. So hard to have a lot of expectations because, you know, their coach hadn't really played the game a whole lot in the last couple months. But they were still able to get themselves to these one map win. And you can take a look at this squad. This is going to be the team that is coming out here looking to try to make a big impact and really try to take down this squad and see if they can maybe pop off and come away with a clean series. And I'm excited too. I mean, for this Marine team, we got to see, you know, all the way back in 2022 when they were on stage for Halo. The crowd was behind them. They were electric on stage, making waves here at Forest Con. And I think for this Call of Duty team, although they might be starting in winner's round one, I think they're going to be looking to make a deep run. Well, we've introduced one team. Let's introduce their opponents. Let's give it up here for Coast Guard and take a look at their content piece now. My name is Steve Medina. IGN is Grand Puba. Back when I was growing up, we were boxing in the backyard, and I heard someone just say, oh, here comes the Grand Puba. My name is Benjamin Terminal. IGN's Trimsky. The last name's Terminal, and everybody in my uh, unit in New Orleans just called me Trimsky. My name is Troy Bowersox. I had one buddy, and he just randomly started calling me Trizzy. You know, the TR, I guess, kind of connects. And then I added the 6-7 kind of as a node to my uh, area code back in New York. First name is Nazir. Uh, my last name is Jones. So my IGN is actually super simple. It's my name with the number three. People use like all these creative names, but I just wanted something super simple and resembled me. Force Con means a lot, you know, they show us a lot of support. This is a chance to show all our skills that, you know, we can actually compete at the highest level. The event speaks for itself. The professionalism, the environment, and the opportunity, and the locations that you get to travel. I've created a bunch of friendships through just gaming in the military. People that I would have never been stationed with and I would never, never have talked to. For a lot of us, it's just an opportunity to, to disconnect and kind of zone out and do something we enjoy. We play Warzone mainly, so CDL is kind of new to us. We're kind of just trying to flex everything. Everybody's trying something new. We know each other's strengths from Warzone. We don't necessarily know each other's strengths from, from multi, so hopefully today we can scrim as many teams as possible. I mean, we just scrimmed the Air Force and they kick flipped us, so. <laughs> as soon as he can get his settings right. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot, a lot of bickering about my settings, so we're trying to figure that out. But we should be good now. Usually we just tell Steve he's terrible. <laughs> That's about it. He delivers. Oh, come on. <laughs> he doesn't want to 1v1 me. He knows us a lot. That's not a team player right there. He knows, he knows, he knows I think, us I think a lot. we all have our moments. So <laughs> I'll, I'll just say that. Everybody has their moments, you know? My name is... I love that content piece. Just a lot of vibes, right? A lot of passion. We'll see if they can try to bring towards some of that here as we bring them out to the stage.
for in round robin, but don't underestimate the perseverance of our Coast Guard. This team is looking for a change in the bracket and make a wave at ForceCon. This team has been very vocal that if they do come out and win, <laughs> take a map off of any of the teams here that they're playing up against, they're going to get up and get loud for the crowd. So that's what I want to see. I want to see some upsets today from Coast Guard. Absolutely, man. They said if they're going to take a win today, they're going to get loud, like you just said, and I want to hear them get loud too, Colin. That's what we're here for, man. I already said we saw a lot of passion in that video. A lot of vibes, man. I love to see that. So we'll see if they can bring some of that towards Call of Duty. But let's take a look at their roster a little bit more in depth here. Uh, like we had kind of set up, these guys are a little bit more Warzone or Warzone oriented. So they haven't really had a ton of time coming in uh, for as far as getting prep for CDL, playstyle, you know, competitive, whatever it might be. But at that same cost, we'll see exactly what they're going to be able to do, especially learning after maybe some of those reps uh, after yesterday as well. Yeah, it's a different game for sure. And as they were saying in their content piece, they want to get as many scrims as possible. Exactly. They want to get comfortable with the game. And if they can get comfortable with the game and click, I think that is the scariest thing for any of their opponents to kind of look at. Agreed. You don't want to let this Coast Guard team get comfortable, get ready to go, because <laughs> I mean, it's a uh, uh, tournament like ForceCon, it's all about the camaraderie of these teams yes. and these players. They know how to be in these stressful situations. They know how to adapt, to change, and I think for Coast Guard, that's what we're going to be looking at today. Well, we'll see if they can do it. Let's take a look at the map set and everything that we do have prepared here for you guys coming in. And also important to note, they did play yesterday, so we did get a little bit of a sample size, actually, you know, between both of these squads. They did opt in to play you know, a little bit of Six Star yesterday. That was kind of their, their double dose of it, so we'll see exactly what they might have planned, what they might have prepped coming in today. And on top of it, I felt like they were showing us good glimpses, you know, in Search and Destroy. But the they hard were. point, that's going to be the big thing I think that they're going to have to improve on. And here we get to take a look at the map. Six Star Invasion, Invasion. Yesterday in round robin when these two went up against each other, it was that double dose of Six Star. Yes. Coast Guard, they, or they lost it. The Marines, they take it. 250 to 75 on the Six Star hard point. Six to one in the Six Star S&D. Right. And heading into today, that's one thing that I wanted to see from the Coast Guard. I wanted them to change the map set away from that six star search, go into the invasion search and destroy where they took the Air Force six to four. It was a deep game. They had so many chances to win it out. The team looked a lot better in those search and destroys. And if they can make it to that control, that's uncharted territory for the Coast Guard so far in this tournament. So the sky is the limit for the Coast Guard if they can make it to that map three. I love that you bring that up because we haven't really seen a whole lot of control so far. So, you know, for as far as judging some of these squads and how they're going to be able to perform in that third game mode, you know, that is really just completely blank for us. So we'll see exactly what that will look like, how teams will be prepared. And again, how are they going to be able to stand up to the pressure here today as well? Yesterday, a little bit of a different atmosphere in the round robin. Today, it is a different look and you don't know how players are going to be able to perform. So who knows? These guys might be able to step up in a big way. But on the other side, Marine Corps, these guys got their fourth. They're coming oh, yeah. back in. I mean, you got to just imagine the morale is, is completely different from yesterday. I mean, the amount of times that they came up to me and they said, hey, we got our new fourth. We're going to make that championship run. I couldn't <laughs> even count it on one hand. It, they are so confident. They're letting us know. It, it's just, it's something you love to see from a team where, you know, you're one and three in series count after the round robin. You know that you can turn things around in the bracket. It, you know you have the team to get it done yes. and the big thing about the Marines is that this is the core team that they played Halo with in mm. previous force cons so the fact that they're going to be able to come over already with that chemistry on stage have that experience at right. force con it is something that you just cannot teach a lot of players when they're reaching that main stage for the first ever time so for me I'm ready to see them get locked in I'm ready as well, man. This is going to be a great look for as far as this first matchup and how they're going to be able to try to get the work or the job done, rather. So getting into it, man, it's going to be very exciting. You did play six star yesterday. I think one of the key takeaways we were watching is that the breaks and the rotations simply just weren't exactly up to par. Those are the things that I'm hoping that they were able to take a look at, maybe work on yeah. coming towards today and just try to be a step ahead because this team that's you know, going up against you might look to disrespect you a little bit after <laughs> yesterday, right? They might be ego challenging, might be they running could. at you if you can prepare for that that could be your window to try and to let's upset be honest this match. I, I mean the six star it changed the hard point rotations they changed and there wasn't a lot of time for teams to really scrim it heading into four squad and you know over the week you get the vods from playing in the round robin you can look through them last night figure out what changes need to happen where you know marines maybe found their strengths and let's see if coast guard can make those adaptations as I mean, crowd, it's ready. We got Force Con game one ready to go here. Six star hard point loaded in. I am ready, Colin. 
Six Star, one of the newer maps added to the competitive rotation here for Call of Duty, but it is starting to become a fan favorite. And we'll see if anything changes from yesterday as we get right into the action. Marine Corps up against Coast Guard. Let's get into it, Colin. You can see already that the side of uh, the Marines starting on the better side when it comes down to the spawn, something that you're going to be looking at these red arrows to control that side of the map. Well, they're looking for some time here in P1. Schnapps is going to open up with the first blood. A little bit of team kill there from Marine Corps, but they get two down against the Coast Guard, and now they're soaking up some hard point time. Looks like a solid start so far. Remember, rotation is a huge factor when we talk about this map mode combination. But so far, 50 seconds secured. Frizzy looking to try to finish off one. Pistol will get the job done, but he's lost some of his teammates around him. So, a lot of work now required. Second one, no problem. Looking for the third. Teammate going to be able to find the trade. And this looks like a solid opening so far for Marine Corps. And the game just started for Coast Guard. They can't get in their heads here. You don't want to throw too many bodies. You want to focus on the rotation. You're going to see Trimsky hop in to contest. Maybe deny some time here from the Marine Corps into the P2 rotations. But a couple of those Coast Guard members, they tried to hit that P2 roto. They get shut down over towards the outside pool of the map and Marine Corps with an unanswered 40 seconds to open up this game they're looking for more as they're starting up for the uh, the initial you take a look at some of those spawns and it looks like everyone's gonna be forced through the pool side so not gonna be the easiest of breaks we're gonna have to go sooner rather than later we'll see if they can try to get that job done and well so far it's just trades that have come on through one more player in the back that is player number six Trizzy trying to get something done. Stun will connect. He's good for one. And now he's got support with him as Nazir is able to back him up and they'll fight for the remaining 30. Coast Guard starting to get things going here. 30 seconds to fight for Schnapps in the back. Nice transfer, but Trimsky shuts him down. Still back and forth on the Coast Guard there, fighting tooth and nail to get some time on the board here in P2. Jay's going to take one last shot at it. Another trade off of Trizzy. And Schnapps in a 1v1 to maybe get the scrap time. It's going to go the way of Marine Corps. They get the last 10 seconds. And and Cryo is already dominating the Roto over towards P3. Marine Corps, they can do nothing wrong. Have to win these gunfights, and that's a good first engagement. Trimsky trying to get some more work done. More players behind him, but they are slowly getting picked off. Frizzy in the back gets two. Jay able to break in for another one, and wow, that is just as clean as you'll ever see it. Marine Corps able to find just about every single member, and they're already pushing out, fighting and contesting through the middle of the map. This is important, too. Uh, Hill, like P3, there's lots of points of contact for the team trying to break to hit this one. I like the fact that Marines are spreading out, finding that space, fighting in those lanes, and winning those fights as well, really dominating themselves in the hill. 30 seconds remaining, you gotta make a big important decision here. Do we hit this? Do we rotate? And well, they are just not able to get inside. Body shots almost looked like they were coming through for a second, but another four down. Coast Guard struggling to find any footing so far here on six star hard point. 110 to just four points. Coast Guard gotta set up a new. That Coast Guard, they need a break. They need a rotation to go their way, and they need to start winning some of these gunfights because Marine Corps, they look so confident here on six star. Jay's gonna get cut down just before that cruise missile. Can't be acquired for another tool in the arsenal of the Marine Corps. Trimsky, big win there on the rotation. Now a little bit of pressure onto the player and Hill. Stun's gonna hit. This would be a big win, but Jay laying down, waiting. The shots come out. Jay's gonna stay alive, play his life, and it's another three down for Marine Corps. It's just the sub pressure, isn't it, right now? You can just see it, 13 and 6, 10 and 4. There is just nothing really happening in these close quarter engagements right now for Coast Guard. And that, of course, is a, a huge problem because they're unable to break inside of the hill. So I might have to even look at some weapon swaps potentially coming through. Whatever it might be, Coast Guard only limited to six points and even the scrap time struggling to try to secure it. But that will be a trade. And finally, it looks like Coast Guard are going to soak up a bit of time. Yeah, a bit of time, but it's not going to be enough to feel comfortable. You have to look to the rotations. And Trimsky, not going to expect the player hiding in the corner. Schnapps playing a little ratty there exactly what you need on a map like it's six star to make sure you can lock down these lanes but i like this call course guard they pull some spawns in towards the back nasser's gonna be able to set up a pinch when jay goes down so a little bit of map control for coast guard it gets snuffed out and that's gonna allow marine corps to set up here in p5 all right have to ask for a quick break need it now more than ever we're getting close towards the game end that will be at 250 points and well jay slaying out spawns coming through in the back will this be enough to try to influence the point you're gonna have to go you have to fly there's no chance for errors here for the coast guard but there's no chance to get anything going marine corps they're making sure of that 
Rampuba is going to break in one last time, but it's immediately traded back to Schnapps for the last little bit of scrap that you're looking here to push yourself over to the 200 point marker, put closer to a map win here on Six Star. And this is looking a lot better than the Marine Corps team that we saw yesterday. They look like they have stepped it up with Cryo joining in. Oh, have they ever? Stepping up at a different level, and they are showcasing it here. It is 186 to 29. It has only been scrap time that Coast Guard have been able to secure. Those early rotations have not yet been won. And if you're not winning rotations, well, you're simply just not going to win hard points. Back to P1 we go. Looking at just another hill or so, and that will lock things in for Marine Corps, and they're looking good for it. Crowd's got a streak. That's going to make things even harder for Coast Guard if they do get a break, if they have the rotations, but... You can't lose it here, and I think that's the important part for Coast Guard. They can still hold on to the rotations. Wow. They just cannot win the fight. Schnapps on four in a row, 16 and eight. Dominating the rival fights, dominate the MCW fights. Marine Corps dominating this game. Frizzy watching through you. Last chance here for Coast Guard to break this P1 hill. They need to flood through. They need to flip these spawns. It's eight in a row right now for Cairo. Like this guy is on one. 20 seconds left, you're almost forced to fight for it. Coast Guard are gonna give it a look, struggling to try to find the trades, but they do get themselves in for a second, but Frizzy, there for two! Hey, oh, he makes it a third, nasty snap. Can he get all four? Doesn't have the ammunition in the clip, but the job is done, and that will now be another rotation in play. We'll see if they can try to lock down the game right here at P2. And look how far Coast Guard have to run across the map just to get to P2, and along the way, they're losing bodies. Cryo's making sure nobody can touch this <laughs> hill. His team's soaking wow. up all the hard point time marines they want to put it away now it looks like they're gonna one final attempt through the back nazir able to get himself one through the middle looks like trades are decent but is it going to be decent enough for the break you have to fly you have to go five seconds for the win one final attempt looking for the contest pops up gets him off the point for a second frizzy trying to line them up there's one gets the second frizzy trying to put him in a body bag and his teammates there for the assistance no one can get a touch in marine corps they come out firing what a game from the Marine Corps six star. It is home to some beasts. They change up, Cryo comes in, and they have stepped up to a new height in this round one matchup. They take it in a 100 point club. They don't allow Coast Guard to get anything going whatsoever. And even looking back at that 250 to 39, I mean, you couldn't ask for a better way to kick off the day if you're Marine Corps. Yeah, that is a heck of a way to kick off the day. And I mean, the stats, like, Looking at those, doesn't even look real. Everybody going just about double positive or even triple positive. Like, that is absurd. And it comes back to the sub pressure, doesn't it, Colin? That it does. overwhelming close quarters engagements that are taking place throughout the map. And it feels like they were unable to win a lot of those gunfights. They were getting pieced up. It was always giving them a huge opportunity to really win those rotations. And they came out on top. Yeah, and I mean, even when the subs weren't even heating up, you had a player like Frizzy towards the end there. You get a little bit of scrap time if you're Coast Guard and Frizzy watching from the outside in to cut down those players, make sure that Coast Guard couldn't get really any time, even in the scrap time. And right. it's just a snowball effect after that when you're getting dominated through the middle of the map and you just cannot get any control of rotations. Marine Corps just keep on winning fights. They keep on feeling more comfortable. Comfortable. The, I mean, the cruise missiles come in too. They didn't even need to use them. They were going yeah. on so many streaks. And for Coast Guard, it's just one of those moments where you have to look back at that game and wipe it out of your memory. It just didn't happen. You're going into the search and destroy now. We know after seeing them yesterday in the round robin, they're not the strongest hard point team here inside of ForceCon, but in search and destroys, they're a different beast. And I think that Coast Guard, they can kind of put that one behind them, right. move on into the next game. We could potentially see a brand new face. We definitely could. We'll take a look at that map set here again and show you guys what we have coming up. And it will be a double dose of invasion for the map number two as well as the map number three if we get there. And you already framed it up very nicely. These guys, I feel like, are a little bit slower, a little bit more methodical, and that would maybe suit a little bit more of a Warzone play style. We have to pick your fights and choose yeah. them a little bit better. And this is kind of where we saw them yesterday. Find some success, have a couple of clutch ups, but also get clutched on here and there too. So the key thing that I want to see them do is make sure they're trading out. If they're in those 1v2s, those in 1v3s, they're getting the man advantage. Let's not throw it away for free. Let's close 
close out those rounds because those are the ones you're really going to need to take down a squad like it, this. It's such a different game when you're going from Warzone into multiplayer because you have less resources to manage in a respawn and more to do when it comes down to the objective. In Search and Destroy, you have less to do with the objective. It's very straightforward. Right. You hit the site, you use maybe one smoke, a couple stuns, you get a first blood, you get that control right away. You don't have to worry about those players respawning again. Absolutely. And when you don't have to worry about the overwhelming resources in a hard point or even in a control, that's going to allow these Coast Guard players to kind of really de delve deep into that teamwork, that camaraderie that they do have across the Warzone tournaments that they have played together and try to let that shine. And a lot of the executes that we saw in Invasion, they love hitting this A site. They love making sure that they can get that bomb down right away. And the retakes weren't even that bad yesterday either. So sure. I think this Coast Guard team heading to Invasion, they're setting themselves up for success to try to make it to that control. Well, first one. Completely in control for Marine Corps, but this is a totally different map mode combination. So could we see some life for the Coast Guard boys? Come out and see if they can try to get us to a map number three. We're going to find out, but we're jumping right into it. Attacking first here. Looks like it is, in fact, going to be our Coast Guard boys, or excuse me, Marine Corps, as they try to get some info on the cross, and they bring that bomb over towards B. One thing you got to think about, if you're going to be a champion here at Force Gun, is those mid-round adaptations. Teams at the top, Army, Air Force, they're already doing that. They showed it yesterday in the round robin. So for Coast Guard and Marine Corps, this is a good time to kind of showcase what you've been working on. It's going to be that hit to B. Smokes go out to block off Ice Cream. And Cryo now looking to see if you can find a first blow, but it's going to go the way of Coast Guard, Marine Corps. Going to lose out on Frizzy. Oh, big flank in the back here that they're going to have to be worried about. Also a lot of pressure from the front. Bomb is now down, though. Decent positioning on the site. Tracks are being held. Cairo able to just beam one with the help of his teammate, and now it's going to turn into a three versus two. That flank will not work out for a second, and this is about 30 seconds left on the clock to play retake. And now Cryo's got to wait because Tracy, or sorry, yeah, Tracy's going to make that flank, so Nasser's got to wait for this flank to unfold. You got the numbers advantage if they're Marine Corps. And team kill comes through, so maybe a chance to get this win if you're the Coast Guard, but it's a well thought out defense. Once you get that bomb down, the post plant is perfect for the Marine Corps. You take care of Grand Poopal on the flank and that's kind of the round in your hands very clean right there was a good flank that came through but they do an excellent job of dealing with it making sure that, that player does not combine for a second and once you eliminate that flank well you just simply just have to focus on the front it's exactly what they do they push out and they're able to get the job done clean first round now coast guard looking for their first attacking round so what are we going to see from the coast guard because again b was their site of choice a lot of the time and Seems like that's not going to change right now. The bomb leading over there. They're going to leave uh, Trimsky to get that info on the cross. Tracy's going to get caught with a little bit of info. So that's going to stall out this attack. And, and that's going to allow Marine Corps to set up in towards dark, allow this flank to unfold. And Coast Guard have to be careful not to be some deer in the headlights right now. They need to move. I agree. They're really bunching up at the moment. And you can see it. Trizzy trying to look for that entry. Still one player on the site, but Jay's able to find one. In the middle of the map, that's going to combine for a second. Trizzy can't get anything in the front of the site. Now Nazir forced to try to get something done in the back. One player has snuck into DVD. That's going to make this push even more difficult here for Coast Guard. Stuck in towards Treehouse. Nazir is going to look to bring things back. Trinsky is going to take up the player on towards the tank. Couple good shots, but no kill. That's the information for Marine Corps to sit up and collapse together. Nazir is going to go down. Trimsky in a 1v4. Good luck. Have fun, my friend. And then you kind of just get bunched up, right? No one's attacking with Trizzy at the front of the site, so it allows for a free 1v1 engagement. Gives them everything they need to create the numbers advantage. And once you find that first one, they slowly collapse. They get into DVD. That DVD position is so critical when the defense is able to get inside there because it pinches you off from getting inside of the site. And you can see just how difficult it is to make your moves when you start losing those numbers without trades. And that was Jay opening up. Three in a row from Jay after that first blood or that kill in back in round number one. Uh, on his way to maybe a kill streak. Schnapp, same situation, 3-0. and oh. Fantastic start for the Marine Corps. But that's when Coast Guard, you didn't have the trophies. You get caught in the utility, it happens. To forget about it, move forward. And Nasser's okay. going to open up with the first blood. A cryo traded by Jay. Three versus three. And this is where the DVD pinch is going to come through. Grant Poob a little too quick to it. Frizzy's going to catch him. That's a huge gunfight. Still, though, trying to work through the flank. I like the idea of trying to pinch them off. Just kind of like what happened to them the round previous. 
And now a bit, bit of a rotation going to come through. Numbers advantage again for Marine Corps. And Jay's also working towards a streak. We know an important cruise missile could be a surge. Oh, just barely misses out on those final couple bullets to finish off the kill. Can he track him down? Yes, he can. Trizzy can't slip away. And now it's going to be a 1v3 for Trimsky. And you see that B site's hard to retake with four players. Try the A site with one player. Soon as you peek out, Marine Corps, they're posted up. They're waiting. And that's three unanswered rounds into the invasion. Still struggling a little bit is this Coast Guard, and it comes down to a lot of those timings. Coast Guard want to fly. They've made that they known. Do. Grand Pooba has tried to hit that DVD flank twice in a row. Both times gets caught on the flank, and that kind of shuts down all the map control that you have. On the other side, Marine Corps, very patient. The way that they're kind of trying to funnel these players into a trap, and once they do spring that trap, you see that adaptation and the rotation over towards A. They get the bomb down. They flip the map, knowing that there's two players kind of postured over towards that B site. And I think that Marine Corps are just showing a whole lot of communication, a whole lot of knowledge on how to play this map. This squad looks completely rejuvenated as they have come in with their fourth. And they are not looking to give over a single round to Coast Guard. They're going to have to take it. And you can see how passive they are right now in the back of the map. This is a little bit scary because when you do finally make your move, and if you don't have a numbers advantage, it's going to be difficult to try to get through all this information. But what can you do? Trizzy up top, struggling to try to get anything done. They're hoping to catch someone on the flank, but this defensive team, they're not moving. No, it looks like they're frozen. It looks like these players are <laughs> frozen in place. They're sitting, they're waiting. They know they don't have to make a play right now. Coast Guard have to go to them. And this is a complete change of pace. Coast Guard are wasting a lot of time on this execute. The bomb leading through DVD as well. It's going to be a B hit. You only have 33 seconds. There is no chance to change things up. And Marine Corps, they know that. That first blood has come through for Jay. He's up to another one. And he's still got the cruise, so they could still look at dropping into this round or the next. And Jay just challenges Dark again. They know he's there, but he's just taking gunfight after gunfight. Nowhere to go for Trizzy. And it is now a 1v4. Grand Puba looking for something, just misses out on that first kill. And Marine Corps, they're up to 4 0 in this search and destroy. I mean, this is a clinic for Marine Corps. They have looked so good across these first two maps, the teamwork, and the way that they change in that round two. Instead of trying to play for that flank, which we've seen round after round, they wait for really the Coast Guard to make a play there. And with the conditioning and previous defenses, I think Coast Guard, we're expecting that flank to come through, and uh, eventually there's no time to get a first blood, rotate over towards that A site, and Marine Corps, they do everything right to kind of funnel the Coast Guard into B, find those kills. Jay on the back pulled those. I mean, he's not missing. 9-0, Jay's having himself a field day. Yeah, he's looking elite right now. And do you use the cru cruise missile in this round to solidify round number five? Options certainly available. Just about 20 seconds into round number five. Jay looking to add up the tally to double digits before he dies. He starts clearing out Cafe, looking to bang open the door. Has to get a read on the player to the left. Smoke about to go down, oh. but the stun will actually deter him from wanting to go in. And where's Frizzy? He gets the first blood, trying to see if they can follow up with the second, but Jay is starting to get control of the site. Yeah, I think actually that stun hit Grand Pooba, so an unfortunate circumstance for Grand Pooba. Trisky just has to stay alive over towards the bridge. Smoke's going to get dropped. Bomb gets planted. Three on three for Coast Guard. It's now or never to find this retake, and Trimsky's gonna open it up with advantage. That's a huge start. You're able to get cafe control. Try to see if you can maybe put another one down, but now it's gonna turn into a 1v2. Jay, can he get the job done? Oh, almost lines up the second. No one's on the bomb just yet. Challenge comes through. Jay getting lots of tanks, and both players get one. Oh! with the pistol puts together two for a 1v3 i mean jay could do everything right now the renati the mcw give him a rifle if you know you want this man have extra health going i mean he's just tagging him up bleeding him out and the renati just tees off what a win there for jay clutches up in the 1v3 and that's match point for Marine Corps, the number four seed versus the number five seed, looking to show quite the disparity between the two. Whew. Jay's looking like Iron Man out there or something. My goodness, I mean, it's got extra body plates, extra armor, man, shoot straight as ever. Love to see it. Looking for a clean 6-0. Marine Corps, very well, might get this done. Coast Guard has to try to get an attacking Ooh. round. Those were good shots. Gotta give it there to Trimsky, who's able to draw first blood, but can they trade it effectively? Can they push? And there's the streak. That's Jay finds effective. number 13.
Cruise missile infested, three on three. Cryo with the space, Trimsy goes down, three on two. Marine Corps completely flipped the script of this round number six. And Cryo almost looking for the snap there. Grand Poopa finally gonna put him to rest. With all the map control here for Marine Corps, they can just wait for Coast Guard yet again to fall into their hands. Lots of time to play with. Don't necessarily have to commit to A, but it looks like that's the call, and Jay's able to find number 14. My oh goodness, is he gonna get 15 kills, or is Frizzy gonna finish him off? No, 1v1 secure. Nazir trying to keep his team alive. 30 seconds to play with, Jay gonna pop the Zeddy, and he's looking to take a round. I mean, Jay is putting on a, a Hall of Fame performance. Bombs down at P3 over towards the bus stop, and I'm not sure if Coast Guard actually realized that. You're hunting for the kill if you're Nasser, but the time is going down. Jay's hitting the flank. He's wrapped it all the way. He's got the MCW. He doesn't spot oh. him, and Nasser wins one. Finally putting Coast Guard on the board here on Invasion. Last chance for them to hit the full sail here, Austin, and Nasser may have just gifted it to him. And now we know that Jay does, in fact, bleed. He does bleed. So you can, in fact, take this guy down. It just takes just about everything to put him down as he almost secures this map number two at a 15-0 stat line. But the flawless run will not be secured. But there is so much work to do, and the defense has been a very big problem so far for them, Colin. They've been picked off left and right. However, they've been close to a couple defensive sides. I think that the Marine Corps just have a little bit more adaptation and a little bit more strategy in towards their attacks that I don't think the Coast Guard have really studied on. And I think for Coast Guard here, you just kind of go back to the basics. You take a page out of the books of the Marines, try to find that first blood, play your life, and extend this one. Schnapps, not gonna see the player underneath the tank, spots him the cross in towards concrete. Grand Poopa finds Jay, and now Schnapps is on an island here, has to be careful with the bomb recovered. Yeah, you can see the hesitation. They lose one, they don't know where to, where to look. Are they dark, are they still back construction? There's so much to clear out here, but it will be a man advantage, and taking down Jay just feels like a win in itself, so. 45 seconds left, halfway through round number seven. Might be a potential rotation that ends up coming through as they start to look over towards A and just start to clear out the middle of the map. Yeah, look at Grand Poopa just tucked away in the courtyard, waiting for the information off of Trimsky. Marine Corps, Schnapps with the bomb, slides into the mid-tank, tanked up, has to be careful not to go down. That'll put the bomb in such a peculiar situation. The wrap over towards Cafe, it's going to be a, B a hit, but they don't know is that there's three members around. Trissy's gonna go down, possibly an avenue open, but Bram Pooba with the reposition over towards the middle tank. He can put this round away. Bomb going down. Oh, bomb will go down safely. Frizzy, that's a tough gunfight. Takes out Trimsky. Now all down to one. Nazir would have to pull off a 1v3. He wins the 1v1 in the last round. Can he get the job done? 30 seconds on the clock. Last chance gonna be spotted. Schnapps with the shots, and that's gonna do it. Marine Corps with the first win on stage of the day here at our Armed Forces Esports Championship. A 6-1 in the search, 250 to 39 in the hard point. Uh, this team just made a statement. They sure did. Wow. Jay was on one. I mean, I know that you know, he was playing yesterday, but it felt like he was just completely locked in, wasn't losing battles, played really well throughout that hard point, and while took it to a different level in the search and destroy, those boys are looking clean, and that's exactly how you want to start off the day. You get that first win, you start to feel really good about it, now you can build off of it. And I wasn't too kind of disappointed in a lot of those rounds from the Coast Guard. You could see them trying to make changes. You could see them trying to work off of that game. It just... I think Marine Corps were a step above when it came down to the confidence in a lot of those gunfights, and I think that you just really saw the snowball from map one into map two, and then Jay just kind of finding form in that one. I think Coast Guard, I mean, you're down, but you're not out. You dropped to the loser's bracket. You gotta make a run. Gotta make a big run now, and we know how difficult it is to try to go through that loser's bracket, but if you can start to put together some wins, start to build up some confidence, well, anything is possible, but certainly a chance maybe to look over some of those maps to see what exactly you could try to work on. And again, just the preface, Warzone players, right, coming in, having fun, trying to do what they can, and there's certainly glimpses of, uh, of their potential, but these guys aren't playing maybe as much as some of the others, but still, you know, gotta give them a round of applause for as far as what they're able to do, and they still got a lot of passion. I always love passion, you gotta respect that. Who doesn't like passion? That's what it's Gotta all about it. at the end of the day here at <laughs> ForceCon for a lot of these players. And I think that we're not done seeing what Coast Guard can bring. Well, we'll see if they're going to be able to do it here for us. But either way, I believe we do have Spider Tiff standing by. We'll send it up there for the interview. 
Thank you so much, guys. Great cast. I'm here live. Joined alongside me is Cryo, who just had a magnificent performance. Just before you took the stage, Cryo, I was like, look, I want to see some triple positive out of you. So how, how'd we do? Honestly, I did great. I had a 2.87 KD. I'm honestly thankful to the Coast Guard's coaches and their players. They did great. Thankful to my coaches and players. Obviously, they've been training in us. Uh, and uh, honestly, I didn't think I was going to make it because obviously my son was just in the NICU for two weeks and he just got out yesterday. That's why I drove five hours down here to play. So I'm just excited to be here and excited to play with this team. Thank you so much for joining us and good shout there to your son at home from the NICU. In close 2.87 back joined up alongside the team. You take the first victory of the day. Now this was the one team that you beat in groups yesterday. How do we think the rest of the day is going to go now that you're joined up here? Honestly, we're just here, ready to play, have fun. Honestly, I think we're going to just go out there and play our heart out, so we'll see. Play our heart out. I love that. Now, you were telling me you, you hadn't played for a few weeks, but do you feel like you've gotten into the swing of things? You hit the triple positive. You looked good on Search and Destroy, but is there any area in particular that you're looking to improve on with the squad going into the later matches? I'd say for me, it's probably my Search and Destroy. I feel like the team, we like to play more coordinated so for me it's definitely search and destroy obviously I've I played a lot in challengers in Boston Toronto Miami so I'm just excited to be here and yeah the search and destroy we're gonna work on a little I'm excited to be here as well do you have any final words of encouragement or any shout outs from home that you want to provide for us here um, I just want to say shout out to my unit shout out to the Marine Corps thank you for having me here and I'm excited to play well I'm excited to see you guys keep killing it thank you so much once again congrats homie all right, guys, that's, you know, it's getting underway in Marine Corps. They told me, they told me they were going to come out victorious. Let's hope they can keep that momentum moving forward. But Vision Seymour, back to y'all.
Welcome back, ForceCon, to our second match of the day. My name is Seymour. Join on the desk with Cruzen. How are you feeling, buddy? I'm feeling fantastic. This looks like such a great event. That first series, really good. And we're about to get into an even better one right now. Oh, yeah. We got a spicy one for the uh, the show today. Like I was saying, when we were taking a look at that schedule, it is going to be a really fun one. Back in the round robins yesterday, these two teams, they played a super, super close series. Now to see Space Force taking the stage against the uh, Air Force yet again. We can take a look at the schedule and see exactly what's teed up. We just saw the Marine Corps versus the Coast Guard. That was a 2-0 for the Marine Corps to move on to the winner's bracket round two. Coast Guard moved down to the lower bracket. Now Space Force and Air Force, Jesse. Yeah, Space Force and Air Force. It's going to be a really good series between these two teams, especially. We saw it yesterday. Probably the tightest series we saw inside of the group stages. So I'm really excited looking at this one. Yeah, you and I both. I think that for both of these teams, they kind of have like that opportunity. You just saw Marine Corps play. You just saw, you know, the Coast Guard go down at the loser's bracket. So, you know, loser drops down to play the, uh, the likes of Coast Guard. Winner moves on to the next round. We can take a look at bracket and see exactly how things are unfolding. And there we get to see it right here. Round one in the lower bracket. Coast Guard kind of waiting here. And for Space Force, Air Force, I mean, after what we saw yesterday, there's a real good chance that the Air Force could be knocked down here. It, it absolutely is, right? I mean, when you look at it, it was a 2-0 yesterday for Space Force. When you look at this uh, as an overall, though, with how close that series is, sure, there's a good chance Air Force drops down, but I'd say there's just as good of a chance, depending on the maps that we get, that Space Force is the team that drops down in this series as well. Yeah, and I think it's just a, it's good to see these two teams facing off again. I'm, I'm really excited to see, you know, what changes from yesterday into today, whether it's going to be the maps, whether it's going to be the way that teams play in general, or, you know, maybe somebody's going to have a pop-off series like we saw yeah. from Jay in that Marine Corps team, but we do have our video ready for Space Force. Let's look to the stage and see our team. My name is Special Score Blake Hale, stationed at Buckley Space Force Base, and I just go by my last name, Hale. My name is Dante Antonio Gilbert Rodriguez. My in-game name is Itama, and I'm stationed at Buckley Space Force Base. My name is Ryan Cabase. My in-game name is Cabase, and I'm stationed at Buckley Space Force Base. Well, my name is Brandon Belingit. In-game name is Revenge, and then I'm stationed at Buckley Space Force Base. I've been playing games for pretty much my entire life. First like main FPS on the 360 Halo 3 and then COD 4. It was a Guitar Hero phase, there was a Mario Kart phase, there was like Mario Sunshine when I was growing up too, but Call of Duty has always been that staple. I competed a lot when I was younger, like when I was in high school, I would like go out, go out to locals and stuff, fly out to Texas a lot. Being able to like relive my childhood dream, playing LAN, I love it. I would say we pretty much met through AFG. If we weren't playing games, especially with the military, then we probably wouldn't have met. This is probably like the best uh, Space Wars uh, Call of Duty team will probably be ever in the field. I'd be a flex, probably more of a slayer. I do the dirty work, I would say. Make sure rows and time is getting collected. You have like a cool little structure going, so. Yeah. Somebody's getting more kills, you know, shining bright in the game. Somebody's gotta be taking the blunt end, you know, getting less engagements. I feel like the worst team talks the most. You know. That's insane because we've heard a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we've only scrimmed Air Force, really. Hope the Marines come out to shoot because their hands are going to have some crayons on those. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> then, then you wash your hands. I just want the Air Force to lose, like, badly. <laughs> they're all nice people, you know, in real life, in game. Like, they're awful. Come tourney day, whoever shows up can take it, I guess. Yeah, 100%. There's a fun little content video there from Team Space Force as everybody please look to the stage and welcome them to ForceCon. Welcome, Space Force. Space Force yesterday with a fantastic start to the tournament. They came in, they went three and one. They only dropped their very first map of the day to Army, or the very first series of the day, I should say, to Army. Come out, they've looked really good since. They went on a three straight game win streak now, and they're coming into the group stages. They're ready to go. Ready to go, and you can take a look at their roster there. Holly, Kabase, Revenge, and Atama. They looked on fire, like you said. Big turnaround to the back half of yesterday in our round robins, and now going up against the likes of the Air Force yet again. Looking to go 2 0 in Force Con, and I'm sure that after you look at the video, a little bit of trash talk, they're kind of getting comfortable. Yeah, absolutely. I think the uh, the big thing too, when you're looking at them going up against the Air Force, like we heard in that video, they really, really want to beat Air Force. So I think that's going to add just that extra little spice to this match. It is, it is for sure. But their opponents taking the stage, we can take a look at the video for our team, Air Force. 
My name is Cameron Huey, stationed at Barksdale Air Force Base. First name is Cody Cope, stationed at Scott Air Force Base in Illinois. My first name is Anthony Gonzalez. I'm stationed at Scott Air Force Base. My first name is Micah, last name Johnson, and I'm from Alpha Air Force Base, Nebraska. I started gaming like about 14 years ago. The first game I started playing was Perfect Dark. So I've been playing video games since PlayStation 2. I didn't get into Call of Duty really until 360 came out and the original Modern Warfare. I started playing Call of Duty about like 12 years ago and I just realized I was good at it so I just kept playing competitively. My dad used to play it so I was like I'm gonna get into COD and I just feel like it was the most arcadey, fun, easy to learn. Definitely had like quite a few rage moments where I've like slammed my desk, broke a few controllers but nothing like too crazy. Chewy's so funny like when he's raging it's the funniest. I, I mean I like Yeah like, it kind of it kind of like makes you not as tilted because it's kind of funny so you're not really losing pool. These guys are great. The community definitely brought us together. I'm just blessed to have these dudes. I think it's huge like community wise. I definitely think I met a lot better players in the Air Force for sure because there's some like little shiners that just come out of nowhere. To be honest uh, we didn't scrim at all. <laughs> we haven't scrim. Okay. We we're haven't getting it done now though. Yeah. We're getting it done now. These kids, these kids are light so. We're not really scared though. Yeah we're slaying everybody. Yeah. Space Force free. They play great together don't get me wrong but they just don't have big guns. They just calmed out. They just have the team chemistry. Yeah. No thumbs up. What's left? I don't even know. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it's <laughs> just the Marines, Army, Coast Guard, and then Space Force. All right, I'll do Marines. All right. Marines is buns. <laughs> Coast Guard's free. We're all hungry to win, so we want to improve, and I think we've been doing that. Great. Such a great content video there for the Air Force team, and honestly, Jesse, the Vibes, they look on fire. They do, they absolutely do. You absolutely love to see it between these teams. Please welcome to the stage, Air Force. Air Force coming out, they have looked fantastic throughout this series so far. I mean, they come into the tournament now two and two. They lost their first series to Space Force. And then uh, right after that, they unfortunately also end up losing to Army. Not a big deal though, they come into this one. That first initial match to Space Force, these, this team easily could be the team coming in at three and one. And now they come into the tournament, they have an opportunity to now right that wrong. Bounce back against Space Force and try their hands at moving in towards the next round. We got Chewy and Lost and Venue taking the stage there for our Air Force. And like you said in the video, I mean, they looked confident. They looked like, you know, they're here to just have a good time with each other. I know these players have been kind of playing amongst each other on this Air Force team for quite a while. So the fact that they're kind of getting that rematch against Space Force, you know, kind of, I'd say a rivalry here for, between the Air Force when it comes down to sure. Call of Duty. It's going to be fun to see them try to get that second chance. 100%. I'm really excited to see Waz today, too. We got to see a lot of him yesterday inside of the group stages. He looks like a lot of fun to watch on the map. Very aggressive player. Very big slayer. I'm excited to see what he can do here today in the series. Well, let's take a look at the map set for this best of three. So we're heading to Rio for map number one. And then back to Invasion for the Search and Destroy. You got that Invasion Control as well for that map number three. And a chance here for Air Force to kind of turn things around. Maybe change up the maps a bit and see if they can... Uh, figure out a way around this Space Force team. Yeah, absolutely. I think when you look at a real hard point especially, I think this map is going to really play into Waz's hand. I know I just brought him up just a second ago, but very fast Slayer, enjoys being able to get Mixy on the map. You're going to want to see something like that. And going to Rio, you have a lot of opportunities to get Mixy. I, mean, I love Rio. I think that is one of my more favorite maps when it comes down to the hard points. And uh, when you're looking at how good the SMGs on Marine Corps roar back on that six star, this is kind of a chance to see for, you know, Air Force or Space Space Force, you know, what they got cooking when it comes down to those rival players and you know, MCW, it, it kind of shines on a couple of those hills, but after a glimpse that we got to see from a player like Waz yesterday with that rival nine, you can imagine that, you know, Space Force, it's going to be tough to kind of deal with that. Yeah, I actually, I, I don't know how this map gets through, I'll be honest, with how good Waz looked yesterday on the sub. Him coming into this one, you need to try to find a way to mitigate him as much as possible inside of this map. If that, whether that comes down to the, the Hills 3 and Hills 4, one of those larger, the, the, the bigger maps, or the bigger range maps, I should say, where you have the opportunity with the AR to really shut them down, that's what you need to try to do. If you can't do that, you are going to get absolutely bullied through middle of the map by Waz. It's going to be tough for sure, but I mean, just yesterday in the round robin, it was Space Force who took down the Air Force, so they had a little bit of a recipe to success to get ready to take down a player like that, and you know, a player that I've kind of been watching for quite a while here on Space Force Atama, another one that I'm going to be keeping my eyes out for this map number one, Jesse, and I think for Space Force, they got it done one time, I'm sure they're saying to each other in their camp, why not do it again?
Oh, absolutely. I mean, you come into this with a ton of confidence, right? You look at yesterday, sure it was, what, a 16-point game inside of the hard point yesterday, but you're coming into this one, you look at it, you're like, hey, we beat these guys once, just need to improve on just the little things maybe that we did wrong yesterday, maybe we can even beat them by more coming into today. All right, Techboard, looks like we got our game number one in our second series ready and locked in. Rio, Hardpoint, Space Force, Air Force. Let's get it on. That's absolutely get it on. It's going to be really mixy. Hill number one right in smack dab in the middle of the map. We'll see both these teams go for it, break off lots of nades over the top. And it actually looks like there's going to be quite a bit of pressure going towards the outskirts of the map here to start right off. We'll slide in from Haley. Looking for some early time. Space Force double kill from Hale. Shutting down Air Force Gaming from this early time. Chewy and the Escalators get some eyes on, so trying to make this one scrappy, but a good start here from Space Force. You have the better spawns for that P2 rotation. You're winning your gunfights. In for the contention for the last 30 seconds here uh, around the back. Revenge hoping to shift things. Double kill is going to shake it up for the Air Force who push forward to flip this spawns, and they do get the spawn flip. They do get the spawn flip. It's exactly what you want there. Now you can start to really rotate and start to hone in on holding onto that right side of the mini-map. So now you can start to try to lock down these spawns. You can get a good rotation set up here for the P2 Hill. But you can see all the rotation now. Both teams are going to set everything up. You do have a player very far pushed forward right now in Haley. He has a good opportunity to find a few kills right away, and he will find two. Almost gets the third call. That's a great start to this hill. Hey, four kills in a row from Hale. Fantastic. On the rotation, Space Force, they break through those early rotates from Air Force, and now they flip things on a dime. 43 playing five, and they're ready to extend this lead. Revenge sitting on that armored car. You can see the blue arrows of Air Force kind of hitting that rotation. They're going to try to pinch this one from Info as well as Garage, but the timing misses. Venue goes down. The trade from Ant, but... You know, Haley going down, that's not going to spell trouble just yet. You're still in the hill if your Space Force are still getting this time, and a majority of this time of a P2 as well. So if Air Force can't break this now, you might be looking at the rotation, and Kabase is going to say bye-bye. Let's see a P3. And this is where it can really get a bit of a double-edged sword, right? If you're Air Force right now, you don't want to push this old hill again. You need to make sure you're setting up for new, but oh my goodness. We've seen snowball sometimes right off the start of Rio where you can get a, a big lead generated, but this is a massive lead to start this game off for Space Force. Eight Two to five. It's kind of like what we saw from Marine Corps back on the six star. It's Space Force doing everything right on rotations, winning their battles. And this is the first time that we actually get to see Air Force with a proper setup over towards P3. They're getting the initial time. You see Space Force spawn all the way out. And it's going to win a big first one. But a trade from Kavase. The nade hits. Revenge gets in. And Space Force fighting from the front. Atomic gets around the back. Suddenly, Air Force under a little bit of pressure. But out of the spawns, they fight back in. Now looking to lock down some much needed time. Absolutely. They finally get a good hold here, and they are able to at least clear out the spawn. This allows them now to push forward on the middle of the map. They can start to kind of zone out Space Force a little bit here and lock down some time. This is much needed time here. But finally, you know, a few kills end up going the way of Space Force, and now Air Force, they are back on the back foot. They don't have the last 15 seconds. That's going to go to Space Force. Yeah, you got to look at the rotation, too. I mean, it's just a proper play out of Space Force to fight over through P3 into boxes. Now, is Atomic going to win that fight? versus Chewy, Revenge goes down, so back and forth trades as teams just posturing up, finally a break in that pressure, Kamase finds two, as the setup for Space Force here, Venue goes down, back to the respawns, player number eight, Chewy, winning the fight through P1 on rotation, so now Air Force back in that situation where they need to play this pinch properly, they need to play this together, and hit as a team, Ant finds that trade, now looking to break in towards this hill with 39 seconds, Ant finds a second one, drops on down with a spin around, Haley trades it out. Air Force not able to get in just yet and Haley's going to make sure of that. I love that you bring that up too, Colin, that you need to make that push as a team because that is something we have not seen a ton from Air Force right now throughout this map. It just feels like a lot of little individual pushes, one-on-one -on -one gunfights, just not going their way and it has snowballed into a hundred plus point lead here for Space Force early on inside of this map. The good thing though about real hard point, Colin, if you can do this now in the second set of rotations to Space Force, you can bring yourself right back in this game. This is completely different than what we saw yesterday for these teams who's neck and neck the whole way 
and Space Force. They're not letting go of the reins. Another early rotate from Air Force. They're gonna get the initial time here at P5. This is where the MCWs can start to cook. You look at the rivals to dominate those battles through mid, and you look towards Venue and Ant to win these fights in and around the hill. And so far, so good. They're getting the time. They're finally putting something against the Space Force team, but how long can they hold on? A big win there from Waz Chewy with the fight through mid, looking for a second one. The teamwork not gonna make that dream work just yet. Chewie gets the trade. You're not in the time, Jesse. And I think for Space Force, that is a job well done. That is a job well done. I mean, you basically had zero opportunity to get any points there. So the fact that you can at least take points away from Air Force at that portion of the, of the hill, fantastic job done by them. Now you, on your second set chance, you get a break. You're able to get inside of the hill. You regenerate that 100-point lead back up for yourself. And going into the second set of rotations on this map with a 100-point lead, you have a very good opportunity to now close this point out if you're Space Force. And revenge. Finding the kill with the Renetti, almost snaps over towards Venue as well. Into P1 we go in the second set. 12 and 10 from Hale, 14 and 9 from Kavase. Right, I say that is absolutely ridiculous coming out for the Space Force. Big reason why they're up this uh, this much. is gonna find another one, a double kill in the time as well. Winning the fights inside the hill, securing that venue. In a little bit of trouble, trying to stay alive, but you cannot with the way that Space Force are playing. They break it again. Absolutely. On the side of Air Force, Colin, I need to see Daisy and Venue step up right now. 6 and 16, 7 and 14, it's just not enough. If you're going up against Space Force, you need to be able to slay out, and that is a great start at the very least if you're gonna make a comeback here. You get the break in a P1, you get the spawns for P2. This absolutely needs to be a full 60 for Air Force. Yeah, well, I mean, it just comes down to those kills, like you said. And I mean, for Space Force, they're going to be able to group together for this one. A lone player pushing through the garage to hopefully get that pinch in board and goes down. And Thomas going to open up the floodgates. 14 HP. Now the Daddy popped and ready to fly in through the back. Vasse with a rifle in hand gets into that zone. Thomas to follow it up. Suddenly, Air Force, they get broken and sent on the other side. They absolutely do. This is not looking good. We saw Space Force with a full setup here on P2 in the first set of rotations, and they full 60 did. They locked it down completely. No, you can't win on this hill, but you can get mighty close. You can. And already, Air Force fighting their way back. They hit the perfect flank. Two players move through P1. Now with 37 seconds that they're looking to take away the Space Force team. You got Watt set up on the truck with the MCW. And again, Ant winning those fights on rotation, already looking for this P3 spawns. Ant gonna shut down Atama. Can you stay alive? You cannot. No, unfortunately not. And Space Force will now just look to rotate over towards new, get the full setup here, try to start to put this game away. Air Force, I mean, they're not out of it yet, Colin. No. They're, they're, they're by no means out of it. If you get a break here early on inside of the hill, rack up a few more points, bring this one back just a little bit. It's just unfortunate right now that they are just so deep down in this game and had such a cold start because it is hard to come back from a lead like this. Rio is one of those maps where we see comebacks happen all the time. But for Air Force, I mean, the damage has been done against them. It's, this is not an easy hill to break for sure. Kamase going to cut down the first one through mid. And now for the contention in Air Force. Can they get that break? Chewy tank down, flank coming through. The Renetti not going to find the kill. Revenge with a quick double. Back into the hard point for Space Force. 40 seconds. They can put this one away. Yeah, you at least have to get it in contest here if you're Air Force to stop them from being able to close out on this hill. But the problem is they got a four down early in the hill. Now it's all just individual pushes and everybody's just trying to break this hill. One by one they run. One by one they fall. And Space Force, they're just getting better and better across the Rio. 20 seconds left still time for space force to win this hard point here and now venue gonna jump across into the hard point doing enough to prolong this game the break comes through now you need to focus on winning this and getting to p4 it's gonna be a foot race well, they finally group up they finally find that break there but it's it's just not gonna be enough 243 was where they'll end this hill at and we go to new and you have a very good opportunity to win this if you're space force seven seconds for space force Air Force spotting all the way across the map. As soon as they get into the lanes, it's all said and done. Space Force, a hundred point club. Air Force wow. in the Rio hard point, 250 to 90. Looking absolutely unstoppable in map number one. I was not expecting that call. That was our best series coming into today. And
map like this, play through middle of the map, that's the machine gun, get aggressive, try to at least take away map control from the side of uh, from the side of Space Force, because that was a, a big problem in that first map, is that you just had no control, it felt like, through a lot of it. You're constantly running into the side of Air Force, just set up on head glitches, can't break into it. So 100% it, it, that's going to need to be the main focus. Take mid-map control away from them. Don't let them get into that aggressive position. In. Well, invasion search, search and destroy up next. If Air Force turn things around, we get that invasion control, something that we didn't get out of the Marines or uh, the Coast Guard in our search, our game number one of the day. But, you know, after yesterday and the way that we saw this Air Force team and the potential that they do have, you know that there is a chance that we go all the way in towards that game Absolutely. three today for this control. Missed out yesterday. I know in the round robin, a lot of people who were kind of watching those streams on, uh, on the channel were hoping that this game went the distance. I mean, it was neck and neck, surely. We get that Air Force to kind of turn up and turn things around in this search and destroy. But again, I mean, Invasion, it's a big map, and like you were highlighting, you're going to need to see those MCW players step up surely on this map. 100% you will. I think a big thing, too, looking at this map and coming into it, is that even if Space Force comes out and say they lose this map, even though they've been very good at search so far throughout this tournament, say they lose the map, it's not a big deal. They're actually the only team in the group stages that play to control. So, or sorry, at least want to control, I should say, because they did play, obviously, the other team that played them. But, you know, it's going to be a big advantage. Nobody else has any reps yet on control. Yeah. At least you have that rep, you can come in, and that's going to be a big advantage. That game one going to Space Force could be absolutely detrimental. It's a best of three, and if you can't get it going in those race ones, you're going to be punished when it goes down to that control. It's tough to kind of get those gears turning when you, you know, get dominated in a hard point the way that you were. So, you know, for, Asia, for Air Force, it's one of those things where you want to flip it around, dominate the search and destroy, not let Space Force continue off that momentum in game number one. And I think Invasion is one of those maps where you can get it going. For sure. you know, we just saw it from the Marines. They completely shut down the Coast Guard on that map. First Bloods, a lot of time they were losing those First Bloods. They were still able to turn it around and win those, uh, those rounds. So I think for Air Force, it's kind of looking towards kind of playing proactive quite like the Marines did. Make sure you're taking that map control and holding it on the front line. Absolutely. It's actually weird too, right, that we saw that in the last series where you were getting first blooded a lot but still winning out on a lot of those rounds. Yeah. Because that does not happen a lot on Invasion. Usually no. you get that first blood on Invasion and you just bully the other team. Steamroll your way through a site, get that bomb down for free. It's normally like that. We didn't get to see that in the last series. So hopefully, you know, maybe we get a little bit more of a, your normal control or search and destroy coming in here. But I mean, hey, I'm down for it. I, I'm here for the chaos today. Yeah, and you know, for Air Force, I feel like there's a little bit on the line for this team. I mean, in the inception of Forest Con, back in year number one, Air Force were the champions. And, you know, they lose to Army back in the, the, the second year, back in Forest Con last year. And now you're seeing them on the ropes here in the winner's bracket. You need to see Air Force kind of turn things around if they want to get back into that championship form, get their revenge here at Forest Con to take that trophy once more. But Space Force kind of showing they've made those changes. They've stepped up. And I think that Space Force, they look great. This is their series to lose. So we take a look at the rosters once again. A couple to kind of note from that Space Force team that were just unreal. Kava say that MCW, you don't get to see that on a real very often. One of the AR players really having a standout performance, but it really shut down Air Force from kind of getting anything going. Just couldn't get any pressure on the map, right? Anytime you basically were pushing one of those long range of sites, who was there to shut you down? It was Kabase, right? Like you said, very, very good map one from him. Another player I'm looking at, honestly, was Revenge. Revenge played really good in that map number one, too. I mean, they all kind of played really good. It was, a, it was a bit of a 100 point club, right? So you can't really say anybody on the team didn't play great, but I mean, out of those, out of all those players, I would really be looking at those two to be popping off again yeah. here in map two. But I mean, shout out to Coach Boach for turning things around for Space Force Mochilla coming out here. You know, I, I think it's awesome to see that um, the program will bring out actual I love Call that. of Duty talent in the players to come out and coach them, trying to kind of put some pep in their step for a lot of it. And Mochilla has really turned around this Space Force team into, you know, yesterday when they were going 10 points against the Air Force, it's today when they just 100 point clubbed them on real. On the other side, you see Air Force, you got Vanity, David Eons, the two very talented players from, you know, the college COD scene that we've seen in Challengers before. And I think they got a lot of work to do heading into the Search and Destroy to kind of figure out a way around the Space Force team and try to take this search and destroy comfortably. Yeah, if you're Air Force coming into this, I think right now, Colin, early rounds, need to look for patterns and need to look to minimize mistakes right now. Once you can kind of figure out what the other team is doing, and if you get those big man advantages without throwing them away, that's gonna lead you to a lot of success, right? You mitigate those mistakes, you hammer away at the big points that you need to do on the map, that's gonna give you an opportunity to win this one if you're the Air Force. Well, here we go, revenge may be 
on Space Force, but for Air Force, they're looking for revenge here in Invasion. We're gonna kick things off for the search and destroy Space Force on the attack, Air Force on the defense, and Revenge looking to do a little bit of distraction on towards the A side with the bomb is leading over towards B. Yeah, venue all alone right now over at the B side. Finally, it looks like they're gonna get some help. Maybe saw a few players cross because Waz is coming over as well. But Kabase gets inside of the hill for free. Will get shot, will go down. So that's a first plug going to Air Force. Yeah, venue a little peek in the door, looking for two, but elsewhere over towards A. Revenge does end up going down. That's gonna be the bomb not able to get to B safely. Suddenly that map control starting to weigh down. You can see they're gonna try to wrap. Immediately Chewie will find the kill and that's gonna basically do it here for this round. You have only one more chance. Oh, Chewie actually goes oh, down. down. is actually gonna turn things two on two. Space Force are battling back. Waz gets the crossfire though, and it looks like Air Force with all the control around Invasion, they're able to kind of flood those lanes, take those power positions of the MCWs. I mean, they rip Space Force apart. I got a little worried there when I saw him go down. I was like, oh no, oh, wait, hold up. We, nice talked, shots. we talked about holding and limiting mistakes. There, there was a big opportunity there, but they end up closing out the round. Air Force, they, they get that one done. It's exactly how you need to start, especially after a 100 point club. It is, it is. And for, I think Air Force now is working off that. Swap over to the attacking side. What can you do to break through Space Force? I think we saw it back for the Marines. They kind of relentlessly hit B, and if they get that first blood over towards the A side, you saw that wrap around. So they're gonna do quite the same. Look for a little bit of positioning over towards DVD. Fish for this first blood and see where it's gonna take them across the map. All about utilizing your utility early in these rounds, but not able to find anything yet. Here, if you're Air Force, you will start to move up on the map, but there is a ton of pressure right now for Space Force on this B site. You are gonna have a hard time breaking in. Yeah. The bomb hasn't gone anywhere. Space Force have position all around B. Mid tank, two stacked into broken. Hale's gonna get tagged up, drops on down. Waz now on the chase, Renetti in hand. Does he get the timing through? I'm not sure if they spotted him, but chance for the player into the P2 tank to maybe. Waz gets the kill, trades out revenge. And that's gonna force Hale to back up over towards the bulldozer. I almost wonder if you wanna wrap the bomb out here. You know there's a ton of pressure. You might need to just say, hey, we respect this too much. We need to get out of this bomb site and wrap away, but it might be too late here in this Ooh. round. 25 seconds, you have to make a decision. Kabase goes down onto the mid tank. The floodgates. Opened up, Hales finds their third in the game so far. Trying to dance and finesse their way around this, uh, this bulldozer. B is gonna be the menu item for this, but Atama takes down the first and Hale gets his second. That's gonna be Space Force tying it up. We go defense for defense. The initial break off looked really good for Air Force there, but it was just so indecisive with what they wanted to do with the bomb. I mean, obviously they wanted to push towards the dozer. They wanted to get that bomb down there, but unfortunately for them, they were just hit with a brick wall on the other side. They could not get through it, and they just never had an answer back to when they had the pressure on the opposite po portion of the map. At that point, you need to wrap out, go over towards A, try to make a difference on the map, because if you just push into gun, uh, guns that are aiming outside at you, it is a bad, bad thing off the start of these rounds. It's tough. It's tough to fight back this map as soon as you as soon as you lose those lanes the pressure just continues to mount fight through mid i to say actually almost wins out chewie gets away with their life you saw a couple shots getting traded out but still posturing over towards b as we've seen for these first bloods trying to find that opening player number two revenge sitting in the laundry hoping that somebody takes the bait the patience and walks through cafe space force not finding an ethone. Air Force are playing this so patient. It's the exact same defense as well from Air Force here. Basically the exact same thing they did in round number one and Space Force was not able to find an answer. So I like that. You do the same thing here, kind of throw them a, a very similar hand. And hey, if they can answer it, sure. But they get first blood once again here and this is gonna be a hard break onto the site again. Oh, venue gets a little bit aggressive. Hale's gonna find the trade, three on three. And the bomb now. Finding safe ha passage over towards this B site, looking to get planted, but Kapse gets ripped. That's Waz with some beautiful shots, headshots only, and puts you into 1v3 if you're Hale 5 and 1, 3 in a row. Can you push to the streak? Can you stay alive? A lot of questions that you only have 12 seconds to really get the answer to, so seems like Air Force is going to play the time here. Let it tick down. 
wait till he makes the mistake and secure the round. And that's what I want to see out of Air Force. You make a great first blood, you don't get too over aggressive on the map after finding that first blood. You really play together, you find those trades, eventually you're in a 3v1. Guess what? You get tagged up a little bit if you're Waz there, but what do you do? You back up, you wait for the reinforcement to come through dark, you play the man advantage, and they do it to perfection. Oh, yeah. And for this uh, game mode like Search and Destroy, I think Air Force look a lot better than what we saw in that hard point, just composed not giving anything up over towards Space Force early. Chewie plays their life at the start of that round, not giving that first blood over towards Kamase. And Space Force, not with a lot of options, trying to funnel their way, force their way in towards B. It just does not work. So we go defense for defense still. Back onto the attack for Air Force. Nate deep for Chewie. Where's that going to hit? Actually lands with the player over towards that P2 tank. It's going to force Hale into Broken. Very aggressive spot here for Space Force to see if they can open up the map. Very similar to where we saw Revenge play in the last round as well. Hale's positioning gets noted. He will have to back up completely here. There's a good opportunity right now if you're Air Force. You don't see anybody else really in that portion of the map. This is when you need to get aggressive. Just push up. Yeah. Get inside a DVD. Get up onto the tank and just make Hale super uncomfortable on the map to the point where you get that first blood and you take all that map control away. You see Hale and now they have to clear these corners. They have to make sure that there's not a player inside of Broken anymore. You still haven't seen the bomb leave your spawn it's actually rotating over towards the a site you have that soul player kavase playing over towards middle of the map venue actually get caught there first blood over towards space force revenge now looking to stay alive and towards the cafe backs out looking for the wrap 17 seconds air force they need to go they need to hit this one soon there's going to be no time to get the bomb planted revenge is going to back up and it looks like air force is going to be trapped on site this is, this is tough. I mean, you, you are just bottlenecking yourself right now. You're giving yourself no time to get these bombs down. The trades do come through at the very least, but you're just going to run away. The bomb's not going to go down. Space Force will close out the round, Colin. They need to be more decisive on their offenses. Oh, yeah. I think that right now, they're going into these offenses, trying to find that first blood, trying to find a little bit of a pick or an opening on the map to, uh, to really push themselves forward, and they're not giving themselves any time to work with. Well, you got a poke and you got a prod. You got if it's not being kind of given to you, you have to take it at some point. We just didn't see that from Air Force in that round. Eventually, you know, when there's no time, you feel like you have to rush into those situations. And you saw from Revenge, as soon as he just kind of disconnects from that, you know, aggressive stance, and Air Force can't find him, they're on red alert. Where did Revenge go? And what they don't know is that Revenge went to the safe haven of the rest of his team. And that is not going to be a favorable situation for Air Force at all. So uh, round four continues for the defense, and that takes us into five now. So. You see if an attacking team may be the, the way to kind of shift things here. And we might be looking at one of those search and destroys where the attack is going to win you the game. I was literally just thinking the same thing. It's been four straight defenses. It really feels like whoever takes this first offense might end up taking the whole game. But it almost always happens like that where you finally find one. Yeah. And then the other team answers right back, right? So we'll have to wait and see, obviously. But a beautiful oh. nade over the top. Kabase with that first block. That's going to open up the entire A site. A couple shots to the MCW. And Semtex going to seal it. Trades out by Waz and through mid, looking to get aggressive there. Venue not expecting Hale to just be posted up with the MCW. It's gonna be two kills for Space Force, an advantage in lives and a safe passage over towards B. Revenge still at A, lurking, hoping to find another kill. Gives himself away, but stays alive. Here's what's interesting. They have had a ton of pressure over towards A, made it look like that's where the bomb was going, but realistically, bomb by itself going over towards B. You'll find another kill there from Revenge through middle of the map, and now you're left all alone, all up to Wazd. Yeah, again, 1v2 from a 1v3. Spots the player in dark, a couple shots there, expected him to be still sitting. Six in a row from Wazd, has that cruise missile. No time to use it, though. So 1v2, how do you decipher this code? Waz going to slide back in towards Ice Cream, hoping that he can find a gunfight. 13 seconds, he got to go, and there's just no chance to break through that crossfire. Waz gets caught, and that's going to be an attacking round from Space Force. That's a tough spot to break into, right? When you are stuck inside of Ice Cream, you've got a player in the street, you've got a player on Bulldozer, and you know there's always, always going to be somebody sitting on that orange Bulldozer. It is hard to break inside of that site once that bomb goes down. That's why it's so important to get that map control early as a defensive team. Unfortunately, you end up losing out on a few of those gunfights, maybe a bit of a bait over towards A. They bring the bomb to B, they get that bomb 
bomb down for free. It's pretty much a free win at that yeah, point. It's as soon as the player over towards Bulldozer goes down, you know you can get that bomb planted. And the fact that Revenge still finds a kill over towards A at the end there, finding Chewie, you have to look at that player that is sitting around and lurking. You have to take him down before you can start that retake. I don't think Chewie was really ready for that. Nice shots from Hale here in round number six. Thing to come from this one. Hale is actually going to back all the way up to ice cream. And look at this a flank unfolding player in DVD and a player in laundry. Space Force have all the positioning to win this round. And again, Air Force, they're just bottlenecking themselves on offense. They put themselves into a tight spot where they can't really move out of it. They have no map control. And now you have Space Force kind of collapsing on you here in this positioning. They have no way out. Revenge is saying the world tour. He's in the gas station, he's in the attacking spawn. Air Force, even if you flank this or wrap it back over towards A, you are trapped. Hale gonna make sure of that. Another player goes down. Revenge finally gonna strike on this flank. Venue's gonna trade Hale, but it's all down to one. Everything is snowballing in favor of Space Force as they are looking to take this series. The defense has been dominant for Space Force here inside of this. I mean, what do you do, Colin? You have every angle watched. You don't know what to do in that situation in terms of pushing forward because you have no map control, so you have no info on the map at that position. I think, honestly, on the next offense here for Air Force, I think you just need to bang something out together. You need to just run four down and just try to take away some position. Anyway. Yeah, you're guaranteed an offense at least, but Space Force now for the first time with the two-round advantage. It was defense for defense until Space Force win that last offense that they were on. And now, let me see if they can find that match point, Hale with the cruise missile was the cruise missile of their own so do we see these kill streaks hopefully to kind of switch things up here air force could be the way back into the series but again a lot reeling on these opening first bloods hale's gonna invest that cruise missile and chewy gets caught everybody sent back and in, into the inside of the buildings but chewy not able to make it in time venue gotta be careful here and revenge is just gonna let that one go one thing to watch right now is Daisy is making a push to the back. Waz wins a disgusting gunfight through middle, so at least you get one back. This uh, this whole map is going to come down to this flank right now. Yeah, all in the flank, and it seems like Revenge is kind of looking for this player as well. Revenge, I think he's been seen. He's on the chase. You have no idea. The Renetti going to bring things into a 1v3 for Venue, who is known to be an ice cream. 21 seconds. You don't have teammates. You don't have the time. And now you're starting to run out on time or rounds. Waz needs some help. 10 and 4 right now. Everybody else on the team negative. It has been a tough time they need to step up to the plate right now it was again in the first map as well was really leading the way don't have that backup and you had it yesterday so yeah it, it is there you know you can win gunfights against these guys it's just not happening right now on these maps the space force looks like a different beast today they do. They absolutely it's that do. main stage magic jesse i mean some players they just thrive being up there and the lights are on the teams across from you and all that's kind of separating you is a round of search and destroy sometimes a hard point I mean, look at Hale on the other side, too. 12 and 3, he is also having a ridiculous map right now. It's hard to combat against teams that are playing this well. Early in this round, though, I like this. We're seeing a different look from Air Force. We're going to see them push down over towards this A site. But again, very passive, Colin. Oh, yeah, very passive. And it's going to pay off, too. Quick kills from Space Force. Cabase and Hale. Gonna just completely dominate against Air Force. There's no way to go. Ant is trapped in the back of gas station. Kavase now looking to put things away. The pinch is out, and now the game. Space Force, they 2 0 Air Force. They send them to the lower bracket. And they look mighty fine up there on the main stage. They do. They absolutely do. Do I think Air Force can go into the lower bracket to make a run right now? I definitely do. But Space Force looks so good. I think that if Space Force comes out like that and it has a rematch against Army here today, yeah. I think we can see a very different outcome to that series from yesterday. Space Force, it just seems like whatever they did from yesterday to the day, last night, the VOD review, the, the chats, you know, whatever the team has kind of figured out, it's working. It's clicked, and they look so, so good different so good yeah Hale looked fantastic in that series I think everybody took their like individual moments to shine right throughout that one but Hale especially I think that player we need to really look at you say I mean the search and destroy alone fantastic but the rest of the series too just really really good stuff out of Hale yeah really good stuff for sure and, and for Air Force I mean it wasn't all that bad 
You had some moments there in the search and destroy where you thought Waz was kind of going to carry the day. You get the cruise missile. You don't get a chance to use it if you're Waz because a lot of time you weren't really staying alive. But I think for Air Force, they're going to have to try to work their way back through the lower bracket. And hopefully when we see them back on stream, we're hoping to see some changes here. But it seems like we got Spider Tiff on the main stage with an interview. So take it away, Tiff. Hey, thank you so much, guys. I was able to grab Hale from Space Force Gaming for a bit of an after-match interview. Now, I saw in the content piece leading into this matchup that there seems to be a bit of a rivalry between Space Force and so-and-so. Can you talk to me about that? Um, yeah, I mean, Air Force, they're, they're really cool boys. Um, we had really close scrims always, but today we just came out and fried them, so I don't know. I don't know either, but it was pretty impressive. Yesterday, it was a really close 2-0 fashion, but today you guys seem to kick it up a notch. And even so, I was like 11-2 at one point for you on that search and destroy, and, and you ended, what was it, 14-4? That's so impressive. Yeah, yeah S&D, they're just running into my pre-aims. Um, the hard points, we just clicked at the team today. We're not over-challenged. We're, we're playing how the game's supposed to be played, so. It looks textbook, and I got a glimpse of what those comms were sounding like. They were really clean. So what are some of the things that you guys work on as a team to make sure that you are having the most cohesion in those comms? Um, just making sure we're calling out where we're at, not pushing when we're three down, you know, just waiting for our team regrouping. So that's the main thing. Hey, it's a main thing, it's working. So now that we've already kicked off the day with a 2-0, talk me through some of the things that you might take away from this matchup in some of your later games. Um, just how we're playing together, we, we have to keep playing like that, clicking, common, um, not getting overzealous, and yeah, keeping it all together. Keeping it all together. Okay, so here's what I need from you. I, is there gonna be any smack talk, any words of encouragement for anyone that you wanna kind of highlight? Um, like other teams? Other teams? No, nah, um, nah, we're just excited to be here. Uh, we just wanna come out and play our game and not get you know, frustrated or anything. So yeah, just come out to play. They came out and to play today. Thank you so much, Hale, for joining me. I really do appreciate it. Guys, this is ForceCon 2024. We're going to throw to a quick break, and when we get back, more action.
bounce. Hello everyone and welcome back to ForceCon 2024. We are getting ready to load up into some more Call of Duty action. But before we do, of course, we have to introduce ourselves. My name is Visions. With me, I have Cruz and Spaz. How you doing, brother? I'm doing fantastic. I mean, that first series, a lot of fun to cast over. You know, get the early jitters out even for us, right? A little yeah. bit. Yeah, and now we come in, we're gonna be looking at a couple more series here today. I think that this is such a fun event and I've been having, honestly, such a blast so far. Yeah, it's been great. I mean, we've seen a little bit of one-sided matches, but we're seeing a little bit of, you know, different results than maybe we had initially anticipated. Like, we definitely expected that last match to be a little bit closer than it initially was, but we're getting surprises. That's what we're here for when we get to the main stage. That's what we're usually expected to see. It's just maybe not that one-sided. Now, both those squads that are in the lower bracket are looking for a big bounce back. They absolutely are looking for a big bounce back. And, I mean, if you're Coast Guard coming into this one, it has been rough so far, right? We need to look at basically trying to just rewrite the playbook right now if you're Coast Guard. Just kind right. of look at things that have gone incorrectly for you so far and just try to make any little adjustments. Anything can be better than what we just saw in that last year. The hard point was rough, the search not so great, right? So it's, I know they're Warzone kids, so it's it's like one of those things, they're coming here, they're, they're just trying to have some fun, let's be honest, right? It's a fun event. Yeah. But at the same time, they want to come out, they want to show up the best that they can. So they're going to go back, they had some time to look over that VOD from earlier today again. Maybe they come out, we can see a whole new team. You never know what you're going to get here from these guys. And on top of that, I mean, the fact that Air Force did look as dominant as they maybe did yesterday, that could maybe be a telling sign that maybe they could steal a map away. And if you are able to grab yourself a map coming in towards the series, well, who knows how you're going to be able to carry that going into potentially the next set. So we'll have to see if they are going to be able to get that job done. But certainly a lot of pressure because this is the elimination game. Yes. If you lose this, you go home, you're out before noon. Doesn't feel great. <laughs> But at the same time, I mean, I'm sure these guys are having a blast. And I think the Coast Guard has already told us multiple times that we do take them out. We're going to get loud. And hey, is that loudness going to affect them? You know, you have to see. That's 
all I want to see now. That's all I want to see. Coast Guard needs to come out. They need to take a map here to start this one off. I mean, if you come out and you win this hard point, I want them up. I want them screaming in the Air Force's <laughs> face. I, I want to hear them here for us. Where we are. We're pretty far from the stage. Like we're, we're close, but you know, not close enough to where we should hear that. <laughs> and if we could hear it, that would be fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. We'll have to see how we get there. But either way, we are going to take a look here at the schedule for us. And uh, as we've already seen, it was the 2-0 for Marine Corps. They were able to grab that pretty easily for the most part. It felt like uh, they were able to come in, grab themselves a nice couple dubs, and then right after we did see Space Force and Air Force, and that's the one that we just framed up, expecting that one to maybe go to a game three, but Air Force did not come out swinging the way we expected them to. So now we take a look at what's gonna happen down in this lower bracket for our next matchup. And this is, again, elimination game, best of threes, will be played out all the way through this lower bracket. So there is a lot of pressure to try to come out big. And what's really big too, we can see it just actually updated on the score, on, on our, uh schedule here as well army we got to see them take that win or we didn't get to see it for ourselves but that match was going on at the same time as our last match that we were just playing on stream army was able to take that victory that means that you and colin you guys are gonna get a banger of a match for that winner's <laughs> final i'm so happy it's gonna be a space force be good. going up against army a big rematch from yesterday for space force as well i'm really excited to see that one yeah that one's gonna be a banger i mean as Obviously, we go through this bracket. It's only gonna get better and better and better. And you can take a look at this bracket as we've got ourselves that winner's final matchup. Army is definitely the team that we came in saying, all right, these are the guys to beat, right? They Absolutely. played really well, played flawless throughout yesterday. It feels like they also have a pretty wide map pool. So that makes them very difficult to deal with even in the veto systems that we get into. And that would also be a best of five as well. The interesting thing coming into that best of five too, and I know obviously we're, we're kind of framing it up right now, but looking at that best of five, I kind of talked about this in our last series that we saw Space Force in. They're the only team to win a control so far, so that could be a little bit of an advantage. You have that rep over the side of Army, and you didn't get to play them in a game three yesterday because you got two out. Now you at least get that game three, right? So there could be a lot of opportunity there too. Yeah, absolutely the case here for us. So we'll see how that one ends up unfolding, and then whoever does win this first lower round matchup will of course be matching up going into their second round where the team's going to be already waiting and watching. But now we have to introduce our teams. We have Air Force standing by as we welcome them to the stage. And Air Force is coming out now. They have looked very good throughout this tournament a rough start to the tournament today though they looked great in the groups rough rough start though up against space force here they did go down 0-2 a big opportunity though this team can make a run through this lower bracket i would not be surprised if we see them in that losers final later on today yeah absolutely you take a look at this squad you got chewy and lost it as well as venue these guys when they are on they are on but are they going to be able to put it together quickly, have that rebound and bounce back? That's really the big telling question at the moment. It really is. I think Wazd needs some help. That's gonna be the big thing, right? He was popping off. The rest of the players though, kind of iffy in that first series today, need to get those jitters out of the way and come out strong. That's right. You're gonna have to try to get the job done. We'll see if they are going to in fact be able to do it. Big bounce backs, big expectations. But of course, do you have to mention the team across for them here as well? They're gonna be coming out here looking for some big revenge. We're gonna give it up here for the Coast Guard as we welcome them to the stage. And Coast Guard so far, I mean, it has been a bit of a rough start to the tournament. Like we say, coming in, they play a lot of Warzone. They don't play a lot of multiplayer. But this is just more and more reps. They're getting under their belt, right? They come out here. You have an yes. opportunity to now come out, take a first map here. I, Air Force looked rough in that hard point. If you come out and you maybe surprise them, th I think this is the opportunity to do so. Yeah, we'll see if they can try to get it done here. Just saw them play, so they are going to be warm, are going to be heated up. Nazir, Trimsky, Trizzy, as well as Grand Puba looking to try to make their mark and make sure that they don't leave Force Con early here through our double elimination bracket. Expectations, again, very, very high for both of these squads, wanting to try to come away with at least a series win before you go home, but only one will be able to accomplish that. And I'm also very curious to see what the map set is, right? Because both these guys yes. just played some maps that maybe they didn't look too comfortable on. Do you just want to shake that up completely? Do you want to try to get something new in there? That's the big question, and it looks like that is my answer. We do have some new maps. And we seen yesterday, Air Force likes to play sub base, so that's a mm. little bit scary for me for Coast Guard. I'm not gonna lie, Austin. Yeah. I mean, they looked good. I mean, I think they went one-on-one, -on -one, if I remember correctly, on that map mode combination yesterday. So a sub base hard point to start things off might scare me a little bit if I'm Coast Guard, but hey, 
This is their opportunity. You got to come out, you got to shine. You got to shine. And Air Force certainly have the ability to come out here, win a sub base. Like you said, this is one of those maps where if you understand the layout of the map, how to play high ground, how to read spawns, it can feel like you're just in the blender at times when you're that the team that's trying to find those breaks. Yeah, we know what it's like to be like that. It's like, man, another guy mid, another guy top snow, and you're just trying to get through the map sometimes. And sometimes it's not a possibility. So there is going to have to be some adjustments. If you notice that they're playing the high ground a lot, they're, they're really mowing you down. That's when you have to make some of those mid-game calls. And you have to wonder who's going to be the player to potentially step up and attempt to do that. I 100% agree. I think you need to look at all opportunities here, right? Uh, there's a lot of different ways you can play this map. Obviously, early rotating is going to be super, super important on sub base. But I mean, even if you find the opportunity where you get a few players down, make sure you push to the back later in the hills too, because it can be a big advantage to hold those hills later towards the back side of the hills, just to give yourself an opportunity to be able to get a couple of those points. If you're Coast Guard, I think that might be a big thing to look for. Right. Get that scrap time. If you're not rotating early, you need to hammer down scrap time. That's right. You got to get time somewhere. You can't afford to go down, you know, a full hill or two hills right off the start like we saw in six start. But I think it is a good call to try to change things up. Might be reps there for Air Force, but hey, maybe there's some AR players on Coast Guard that we just weren't really seeing on some of those closer quarter maps. So we're going to have to see, but we are getting ready to load into sub base. Huge matchup, elimination match in round number one. We're going to see who's going home and who's moving on. I'm just excited for it to get mixy, Austin. I'll be honest. This map is a lot of fun for some machine guns. You can watch them run around, get crazy through this hill. And uh, this first hill, I think, is going to be very dividend to how this map is going to play. Absolutely. Well, I'm excited. Who's going to come out hotter? I would love to see the Coast Guard really set the tone here for us, show us that they can, in fact, show up in a big way. Get loud. We've been ready for it. But let's get into it. Kicking it off on sub base. And we're going to start with Air Force. Yeah, Air Force, they're going to break through the left side. It looks like we're going to be on board with Daisy at least to start right off the rip here, pushing right out towards P2. And this is what they're doing, Austin. They're going to go for an immediate push through, try to flip these spawns out right away. They're not really putting a ton of pressure on that first hill. They don't care about it. They want to lock down P2 spawns. Yeah, they definitely do. First blood going to be good for Grand Puba, able to get himself early on the board. A little jump chow coming through. Ben you feeling himself a little bit, but now he's got a finesse on the point. And how about that? A little bit of a beatdown. Turns it into a boxing match. Match, and that will mean scrap time slowly being fought for. So about 20 seconds left, but that second gunfight will not be won. Yeah, and uh, you got Coast Guard on the time right now, which is very good for them. They're getting that good initial time here. But then, now you need to look at Air Force, though, who's on the good side of spawns. They've got exactly what they want, but I see Coast Guard. They're starting a little bit of a flank here. This is a great start for Coast Guard. They're up in points, and like you said, chance maybe to upset. We'll see that gunfight actually not be fully committed to. And now have to try to wait for the regen. The stun's not going to allow that to come through. So just slowing down this rotation through the middle of the map. Solid job here so far, but Venue is going to be able to now back up his teammates as Air Force have locked down a bit of a setup, and they're trying to regain that lead as they do just that. Really going to come down to what Grand Puba can do here in the back. They will find one. They're going to put these spawns out too, Austin. That's a great job by Coast Guard. The one you love to see, they make the break. Now you've got Air Force spotted on the other side of the map. Ooh. Just make it hard for them. Yeah, Chewie's going to do that. First kill picked up for him. Slow start. And this is what we did mention kind of in the last series, too, right? A couple players starting slow for Air Force. Need all four players really bringing everything if you're going to take this team down. Coast Guard now building themselves up. A small lead, fighting for 20 seconds left on P2. Chewy looking to get involved. Clean shots with a pistol. That looks like that should solidify it. We're looking at deep spawns in the back Ooh. here as well. So this is going to be a long rotation heading over to P3. It's going to take those three players 10 seconds at least to get halfway across the map right now. This is going to be an early setup for Air Force. It's going to be a tough, tough break here from Coast Guard. But they did break the last hill, so there is a good opportunity. We've seen them do it once. Can, can they do it again? Venue under a lot of pressure, three players, but this is going to have to be some tough gunfights. One from Coast Guard if they're going to find a way into this point. They do have a chance to influence the spawns, and they also have a player pinching through the middle tunnel. Or rather, Top Snow. Can you make this high ground work out? Stun's going to connect. First kill going to be secured here for Air Force. Looking for the second shot to the top. Venue doing his job very well, staying alive, and they're still keeping a lot of pressure on the point. Oh, the Coast Guard boys, they're pushing through the back. They just could not find those kills. That is a clean four down for Air Force. This actually opens up a lot of opportunity. You can see for Waz now to get active on the map. He's going to push out through middle of the map, try to find these players off spawn, along with trying to flip these out because the hard point, the next one, it's on the opposite side of the map. You need to run very far to get there. Yeah, this is going to have to be a lockdown setup here for Coast Guard. If you allow a full 60 to come through on this point and then allow them to transition to win a rotation, that's where things get out of hand on sub base. So far, everyone backing up, doing a solid job. Pistol swap out will be good. 
And now up to five and four. As you'll see, Waz try to turn this into a bit of a rotation, but so far everyone holding strong. It's just one member that's been able to try to get close to the point. He's under fire. Yeah, it's really that full 60 that comes through that really kind of opens up this game now, right, for Air Force. They've gotten a good lead. Now you need to answer back if you're Coast Guard. You need a full 60 of your own here. You need to take advantage as well of this slow start from Waz. Not something that we're normal to see. Waz, he's just roaming around, running around the map. Looking now to back up on the point and won't be able to find it. Security looking pretty solid up until this point, at least. The defense was locking things down. The spawns were looking pretty solid into the back, but Air Force now will be able to get control of the point, and they're going to continue to build this lead as they're now up to about 50 points. This, this is where it can start to snowball, right? You found that break early inside of this hill. It's going to be an easy last 25 seconds here for Air Force to lock down in the later half of this. Now we go to the final hill of the first set of rotations. Ooh. If you're Coast Guard, I think this needs to be a must-win hill here. You need to at least walk away with that at least a good chunk of time here well not allowing Air Force to get a good bunch if you don't want this game to snowball out of control. That's right. I love this from Nazir. Clean shots. And he's already actually got a huge chunk of time here for his squad. Venue who's done exactly the same on the opposite end looking to find the break. Nobody watching the middle of the map. Wide open. He's able to get himself into the point. Teammates also now starting to lock things down. Shots over the top. High ground being fought for. Venue's going to grab himself top control and might have an opportunity to find some kills and he is good for one. Make it a second. Venue making the right play at the right time. They love to see that out of Venue. Finds the flank. Finds the kills. And Chewie in the corner wins a disgusting gunfight with the MCW. You should not be able to do that. They walk away with the, with the win and that is going to lock down even even more time here for Air Force. Finally, you get a couple kills go, going in towards the way of Coast Guard. They're able to break into the hill for just a tiny bit of time, though, because Waz up top, he will shut them down once again on the hill. Yeah, it just feels like they're so slippery, right? Tracking these players down, trying to lock down the trades. Hasn't necessarily been there as of yet. And up to four in a row for Waz, looking to try to lock in a cruise missile. A couple more kills needed. Back to P1. First set of rotations, looking good for Air Force, living up to their expectations when it comes to sub base as they're looking to continue to build the lead and they're already locking down more time on B1. Yeah, I'm getting a little worried for Coast Guard now. I was saying, you know, you had that slow start from Waz. You needed to take advantage. Waz oh. is starting to heat up now on five in a row, looking for that cruise missile. We'll see if he can find it here. We'll drop probably down inside of comms, I'd imagine, to find this kill. Maybe we might be able to get the player off the hill. They will. That's a cruise missile locked in. That's right. They lose track of him, and he's able to continue to play the high ground, trying to make the hill go neutral at the very least. Finally dealt with, but... It looks like the damage already done. Cruise missile in the back pocket for some of those future rotations. 20 seconds left. Coast Guard doing a solid job of trying to collect some of this time. And this is critical time that they need. They have some players on the rotation, but just about every single one is dealt with in Air Force. They've been solid on some of these rotations. They were solid on the rotations, but Coast Guard did find a break on this hill in the first set of rotations. Although you didn't have Waz this pushed far up, this can absolutely be, like you called out before the map, a blender to get through right now. And you're seeing just how difficult it is having to push through the tunnel, which is also a bit of a choke, right? One player going to flank all the way around the back. That could influence the spawn. Grand Puma going to take a rotation, but hits red. Chewie will find him. The mid-map control completely on point. Four players going to go down. Still deep spawns, and he's still going to get through Waz, who's set up up top, just mowing them down. At the very least, you get a spawn in the back, right? So now you have an opportunity. The thing is, you don't want to get trapped back there. So if you're going to push out from here, you need to find these kills immediately and then push forward on the map because the next hill is going to come to you very quickly. 25 seconds left. None of it has really been contested. A big difference since we saw this P2 hill through the first set of rotations. High ground being fought for. Trizzy just trying to battle his way through the map, but also wants to put a bit of pressure maybe on the scrap time. And he won't be able to lock down this member. Can't find him. Trade is there. But again, just 10 seconds. You're seeing about a 100-point differential. And there's already members fighting in the back. And that's another big win from Chewie. But he might need to come up with a second. The regen will come through. Big one-on-one -on -one here. Probably going to influence the spawns for this entire hill. If he can walk away with the win. Oh, Trophy going to be able to block that stun out too. But he's going to get some help. Reinforcements will come through. That's a massive win for Air Force. They have a big opportunity to close this game out right here. The teamwork is just completely on point at the moment. Air Force looking to put it away right here and right now. Up top. Lost up to eight in a row. He's overlapped his streak. He's just been going absolutely bonkers up top. No one's been able to deal with him. The ARs are popping off. He's up to 22 and eight. 10 seconds now for the win. Was looking for nine. Make it number 10. My goodness, go to the pistol. Makes it look easy. And that should be it for game number one. Air Force, they bounce back.
Was started that game like four and six. I was like, oh, he's having a slow start. Uh, don't I look dumb now? I mean, Waz <laughs> just flipped that switch. Ten in a row to end the game. Absolutely insane stuff. And that was the Waz we have been waiting to see here on main stage so far today. Didn't really get, I mean, you got a little bit of in that first series, a little taste of it, but that is the Waz that we saw yesterday in the group stages. That's right. He looked completely on point. I mean, it is just that ability to take over games. And if you can solo win your team rotations or stop an entire push into the hard point, like you were doing so much, right? You're delaying so much time and you get put in those tricky spots, especially on a map like Subbase, where it's like, okay, do we hit this one more time with 30 seconds left or do we just start to rotate? And when you force teams to make those tough decisions, that's when they make big mistakes. So they were able to grab themselves a, a very nice win and now have to try to change together for a second. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think when you look at these guys and they come into this one, I think that if you're Coast Guard, you're looking at this search and destroy, I think it's going to be tough, right? They, they had a hard time when you come in now, slow the game down, try to find those little picks. They look good, actually, at the very start of the hard point when the game was paced very slow, kind of in the way that it felt like they kind of wanted to play the pacing. Right. Once that game got fast, though, and you let Wads get free, that's when they started to struggle. I think that's going to be a big part to the search and destroy. You slow things down, make them come to you. Maybe you were able to find some success. Yeah, that will certainly be the big key coming in here for us as we take a look at the map set once again. So, map number one, locked in. Remember, just stay best of three. So, Air Force win this, they move on. And fortunately, the Coast Guard would go packing. But it's Karachi. Bit of a different map. There's a lot of open flanks, open potential, you know, ladders that are kind of involved with this map. A lot of high ground, low ground. So this one can be very difficult to lock down fully as a four-man unit. You know, you're often leaving something open. And if you can pick those points when you're on the attack or maybe even on the defense, you can get behind enemy lines and you can really cause some chaos. As a submachine gun player myself, I think that this map is my favorite search and destroy map. Gives you a lot of opportunities to really get active on the map as well. A lot of flank opportunities going through lights, pushing through scrap right early in the rounds especially on your defenses so look for that especially here in this game but I mean I love this map though there's so many different things that you can do even on your offenses a lot of different spots you can throw smoke down to maybe push out find your way through the map to really get in and, and be irritating to the opposing team if you can find those portions that it's gonna lead to a lot of success I agree 100% and like you already mentioned, there's been glimpses of, you know, some potential there in the search and destroy, right? We saw Coast Guard play uh, a couple of their series really, really close. I think they went to around 11 yesterday on they Invasion, did. right? So we know that they have it. It's just a matter of figuring it out, you know, early rather than later, because that's where it feels like maybe they get a little bit flustered and the rounds start stacking up. But first and foremost, got to shut down some of these members that have been absolutely popping off so far in this series. If they can do that, they might have a good shot. But map number two, this could be it for the Coast Guard. It is now do or die. Have to find this map if we're going to a map number three. Absolutely. We'll see what we start off with. Looks like we're going to get Air Force on the offense. Daisy, going to be the player. Very likely to pick up the bomb here. Yep, yeah, that's what we've seen a lot yesterday as well. Actually, no, I thought they were, but no, not going to grab the bomb. Actually going to drop it. And now Air Force, though, looks like we're going to see a very heavy B hit. Lots of tacticals being thrown right off the bat here. And you can see the smoke's already looking to come in. Hey, look at this B pressure. I love this. They are going to spot the player that ends up getting top fountain, but that is a power position in itself. Even if you know he's there, have to use teamwork or use this top three control that Wast is in to try to maneuver him out of the power spot just 30 seconds into the round no movement as we take a look at the defense they're simply set up and they're happy with what they got and look at grand puba i was talking about this possibility of a flank here already paying off there's a very good opportunity if you see a uh, a rotation come through from air force he will be able to catch him off guard here certainly the case was a little bit wary of a potential flank that could come through still know that nazir has been playing over towards fountain and he should have some crossfire it looks like up top there inside of church so there is a bit of safety and a bit of cover fire if someone decides to make a push but that position now going to be completely conceded so he's basically on an island can he find one yes it's going to be trimsky for one that zero gets his second gun battle that's exactly what you wanted to see from the coast guard and now there's only 20 seconds left not a lot of time to work with here bomb is down not able to win out on that gunfight either if you're was you just need to get active i think at this point run through try to challenge this because you have no time to work with right now and it doesn't look like coast guard's going to give them anything can't happen that can't happen gotta win those oh boy i'd be getting loud after that and you could hear him my goodness hands going up and, and that's what you need sometimes you need a round like that you know get the blood pumping 
just to see a little bit of success and say, man, we just destroyed those guys in that round. Let's go. Let's try to get the vibes up. That is a great showing and a great defensive setup. That B setup was insane, actually. I mean, you even got first blood of there if you're a Coast Guard. Grand Puba did go for that flank wasn't able to find anything he was the first blood of the round but because your defense was so strong even though you found that first blood air force goes to push in guess what you still got three guns pointing at you you drop that was a great round from coast guard yeah i love to see it great start here for the boys trying to pull off a big upset mid map control will be taken from nazir who just had that nasty kill up top on wasit who's clearly been the standout player for this air force squad at that third c Still looking over towards this B bomb site. Coast Guard are going to lose one early, so that's going to put a lot of pressure on somebody to likely make an aggressive move. We'll see what they decide to do. It looks like the call might be to push back. I think they might want to try to wrap this bomb over towards A. It's exactly what's going to happen to Zier with the bomb. Will be the player to start moving over towards here, but I think they're actually worried about a possible flank coming through as well. They're gonna they're gonna keep one player back. It's Trizzy, just to play on top of third here. Try to spot out if there's anybody to push through. But they're gonna run right into Daisy, who is set up over at A. Going to be a tough ask, without a doubt. A lot of noise might be made inside the hotel on top of it. But Daisy's in a key spot, as you mentioned. He's got. Pretty much eyes on bomb or should get sound cues to likely get a check. Is he gonna clear it out? That gunfight gonna take place. Gets a good look at it, but that sub will get the job done. Grand Pooba in the back finds the trade, but this would have to be for the ace. And while he's only got 15 seconds left, he's gonna have to commit to the plant. Decides not to, is expecting maybe one player just to straight up rush him. And well, doesn't have time for a bomb plant. Add a look at a second kill. Not the case. Air Force will get the read and they'll tie things up. Yeah, they'll tie things up here. That's a good round from them too. They, I feel like if you're Air Force, you needed that one, honestly. I, especially with how the last search and destroy went, they didn't find a lot of uh, a lot of success on their offenses that we saw uh, on the on the last map of Invasion. That's what they were playing, and they had a lot of trouble finding anything on offense. Took no map control, so defenses I think are going to be really really pivotal for Air Force inside of this map. Agreed. Well, see, offensive round coming back in for this Air Force squad. Do they want to try to attack this A site, change it up just a tad bit, maybe even make some noise by B, just to create a bit of a distraction. It looks like a big mid play here, so Grand Pooba wisely won't take that route, but will this be an opening for Daisy to slip right through? Yes, it is. He's able to find Azir, a big shutdown here on that Coast Guard squad, and now you have a lot of options. This bomb is still not necessarily dedicated to either bomb site, so they can still make a lot of moves. Oh, that bomb is in a really bad spot, actually, though. You go down, not going to realize it, though, I don't think. Grand Poop is not pushed up enough where you find that kill. You're not going to see that bomb on the ground. So you have an opportunity now for your Air Force. You can still back up, pick this bomb up, and still make a choice. But again, I mean, outside of the forward pushed, per, uh, the forward pushed player in venue, everybody else really giving up a lot of map control here. <laughs> you don't have anywhere to go. It's basically just bottlenecking you to have to go over towards A now. It's, it's forced out. We'll see what Waz can do. If anybody's going to open it up, it will be him. Big gun fight. He's able to get it. Evens up the numbers. 2v2 we go. A little bit of time to play with, but you're going to have to move quickly. A looks to be the target, and there's high ground up top on Platt. Trizzy, he can get all the information needed, but he has to make sure he doesn't go down. Both players now going to be spotted on the site. Daisy trying to get a read on this flank, but it looks like the bomb should go down safely. That's big. That's big. You get the bomb down, you are able to at least push that player off of that high ground for now, but a pinch will start to develop here from Coast Guard. Oh, big win in the back. Tough gun fight there for Trixie, to be sure. 1v2. Trimsky, could he pull it off? There's the first one. Does he turn? He's able to slip away. Was now. No idea where this player could have actually positioned from, and there's about 25 seconds left. Gonna have to go. Yeah, you have no idea right now where Waz is, and <laughs> you can see there is panic right now on Drimsky's face. No idea where to go. Waz just has to check the bomb over and over again, sees nobody on it. Waz pretty much has won this round at this point, unless you get a, a weird gunfight. Oh. oh, there was a chance. There was a chance there, but that defuse should not come through. Oz, I almost spoke too soon. I almost cast <laughs> first that. You did. <laughs> <laughs> Man. That got a little scary there for a second. I mean, there was just one more second more and he might've had a chance to get that kill, slip out and try to hop on that bomb. But very well done, finessing quite literally near the end there just to make sure that there was no chance to stick that diffuse and that's what you wanted to see there. The Air Force boys starting to put it together here. Multiple players get involved in the play and they're able to find themselves a nice rotation over to that A site. If I cast Akers that this early into the tournament, I, I think I would have just had to stop at this point. I would have been like, hey, Colin, you're in for the rest of the series. You and Austin, you, you guys go do your thing. I, if, I, if I'm cast Akers that early on a situation like that, that would have been crazy. But not going to be the case. I'm allowed to stay on, this, on the desk you're for good. now. You're good just for now. Just for now. <laughs> All right, two on the tally. Air Force starting to pick up steam. Coast Guard need to find that 
similar round number one that they had, but they were finding the first bloods. They were dictating a little bit more of the pace. And Azir oh, just doesn't get a read on that player up top who's been able to position inside of the fountain. And that's going to make things just that much trickier trying to attack one of these sites. But they do even up the odds. The venue also going to drop, so now less members here on the map. Yep, Trizzy will find that trade. Really going to be interesting to see what they decide to do here. They actually get a second as well, so that's massive. Now you've got that number advantage. Daisy going to pop, uh, going to pop their dead silence here. Maybe try to get active through middle of the map. Try to get a trade back here for your team. The only problem is you got to deal with Waz in this very, very difficult position to get a player out of. Absolutely. You almost need a double team. I mean, they're kind of hitting them one by one, so he's able to get the reads, no problem whatsoever. Waz doing what Waz does best, and that is just simply kill and slay. Six and two for him. One v two now for Trizzy. And Daisy, I think, has got an idea. Freebie there for him. Air Force will track them down. They'll make sure there is no room to breathe in that round. It's really tough. I mean, I, I brought it up last series when I was casting with Colin, and I was saying, when you get those big number advantages like you do in that situation where you, you get no trade there, you're in a 3v2, but instead of playing together, you just take individual gunfights. You sure. lose one to Daisy, lose one to Wasp. Now you're in a 1v2. Just play together at some point. It makes it a lot easier to make these pushes and win these rounds. And once you can trade efficiently, that's how you're going to walk away with these round wins. Now you give an offense to, to Air Force, and they are going to be feeling very confident after taking their first offense of the day. Yeah, they will be. So looking for what could be another round in a row for Air Force. They've taken three. Looking for four. The venue hasn't gotten involved. The Chewy hasn't been all that involved yet either. It's mainly just been Daisy and Waz who have been taking over, doing what needs to be done. Very slow start coming in towards round number five. Just early positioning down low in Chicken Coop, looking to try to scout out this B-bomb, and now you get a different position inside of Concrete here, and you can see Nazir really shut down this play if they decide to fly through. Yeah, Daisy was able to actually take Nazir out of the same positioning last time with a flank through middle of the map. Not gonna find that opening this time through. And it actually looks like Air Force, once again on an offense, getting stalled out. They don't really know where to go with this. They're not getting the information mid-map, and the call is gonna be, hey, we need to wrap this bomb out. I at least like that they're getting proactive this time on their offense. Yeah, I love this call to rotate late, and they haven't really given over a whole lot of information but you do have players now positioned in the hotel grand puba he's got a huge job he's got four players basically in front of him top and bottom oh it doesn't get oh. a read there Loss is able to find one venue finds the second defender and now the last two here for ghost guard they're out of position but nazir is able to find one on the rotation oh but they'll go down too it's just it's it's inevitable at that point right you have 4v2 Bob is going to go down there. You have to push back onto the site. Yes, you have the advantage of having the height there in that situation, but the number advantage can just be too much and too overwhelming. I mean, Waz gets tagged up and still chows through exactly. the map. Like, it, it's just because if he goes down there, you're just going to get a slide out from bus, a trade immediately. It does, does not matter in that situation. That's how you trade effectively and use your man advantage. Well, Coast Guard now really need to start putting some rounds together. Down 4 1. Just two more rounds for the win here. And Air Force are advancing to losers round number two. Coast Guard, we would be saying goodbye to them. So this is now really do or die. Have to find this round. It's just too much to expect. Multiple rounds in a row if they lose this one too. Absolutely. Way easier to come back from down 4-2 than 5-1. That is for sure. You don't want to be on that pressure back foot situation. So definitely need to find that here. Looks like they're going to have a chance to overwhelm Daisy over at the bomb site here. They're just playing back diner right now. Trying to see if they can find any information. They haven't gotten anything yet. And Coast Guard very slowly starting to creep their way up towards the site. Trizzy over the top, gonna get some info, but won't finish off the kill. And looks like Grand Puba, she's gonna try to stick this. And it should go down safely, so I love this play. Now you have a lot of pressure on Air Force to try to come and play retake, and they're gonna have to do it quickly. And Air Force has had a hard time breaking into bomb sites on their offenses, so now we'll see if they can break into a bomb site on a 4v4 defense. Mm. This is gonna be really interesting to see how they answer back here, if they're able to do it. They do have an open avenue, they'll find a first blood as well with Daisy, that's massive. Oh, Trimsky though, he was just hovering around in the middle. He's able to find himself one. Venue gets one back, trade is good. Nazir needs to finish off this kill, but the player completely backs down, and now it's just completely chaos. 15 seconds on the clock. Have to try to get the defuse if you're Air Force. Venue, not able to get to the bomb in time, all down to one. Daisy, can he pull this off? The time is just simply not gonna be there, and it looks like Coast Guard, they do in fact win this round. Very strong team play and a much needed one. And you said they needed this, and they absolutely will close that round out. 
that's really big for them. They're able to at least walk away with a round victory there. And Air Force, again, struggling to find that break. It's, it's just happening over and over again. If they don't have that map information that they need, this team seems to struggle a lot with finding the breaks into, into either hills, into zones. This is something really interesting that we need to watch going through the rest of this tournament. Because if they don't adjust some of these things, when they go up against the big dogs, like we saw when they went up against Space Force, yes. that is where it's going to hurt you. They might have this game in control right now. Coast Guard can still very easily take this one back, though. Have to start to build off of it. And can you shut this offense down? Daisy's also able to keep his life, which is, you know, pretty critical. He could add in some late game insurance with a potential streak, just two off that cruise missile. I do yeah. like this, though. This is a very fast hit, very particular hit from Air Force. They know what they want to do. They're going to bring this bomb over towards A. And Coast Guard have completely given up. I think yeah. they're just like, hey, guess what? We'll just completely play for a retake. Maybe they want to show them how it's done. They are going to push all the way through. So if they can do this in a timely manner, there's a chance to really catch them off guard because you're still clearing hotel. You're still not sure where some of the defensive members might be positioned, but they are going to push all the way through. So the timing here may not work out for them. The bomb will be planted. And now, once again, 4v4 retake. It took so long to get that bomb down. I, I thought that it was going to be way faster. Daisy, though, in a great position in red. Find that first blood. That's at least very big. This, it's all going to come down to the flank of these two players. Yeah, you're going to have to go pretty quickly here, too. 30 seconds left. Someone has to make an engagement. Someone has to make a move. It looks like they're going for Daisy, but it's going to be traded. Now, a one versus three. 20 seconds. Have to pull up a miracle if you're going to be able to win this one. Trimsky just not really going to be able to get anywhere in time. Air Force lock it down and back-to-back -back offensive rounds come through. I really thought if you were a Coast Guard, you actually had a good opportunity to win that round. I just think that the flank took a little bit too long to develop. Once you yeah. get into that situation where, hey, they're not in front of us, they gotta be behind us at some <laughs> point, right? So they, they're able to turn around, find that through. But I thought because Air Force took so long to get that bomb down that there was an opportunity for Coast Guard to make that flank play work. Unfortunately, it just does not come through. And now Coast Guard, really on the back foot here, down 5-2. You're gonna have to rattle off four rounds in a row just to have an opportunity to play a third map mm -hmm. to stay inside of this tournament. It's all ask, but not impossible. And it looks like they're gonna go back to what was working in that round number one, but can they deal with Waz, who was really the key player that stopped them from making the move, but this one's coming with a bit more tempo. Smoke's gonna come down early. Stun will connect to make sure that they don't fly right out, but they're gonna try to use just the last couple seconds of that smoke to push through, and they do, in fact, get in, but it's not enough. And oh, it's a team kill. Not what you wanna see. Waz at least got two, but you just, well, gave Ghost Card a solid chance of bringing this one back. Waz gets a two-piece <laughs> that gets traded out by his own teammate's cruise missile. Unfortunate, to say the least. I think they actually might have just gotten the information on the last player. Daisy will lose it up top, though. Uh, instantly traded out. I was so here for Coast Guard, but unfortunately, that's gonna be the end of their run here at the tournament. Big round of applause for Coast Guard. Absolutely gave it their all here today. We say goodbye to them, but they certainly came in, gave a couple of these squads a solid run, and Air Force definitely had to dig a little bit deeper, you know, in that search and destroy to make sure they were closing in some of those rounds, had to make some adaptations, and they had some pretty good rotations as well. So, we say goodbye to one of our squads so far here at ForceCon, but one of them will in fact move on, and Air Force now has a chance to start snowballing, building up momentum in that lower bracket. We talk about momentum a lot in Call of Duty, because once you get that first one under your belt, you feel like it starts coming together, the trust gets a little bit stronger, and now you have a chance to see if you can continue to make that run. And famously a lot in Call of Duty, there's a lot of yes. lower bracket runs. You're <laughs> absolutely correct. I mean, anybody who watches the CDL here, you'll know Atlanta Phase, they are or uh, not before they were Atlanta Phase, but Phase Clan back in the day, they were really good at it. Uh, LA Thieves in the CDL, they were a team right. that, in, in World War II especially. You hit that lower bracket, they just go on a run, they end up winning the whole tournament, right? So it's definitely possible. Air Force, they just need to clean up those little mistakes though. I think that if they're not gonna clean up Search and Destroy especially, they need to make sure they're winning those hard points right now. Yeah. I will say the sub base is looking good, and we we'll, might see that a little bit more <laughs> earlier on in the tournament, or further on, rather. But now we have Spider Tip standing by with our interviewee. Hey, thank you so much, guys. I am joined alongside Waz, or WASD, however you want to call it, but we're keeping it with Waz. Congratulations on the victory. Now, talk us through what it's like beginning that lower bracket run here on the stage. Um, I mean, we just know what we have to do. We just played horribly the first series, so we just had to hit a regain, and I think that was our regain series. Nice. I love a good regain series. And you said you guys played horribly, so tell me a little bit more on some specific things that you were looking on correcting for this match and forward. Um, it's mostly just our teamwork and our comms. I feel like we weren't doing very good that first series, and then we definitely stepped it up that second series, and it showed. 
I love that. Okay, so the comms, though, cohesion. Now, I'm curious if, you know, service, doing all those things, is that a lot to help you when it comes to gaming here and you can apply a lot of the things in your IRL job to here? Um, so you're asking if the service, being in the service helps gaming? Um, I think opportunities like this is amazing, so that's only something that you can do in the service. But honestly, it's just a hobby that I have, so the service just was a plus as well. I really do love that for you. Now, a lot of people, they tend to game at home behind their screen, but we are here live in the venue on stage. What goes through your head when you kind of walk up those stairs and lock into the computer here? Um, it's a very surreal feeling, honestly, being able to play at a venue like this. So it's definitely like a lifetime experience. So it's amazing to do. And I mean, I just walk in whenever we get to the setups. Good. Well, we got to keep locking it in for your next series here. Now, it, talk me through a little bit of what is going to look like for that next series, knowing that if you lose, you're kind of done here. Um, just giving it all we got. Make sure we stay on top of the comms, on top of the teamwork. Um, we know we have the gunny. We know we don't lose our ones, so it's mostly just fixing those things. They don't lose their ones. Look, I'm ready to see if that's going to look for them. Any special shout-outs that you want to give here to wrap things up? Um, Shout-out my teammates. Shout out the teammates. Thank you so much, Waz. Good luck on your journey. I really do appreciate it. Guys, I mean, the action's not done here just yet. We're going to jump into a break, and when we come back, more action.
Hello everyone and welcome back to ForceCon 2024. We are getting deeper into the bracket. It's getting better and better. And now we have our winner's finals coming up next. I'm of course Visions. Alongside me I have Seymour. And now we're getting into the best of fives, my friend. It's only getting better from here. I mean, it's been sweep so far. 2-0, 2-0. 2-0, and then now a best of five. At least we're gonna get that control today. And I wanna see a series go the absolute distance between these two. It's been a long time coming, seeing Space Force take down the Air Force yet again, and now go up against Army, the team that has been at the top so far of our list here at ForceCon. Yeah, we take a look at the schedule, and like you said, two O's the whole way through. Some of those being a tad bit closer, especially in the Search and Destroys, but this is where I feel like we're gonna have maybe even our potential rematch in the Grand Finals, right? These two yeah. have clearly been, you know, the, the clear cut one and two. Those are the seeds that are coming in. Army is the number one seed, Space Force coming in at number two. So are they gonna be able to carry this on? That's really gonna be the big question. And can Space Force come up and really upset this team that we're really calling in the favorites? Uh, they have the potential. We saw it versus Air Force and they have, you know, their coach coming in, you know, one, a very seasoned veteran inside of Call of Duty, ready to kind of take this team to the next level. And for Air Force, I mean, I think Space Force playing them close yesterday and then smoking them today earlier on really kind of goes to show the actual adaptations and changes that the Space Force team is going through. It's what you like to see for a team who is trying to take down a champion, the defending champions of yes. Army. That's really the big call out, right? These guys looking to try to go back to back and they very well could if they keep it up. This will be our first real look at them on broadcast, but throughout yesterday they were looking solid. You take a look at that winner's final, they're sitting pretty up there. You win this, you go into the grand final and you're gonna be in a very good spot. So we'll see if they're gonna be able to do that. But we are gonna take a look at the content piece with the army as we throw it to the content. My name is Brandon Connedy. My IGN is Flameberg. I used to go by Flamehead when I was seven. That sounded weird, so I just changed it to Flameberg. My name is Nicholas McKay. My military rank is I'm a staff sergeant. My in-game name is Dexy. Originally, I wanted to be ambidextrous growing up, so I shortened it down. I'm Sergeant Lohi Martin. When I was thinking about my IGN, didn't really know what to put, but me being from Czech, it was kind of like an easy answer. My name is Christopher Gallick. My in-game name is React. I thought one word was cool. If you had one word in your gamer tag, it was like, oh, you're good at the game. So I discovered USA through uh, just playing 
playing Call of Duty and I saw somebody with the clan tag USAE. I asked them about it and then they invited me to Discord and that's how I got into it. I just love Call of Duty. I've been playing it for a lot of years now. It just gives the opportunity to immerse ourselves in something different. It's a really good outreach for military members. I never thought like through the military that I'd be able to get sent to do something I enjoy on a daily basis. Now here we are sitting together, scrimming and practicing for an entire week together. We've all known each other various amount of times. So we've been playing it with each other on and off at least since MW2, or Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, we're, we're really close friends. I'm the, the main AR or IGL. Pretty much just yell at everyone what to do. <laughs> I got the second sub, both the subs over here and then both the ARs. I just think it's great that we are able to come here early and actually practice together in person next to each other for these 12 hours is actually really enjoyable. Prioritizing trying to, to practice and not sleep as much, honestly. Yeah, honestly yeah, that's the biggest thing is just not sleep. I'm not worried, I'm not about, worried anybody. about anybody. Yeah. My name is Brandon Connedy. My I love that right Splendid. there. You saw those guys coming out and saying they're a unit, and now we'll see how they are coming out to the stage as we welcome the Army. I mean, what can we say? Defending champions from our previous Force Con taking the stage finally here for our Call of Duty tournament. Just previously to this offstage, taking down our Marine Corps. We did not get to see the match, but it was a 2-0 sweep. They made it look good. This is the team that people expect to walk out champions. And now I'm excited to finally see them on stage. Me too, my friends. We take a look at the roster. Dexy, Flameberg, Reacts, and Check. These guys have been absolutely elite. They're looking to take that to the next level, looking to punch their ticket to the grand final. We'll see if they can do exactly that going. Now, yesterday, we got to watch a little bit of the VOD from this Army team from the round robin. Dexy had an incredible search and destroy. Reacts, very consistent player. Check out there, running routes, keeping the team in line. And I think, you know, for the Army, the way that they have composed this team, even talking about themselves in that video, saying that, you know, the fact that they're able to, you know, come to a tournament and do what they love to do, you know, this team is just ready to feel as comfortable as possible to make their way into the grand finals here with the best of five. Well, we'll see if they can do it. And of course, the Army's opponents give it up for Space Force. Out in the Gold Bowl, we saw Space Force take home the very first title. That's in Warzone. This is multiplayer. And now four are the team taking the stage. They took down the Air Force, and they looked incredible. They almost looked unstoppable, might I say. So now they head up to the next Titan, the Army, mm. and the next monster in their closet. And the Space Force team hopefully has made some changes to take them down. Well, we take a look at this roster. Hail, Cabasse, and we have Revenge as well as Atama. These guys coming out here, looking to make the statement, looking to try to pull off the big upset. And this is, again, maybe a potential preview of what we're gonna get in that grand final. These guys have been coming out frying. I wanna take a look at that first guy, Colin Hale. He's been cooking. I mean, Hale was great in the search and destroy earlier uh, against the Air Force, but I also have to talk about, you know, Kabase, the way that they were playing that Rio and the way that this whole team just says that, you know, it seems like they were clicking, they found their form, they were playing together, and they were playing what they felt was the right way to play the game. If they can find those strides again here versus the Army, that's a scary thing to play up against a team who gets that rhythm done as we get a look at our map series. Subbase coming up first. We just got a little dose of subbase in our last set. We saw how important the ARs were. We were certainly emphasizing that. But then we'll move into a six star where Army have a lot of reps. And then we'll jump into our high rise control. Our first control as well that we're going to see on the day guaranteed. If need be, Vista Hardpoint. And then we'll go to that high rise search if we make it to the game five. Oh, you and me, we want to see that Vista Hardpoint come we out sure map number do. four. Love that map <laughs> in the rotation. High rise search and destroy. Hopefully we get ourselves at game five as you know Ken Austin was saying this is a potential for you know a grand final matchup the way that these two teams have been playing so this is a good test for the Space Force to see how good they can be against this army team who have looked very dominant across the force con tournament so far whether it was the round robins the scrims or the tournament this team has been on top and with the sub base coming out and seeing the way that you know we got 
Kabase on that MCW back on Rio, really commanding and dictating the pace of play against that Air Force mm. team. If Kabase can get that form again on sub base, start dominating that height, that is so important on this map. You lock down those rotations, it's gonna make Army have a tough time to get control here. Yeah, I like that call. I think one of the keys that we're really gonna see from these two squads being our first and second seed is the fact that they're really able to punish you when you make some of those small mistakes, right? If you spawn out, you're fighting gun battles in the middle of the map. Like, it just feels like the pressure is on. It's on a bit of a different level when you have two of these top tier squads going up against one another. And that's something you have to be wary of. So we'll see exactly who's gonna be able to potentially execute the best, but starting off first, grabbing like that first map here. If you're Space Force, that could do wonders for you going into this full best of five. It really could. It could be your way to prolong this series, get it to go the distance. You open up with the hard point, and that is just going to lock you in for the rest of the ride. You have a little bit of an advantage over this Army team. You've been on the main stage. You won a game on the main stage. Army hasn't done that yet. This is their first time on stage in the tournaments, and potentially Army might have to shake off a little bit of those jitters, get it on there, the nerves that you know not a lot of people are going to talk about when you get onto that main stage. Right. For a lot of these tournaments, it's not always going to be the easiest. So hopefully for Army, they're ready, they're prepared for what is about to come here for this best of five. But I know that Space Force, they've been working on this, they've been getting comfortable, they've been here, they've done that already winning a game on that main stage. Hopefully for this Space Force team against Army, if they can get off to a hot start, they might have a chance to actually take them down. Yes, and I mean, also, I think the importance of grabbing this map one for Space Force is even more important because we've seen what Army do on Six Star going, oh, and boy. you want to talk about a team that will just roll right through you, ego chow you, and just suffocate you on the map. That's well, them. that's them. That's, <laughs> that is them to a T, isn't it? It feels like there is often no breathing room sometimes, and when you lose that first or second member, it's difficult to bring it back. And even when you have the numbers advantage, how many clutches did we see out of those guys yesterday? Too many. Too I can't many. count on my hand. I mean, there's only 11 rounds, so maybe it just goes to the, the furthest where I can't count on a third <laughs> hand. But, you know, it is going you. to be one of those things where if Space Force can kind of get into that rhythm that they had, you talked about a player like Hale yes. getting those first bloods, making sure that Air Force cannot get that map control and as soon as that first blood gets or uh, that first blood happens the rest of the team flies they take that space they make sure that you cannot bring things back and i think when you have a team like that especially in a map like six star where flanking mm. is so rampant there's so many routes for that rival nine player to take and it's very quickly to get from your spawn to the enemy spawn in the first 15 seconds of the game there are chances here for the space force team to actually you know come out swinging in these first two maps i think that this map set is really really strong towards them in the way that they can you know maybe start to dictate a little bit of the play style of this army team but again i mean this army team has been kind of moving different this weekend and to looking at that stick star you can never count that out it's going to be a lot easier said than done Right, I think really the big factor about this army squad is that any single member on this roster has that ability to completely take over. That's dangerous when you yeah. go up against a team like that because just because someone's down a little bit, someone else can pick up the slack. And when you have a team that can really elevate themselves in those situations, it, it makes you very difficult to deal with. And it forces the opponents to have to do the same. You can't have one person slacking. If so, you're gonna see the results of that on the scoreboard. Of course, and, and I mean, tech board, it's the winner's final. This team is going to move to the grand finals if you could take this best of five i mean this is one of the turning points in the tournament that is going to skyrocket your chances of moving into a championship you skyrocket your chances of walking home with a trophy for your branch this is such a big moment so everybody in the venue i mean i hope you're ready for this one because this is going to be a crazy match gonna be great man i cannot wait to get into it we'll be loading in very very shortly to see how this one's gonna take place this would also be the army's first time on stage main stage here right they played yeah. their game offset uh, you know during uh that round one or round two matchup at the same time here so maybe there's a bit of a comfort factor that you could talk about for space force coming in and being able to get up on the right foot uh we'll have to see though because like you said these guys are a bunch of beasts on the other oh, side yeah. not gonna underestimate them but maybe these guys uh, at least for space force are warm maybe have got some of those jitters out and, uh, you know, as we get later and later in towards the day, I'm sure this venue is going to fill up more and more. So more and more eyes on you maybe sometimes builds up the pressure, but I'm I sure these say, guys at least are up to it. At least if you're both of these teams, this isn't the end of the road. I mean, it's a double elimination bracket. That's you true. lose here, you're not done. 
So there's a little bit of comfort in that, and I don't want to see teams get complacent because of it. I mean, like you're going to come into this match, and you don't want to just concede it to your opponent, and this is a chance for you to kind of set your stocks for that finals. If you make the lower bracket run, fine, that's great. But you don't want to go into the grand finals again after making that lower bracket right. run after getting stomped. So this match has a lot of weight to it. And this is something where you kind of want to make sure that you're not feeling complacent, you're not feeling comfortable in the fact that it's a double elimination bracket. Well, certainly the case for us. We're getting ready to jump in very, very soon. Do apologize about the delay, ladies and gentlemen. Everyone getting set up, getting ready on stage. And we'll be jumping right into that hard point to see how this one does, in fact, kick off. I'm also excited to see really one of the first controls. We mentioned it very briefly, Colin, but this will be a first look to see how these teams have been able to play. And I oh, think yeah. the one thing about Space Force is they have Mochilla as the coach. He's come in. He's been My able to maybe help prep them. So we'll see if he's going to be able to potentially get them ready for you know, one of those more complicated game modes oh, yeah. that requires more teamwork. Yeah, and I mean, like it's kind of coming down to, like, are you one of those teams that has been practicing the controls. Have, how much scrim time have you been getting? Because you haven't been seeing a lot of play time when it comes down to these matches. So mm. are you prepared for what's to come in that chapter three? It's a big question that's kind of like a, it's, it's an unknown right now. And we're gonna have to move into some unknown territory. All right, well, while we'll wait, we will take a look at Space Force's content piece. My name is Special Score Blake Hale, stationed at Buckley Space Force Base, and I just go by my last name, Hale. My name is Dante Antonio Gilbert Rodriguez. My in-game name is Itama, and I'm stationed at Buckley Space Force Base. My name is Ryan Cabase. My in-game name is Cabase, and I'm stationed at Buckley Space Force Base. Well, my name is Brandon Belingit. In-game name is Revenge, and then I'm stationed at Buckley Space Force Base. I've been playing games for pretty much my entire life. First like main FPS on the 360 Halo 3 and then COD 4. It was a Guitar Hero phase, there was a Mario Kart phase, there was like Mario Sunshine when I was growing up too, but Call of Duty has always been that staple. I competed a lot when I was younger, like when I was in high school, I would like go out, go out to locals and stuff, fly out to Texas a lot. Being able to like relive my childhood dream, playing LAN, I love it. I would say we pretty much met through AFG. If we weren't playing games, especially with the military, then we probably wouldn't have met. This is probably like the best uh, Space Wars uh, Call of Duty team will probably be ever to field. I'd be a flex, probably more of a slayer. I do the dirty work, I would say. Make sure rows and time is getting collected. You have like a cool little structure going, so. Yeah. Somebody's getting more kills, you know, shining bright in the game. Somebody's gotta be taking the blunt end, you know, getting less engagements. I feel like the worst team talks the most, you know. That's insane, because we talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> We've only scrimmed Air Force, really. Hope the Marines come out to shoot, because their hands are gonna have some crayons on those, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> then, then you wash your hands. I just want the Air Force to lose, like, badly. <laughs> they're all nice people, you know, in real life, in game, like, they're awful. Come tourney day, whoever shows up can take it, I guess. Yeah, 100%. I love that content piece right there. The team that talks the most is usually the worst. <laughs> That's a great <laughs> little line coming on in, but these guys seem to be, these have a little bit of humbleness, you know, amongst themselves. It feels like they got a bit of a rivalry, of course, with Air Force, yeah. and they were able to deal with them. So now they're just looking to try to keep this on rolling, but uh, it looks like we are just about ready to jump in towards map number one. Again, this is our winner finals. Whoever wins this moves on to Grands. This is going to be a big one. This is for top two. A lot on the line. The trophy is waiting for a team to hoist it and this match will determine who's going to be the first to have that chance dropping it towards that sun based wintry tundra that is in front of us i mean how tough is this one going to be for sub base it's going to, like we kind of broke down in the pregame it's a lot going to be down to the way that the ars are going to play this map the height is so important kind of making sure that you're watching those rotations making sure the team can't cross safely and if you're kind of Bleeding them out, doing some damage on that rotation. It's going to make that a lot easier for the rival players, but it doesn't seem like we're too ready just no, yet. No, looks like we are missing one, unfortunately, on Space Force. Can't play the four versus three, so would imagine we'll be ending this very, very shortly, and there it is. So we're going to have to end that one. Uh, we are just, of course, trying to set up and, and fix any game issues that are happening currently at the moment, so we'll be getting that player back in the lobby very, very shortly. Uh, but coming back to our point, and, uh, and these guys, you know, being able to take down Air Force and, you know, showing up and, and seeming like they just have a calm, cool, collected mind, that's what you want when you're coming into a winner's final. You don't want to overheat. You don't want to 
get too excited and start to extend and give away your advantages. And if this one is going to go the distance into like a map four, let's say another hard point, the sub base is going to give away a lot mm. because there's a big misconception when you look at a map like Vista and the way that it's played. And a lot of people like immediately when you get your first eyes on this map, you're like, it's a rival map for yeah. sure. It's not a rival map. I mean, it's an MCW map just as much, much as it is an arrival map. It's so important to have your ARs playing so well, especially when it comes down to anchoring those spawns at a map like yes, Vista. So deep. when you're looking at a team like Space Force, who, you know, going into the sub base, we're highlighting a lot on their MCW play style. If they do want this one to be a win, I expect it to go to that map four. I expect that Vista Hardpoint to be in this series if Space Force is going to win. And it's going to come down to a lot on their MCW players when it comes down to these respawns, these these hard points to make sure that you are not allowing the army to walk all over you. It's going to be a lot on the line right now for the Space Force team. All right, second attempt, jumping back into sub base. Winner's final coming together here for us. Army up against Space Force, both looking to try to get the leg up on each other. And all the members are in the lobby, so we are ready to go. Let's kick it off. Sub base, hard point. Take two and action. Space Force starting on the more preferred side with the rotation over towards P2. So you look at Kabase to be one of those players to hop in over towards that top AC. Make sure you're watching the lanes for the team and dealing damage for those arrivals to kind of pick off players on the cross. But reacts with a big win over towards Kabase. It's going to allow Drexy for the cross to fight for this P2 window when he doesn't know how Hill is just there waiting for the chance to kill him. Yeah, it's a big hit over towards P2, right? They want to get the flip. They want to try to see if they can get some kind of a transition and then fight for P1, but it's actually just been P1 time completely secured here for Space Force. So now they have a chance to really start to build this up. 15 seconds or so left on P1. Nice kill comes to for Revenge. He's up to 4-0. Oh. Now he has a chance to earn an early cruise missile, but he will be shut down from Flameburg. The Renettis are Renettying right now. Man, <laughs> those up-close battles. You think you're on a rival, you might want that pistol in most of them. And Flameburg's at the MCW. Those are some nice shots on the Kapase. The hunt is on to try to get this player away from the back spawn here. Kabase, some help. Is it going to be enough slides out? The hip fire lands. Revenge wins a big one inside the hard point as well. And this could be some time for Space Force, though Trexy's going to make sure Revenge doesn't live for too long. Yeah, parallel spawns come through the middle of the map here. So a bit of a foot race. Now you start to see some of the Space Force members get into the back. Check going to throw himself onto the point. He has no idea where to look at. Where are they going to be attacking from? Gets read in the back. First shot is good, but the trade will follow. Very, very close game here so far. There's still 30 seconds left on P2. It's actually for a second had Kabase again back and forth kills. Space Force getting as much time as they can here at P2, but I think if you're Army, I mean, you're doing a great job at limiting what Space Force can do on this hill. A lot of times P2 can be a money hill, and the fact that Army is putting up quite the fight these last 11 seconds, maybe you can break in for this time, but it is not necessary. You already have Reacts already on the other side of the match. Trying to pull spawns for this army team. Will it work out? As I'm looking for player number three. He's going to spawn up with, right with them, and now it's the time for army to get this rotation on lock. Stuns nades. Everything coming over the top. Both teams trying to get a read in the back, and it looks like Kavass might be able to get himself a second. Oh, just about. Not going to be able to line up the final couple shots here. Just about 20 seconds separating these two squads. Looking to try to get the lockdown in the back, and it feels like the RB now starting to run away with a bit of the kills. Dexy's going to be up top, but you still haven't completely flipped out those spawns, and now the Army's actually in a oh, position no. where they could get pinched. Rogue spawn from Hale in the back. I, I don't know if Army's going to read this. Hale has a chance to completely deny this time, keep the lead for Space Force, and yeah, Revenge is going to help them out. They break back in towards P3. They're really taking this hill away from Army, who had that initial rotation, and this is fantastic from Space Force. With 14 seconds, they get that spot the little bit of time there and they flip the spawns again to p4 austin i mean that is the best of sub base yep that's exactly how you want to play this map and they're even going to find some beautiful early rotational kills that last hill was still active for a second not going to be too deep of a spawn coming back onto the map for reacts but the setup is in and this is where you have to find some critical and difficult kills if you're the army and you're seeing now revenge starting to go road to the middle he's just cutting off those reinforcements one by one now flameberg tanks down to 20 Hale wins out the fight versus Check. On the cross, player has snuck through. Dexy 
Maybe with a chance to find the player in the hill, though Kabase stands tall and strong. Flameberg in trouble. Players on army are dropping like flies right now. And this is the most time we've seen out of any team in a hard point space force. Ooh. A chance to get all 60 seconds here on P4. They've moved it into at the moment a 40 point lead, and they have a chance to grow it even further into possible triple digits. That was perfect. A perfect rotation into a perfect hold. Army don't even really get a sniff of that hard point. They do a good job of cleaning up the X. Exits, but it's too little too late. They have to start looking towards P5. They do have the initial setup here for P5, but as they're fighting, you're starting to lose some of that high ground. Revenge now up to 14 and 6. This man is fried. Yeah, 14 and 6 is absolutely ridiculous out of revenge, but this is where Army, if they can find these kills over towards P2, flip the spawns for Space Force. They can set up a spawn trap a lot of times here on P5. This is a possible money heal if you can manipulate your opponent. That's a quick three down. You can see that Space Force are going to be spawning up into the back of P3. So they're going to have to fight their way through this warehouse. With Atama finding a big double kill underneath the helipad, Reacts is going to get caught inside that P5. Atama's on five in a row playing for that streak now. And it's Space Force. They've broken back in. In. They have. Trying to earn a cruise missile will be Atama as he cleared out all of the players in the high ground. And now Space Force will be able to collect a good majority of his scrap time. 15 seconds up for grabs. Cabase locking things down on the time. Exactly what you want to see out of one of your key objective players. Revenge, who's just been in the right place at the right time. He's trying to get a read on where some of these players are rotating from, but he's been able to sneak up top, and now he's got a lot of information for his teammates. Yeah, so much height right now for Space Force to work with. Army seems to be a little bit trapped here, and it's fish in a barrel. It's just shooting away for Space Force. Another three go down. Kabase at four in a row, playing for another cruise missile, hops into that hard point where the rest of the team looks to slay out, but he's going to opt into playing for the streak and trying to locate a couple of these kills. Oh, won't be able to earn that kill streak. Good kill from Dexy, who played really well yesterday. Is starting to heat himself up. Army are going to need to lock down some of this time as well as win a rotation to P2 if they want to make sure this one does not get out of hand. Some of the players starting to pick it up, but the key is really shutting down players like Revenge and making sure Hale doesn't start to pick up Steam as well. Dexy up top, clean shots, but we'll have to try to regain the high ground here in a quick moment. But you look at the setup, Colin, they're looking good for P2. Now they have to hold. At 151 to 80 so far, Army have been silenced on the main stage and you need to get loud here for your team if you want to see Army rally back in the second set of rotations. They have the Roto to P2. They have the setup, but what they don't know is that player number eight, Kabase, looking for an opening through Maze, looking for this player into the back. Doesn't seem like he's going to be able to spot Bainberg just yet as Army soaking up as much time as possible here. Kabase taking a sweet time to unfold this flank. Yeah, I like that call. Kabase is able to get himself one. Won't combine for the second, but he draws attention away from the point. And now looks like the rest of Space Force starting to put together kills. One more player on the hill itself. Everyone else from the Army could actually spawn out. And player three, Flameberg, doesn't want to give this a go by himself. He wants to take his time, wait for his teammates, and try to now fight for the remaining 25. I don't know what, you give up 10 seconds here for the Space force you're not giving army anything army has to go fight this heal they cannot give up this time towards space force while they're looking to the rotations over towards p3 because you don't want to give up those uh, tr the 200 point marker to this team just yet the winner's advantage for space force is forcing army to over exert themselves across the map and for army here again you're going to get the rotation towards p3 you need to turn this into some money time. The slang has just been on a different level for Space Force as they're up 100 points. But we've seen comebacks on sub base. They can certainly happen. It starts right here, right now. Flameberg going to get himself inside the warehouse. Good for that first one. Reading the back. Long range shots. It just beams Atama. And that will slow things down a tad bit for Space Force. They lose the majority of their members. React's even going to reinforce inside the warehouse and just making it difficult for them to even get a look at the hill at the moment. Shots are neat. The... Rails, Hale's actually gonna come to the rescue there. Reacts get, falls and on top snow control. Flameberg, nice help there. Looking for two, it's gonna be three actually wow. for Army. So they take care of the rest. And that's gonna allow them to now fight out of this P3. Start to look for control through the middle of the map and see if they can put some pressure on the respawns. Space Force, if Army can flip this spawn out, get control of P4, they're right back into this game. Can they find the swift rotation now? Last time, they were unable to even get into the back. They barely even got a look at the hard point itself, and Atama's holding the exact same position. He's gonna get a read on the inside. Good drop shot. Flameberg does a good job of clearing out this bottom left corner. 
Spawn's still gonna be in the back, so you're gonna have to do it all over again, and the reinforcements aren't fully here. Oh, nice Flamberg. little pistol kill. Flameberg puts together three. He's doing everything he can to get his team closer to the point. Now with Dex, it's a one-two punch to take control of P2. Revenge, nice shot's gonna take that player off of top third. Dexy, though, putting in work with his MCW, laying down damage across the field. Ooh. Oh, Dexy almost gets a second one, barely staying alive there as Hail. The Revenge is gonna clear Dexy out of that angle, and Kavase is gonna take some pressure off the team three go down for army and space force their lead just keeps growing this rotation has quite literally been the difference maker so far in this game those are two full 60s that have come through for space force and that puts them so close to closing this game out once again a 100 point differential between the two and just another 20 seconds now needed to secure the dub if you're space force we talked about looking for revenge against the army revenge 24 and 14 manifesting it right now for his branch 230 to 144 no room for mistakes here from the army as jack's gonna be soaking up the time looking to the teammates to slay out reacts big double kill to at least help out with the team but you have a pinch coming through a collapse from p2 three go down last one in is gonna be kabase to clean up check and out of space force looking to put this one away Oh, they might just do it here, Colin. Ten more seconds for the dub. Army, final attempt to try to get into the hill. Flameberg gonna try to take a route up top, but they do have a member on the point, contesting, just trying to make them flustered. And they do exactly that. The Army's gonna hold on. Desperation play does, in fact, come in. Oh. Not out just yet, but you gotta play perfect hard point from here on out. It's only eight seconds. 11 here on the hill, so you can't give this one up just yet to the army, but now you get that rotation to P1. You are gonna be moving to another hill in the third set of rotations. The gunfights, though, not going your way, and it's gonna be Space Force here to set things up. Will they win it, though? Only seven seconds needed. Just have to throw yourself on the time. Someone's gonna have to fly for the army again. Can anyone be a hero? Looks like the answer is gonna be a hard no. Atama soaks up the final seconds and locks in map one for Space Force. Okay, so Space Force coming out with some fire on sub base. Their map of choice where they want to dance with the army. And 250 to, well, just under 174 this team. I, I cannot believe that Space Force are doing this. Yesterday they lost to this Army team, yet it was pretty close. But from yesterday to today, Space Force has been reborn. They have been. I think the idea of throwing that sub base in for that bat number one was perfect. You're already warm. You came out on the stage a little bit earlier, yeah. and the ARs were firing, right? We didn't see anyone on the other side who was typically Dexy, who feels like he's doing what we were seeing out of some of the members on Space Force. And when you can't match that slaying yeah. on a map like sub base, you're going to really feel it. And you have to make those long pushes towards the point, especially those P4s, right? Those were back-to-back -back full 60s. That's 120 points. That's basically half the game. Those guys really had that one online. And again, that was really the big difference maker. And it really helps when you have, you know, Dexy trying to take those long range battles and revenge putting up numbers with the rivals, something you don't normally see on a map like Subbase, but running those routes, taking what the ARs of your team are giving you and closing that distance against players who you really need to shut down here if you're Space Force. The recipe to success, it unfolds. They win it 171 250 in favor of Space Force. And that's going to bring us into our six-star search and destroy. Now, yeah, kind of what we were talking about back in the pregame for this one. I think for Space Force, they've really set themselves up for success when it comes down to these opening maps. Uh, a map like Six Star, something where if you get those first floods, your team can flip the map instantly. And a, sure. a lot of potential for flanks, something that we saw back on the invasion search and destroy earlier against Ace uh, Air Force for the Space Force team. And if you look at a player like Dexy, who, or, or sorry, Hale, who had a little bit of a quiet game in comparison to Revenge to kind of step up in the six star find those first bloods that somebody like Revenge can continue to tear through the map like six star run those routes mm. get those kills keep continuing to shut down these army players and not let them get hot in the main stage that's the key factor here and coming into a map like this where army have had a lot of success you have to feel like this is the one that you need to get back now. You lost the first map, haven't played a whole lot of sub base, it feels like. They got caught off guard, they got outslaved, that's fine. That was their for really the entry to the main stage here. So now they're going into a map that they have a lot of comfort on. We saw a lot of clutches on, and we need to see everybody really bringing it, right? I think we framed that up before we even got into the match, that this can't just be a, a solo mission. This can't just be a one-man job. You need that unit that we saw in that video a little bit earlier coming out yeah. here and coming together. That confidence, that, that fun, we want to come out, celebrate with our team, and just 
feel that camaraderie that we always do when we play video games together. I mean, they're here playing Call of Duty on a stage, looking for a trophy. It doesn't get better than that, than that for a lot of these players who have been playing video games their whole life. And right now, you just got to channel your inner Swifty, shake it off. <laughs> shake and, it off. And map number two <laughs> can be a total different change. We talk about it so often in Call of Duty is it's just one of those kind of shifts in a game mode to where you have the really fast-paced respawns to a really slow place search and destroy where you can kind of manipulate the map the way you feel. And we saw that in the round robin yesterday that this army team is used to playing the six stars. They are kind of one of those teams that can manipulate you around the map, get those first bloods, back up, play it yes. slow, play it fast. And I, I think for this army team, yes, you lose that search and destroy, but you're not too worried about, or you lose the hard point, but you're not too worried about going into the search and destroy down a deficit. This is where they can bounce back for sure. Definitely the case here for us. And well, the proactivity gonna need to come through on a map like Six Star. We'll see if they're gonna be able to try to get that job done. But man, oh man, you talk about a map like this where you have to really pick your moments to find calculated risk and take those routes. You said the flank gonna be extremely important, not getting caught up and hung up like in front of a bomb site. That's not what you wanna see on a map like this, right? You have to almost always stay moving or have one of your subs at least contesting something that's gonna give you options. We talk about the middle of the map yeah. on a map like Six Star, where it just gives you that option to B, back to A, you can attack their spawn, go backtrack, like that middle of the map, I'm really curious to see if Army's gonna put a lot of priority into it because we were watching them yesterday, watching that VOD last night. It felt like they were doing a great great job of dictating that pace right there. And for a lot of the people in the community, I mean, like a map like this reflects a lot like back in the day with your raids where yes. you get control Classic. of the middle of the map, you can have that chance to either go to A or go to B. And on a map like Six Star, they also give you that chance to fly through their spawn if you really want to. You have so many opportunities on the attack for this map where you also have those opportunities on defense if you can find those holes in the offense, if you can find those chances to kind of flood through and take that map control. And I think this is going to be quite the battle versus both of these teams. Space Force, they came out, they rocked the army in map number one, <laughs> something that I'm sure not a lot of people were expecting, but it's army's turn now to bounce back. Well, let's see if they can do it. Man, what an upset it would be if you're like a Space Force can grab this map mode combination off the army. That's when the army starts shaking in their boots a little bit going into that map mode in three. But still a long way off from that. Let's get into the attacking round. Kicking it off with Space Force and no trophies early. Have to remember a lot of value in these stuns and nades as they get thrown back and forth. Yeah, no trophies, so the information is gonna kind of give you that dictation on do you want to go to this bomb site? And it seems like A is already on wraps for the attackers in Space Force. So they're gonna go for a quick plant and now look to spread the map. They have a player in P5, they have a player pushing the defender spawn and a first blood from Atama. So Army are gonna have to right take this from only one spot through mid. And it looks like they're gonna wait for player number six, Dexy, to try to work this play, but Dexy goes down. Tama able to get one. Oh, he's gonna get help on the first, but good job on the second. Space Force not messing around. They come out swinging. All gas, no breaks for Space Force. They continue off of map one into map number two, and they win that first round with a simple hit over towards this A site, something that we're really used to seeing on Six Star, especially when there's no trophies to stop you from using your utility. So that's a fantastic round number one. Tama even putting a little bit of extra in the body there, so he's letting him know. He's letting him know. He's like, you guys got to step up right now or we're going to run right over you. And Tama has been great at just finding some of those critical kills. Can he do it here again? Now, Army looking to contest through mid, like we kind of expected. The bomb is also here, so that's going to give them options, but it's a three-man stack on the other side. First kill, no problem. Plankberg trying to get a read on the second. Oh. Free fire is there, but they are going to lose members back and forth, and now it's the Army in a 3v2 advantage. Flameberg is challenging through mid with a Renetti all the way across to TJ. I mean, that is ridiculous. Yes, you know, maybe the Renetti can win that, but... Is a two for one in favor of Army taking down both the Tama and Revenge. That's a sub pressure gone. So now you look over towards the ARs to try to get a retake. Checked. Or Kabase is going to catch a check with that Renetti traded by Flameberg. Brings Hal into a 1v2. Pushing through the middle of the map. That's two isolated gunfights. He's stuck, but Dexy's going to spot him. And that's going to be the round. Clean shots. That's that's the one you needed. I also love the idea that they attack B for one of their first attacking rounds after coming through mid because it really forces now the defense to have to adapt to that. Okay, do we contest mid in the next defensive round or do we stack more bodies at B to make sure they don't have a free option? Play retake A. So I love the idea of coming through and really keeping the defense on their toes for what will be some of those future rounds. But all tied up, Army making sure things do not get away from them early. Fantastic two couple rounds from both teams. Winning your attacking side, six star, definitely prone to that. 
Middle map fights as well. Flamberg looking good, two in a row. And Space Force gonna take it back over towards A. This time they have the trophies to try to stop this utility. It's going to catch a couple of these nades, but it's a stack from Army. All right, here we go. Shots coming through. It's two very cleanly. Flamberg gets another, and well, 20 seconds in, it's a 1v2. Atama now has to try to oh boy. take his team out of the trenches in what would be a round number three clutch. And he's got a lot of time to work with. That's the beauty of a position like this. He doesn't need to force anything just yet. And it's one of those maps, too, that since it's kind of small, you're able to sneak away. You're able to slip into the oh, shadows. Atama, but Atama, he doesn't know the flank is going to come through. And I, Arby, how better to play that than shoulder to shoulder exactly. clearing the spawn? Exactly it. it. Sometimes we see players get a kill slip away on six star, but that was beautifully played. We both hit the flank. We know exactly where he is. He does not have information on where we're going to play this. Let's just try to attack this and get the information. If he's not here, then we know that we can push through. So I love that double up. It will work out for them. And the army now is starting to find their footing as they go up by one. And many teams who aren't experienced are just going to sit there and wait for that player to kind of make his move for a team like Army. I like the fact they're on the hunt. They're not really allowing anything up to the Space Force team. That proactivity is what you look for in a championship squad. And that double up flank was fantastic. Back over towards B this time for an offensive attack. A lot of distraction over towards the A site. Flameberg is the first blood. And Jack is going to look to put this one away. I'm going to go down and... Looks like it's going to be Atama in a 1v4, and he is nowhere to be found on that B-bomb site. That's been very, very critical and worked out quite well here for the army. We'll see if he can try to get one or two, but the time just not going to be in his favor, nor is his position. So without that info, army are just going to kind of sit away. Atama takes down Flamberg. 24 seconds to work a 1v4. Not a lot of time to get all these kills. And Army are just going to sit in these corners and wait it out. Nowhere wow. to go but home. You got to tip that gun, but you do. I mean, <laughs> good shots. Those are good shots. I mean, if there's an opportunity to try to duck behind cover, turn and burn, I mean, check maybe has to overextend, but we can dump. Easy finish off. No 1v4s as of yet, but certainly a solid attempt. That's three rounds in a row for Army. They win their first offense, they win their defense, they win their offense again. So starting to get a little comfortable here on Six Star, not kind of out of the ordinary for this team. We knew they were going to be good at this map mode combo, but for Space Force, what's their way back in? Revenge, 0-3, very silent, not able to get anything going here. Yeah, after a great map number one, really looking for him to get involved. This would be the round to do it, as Army clearly have figured out some of these plays, and Stun's gonna connect, slow this flank down just a tad bit, but Reax is there with that submachine gun, no problem for him. Trying to get a secondary read on a player potentially attacking through the vent, and Atama, well, he's on the other side of it. Yeah, Space Force, they have to react to this one. Oh boy. Reax is the perfect timing! Oh, looking for a second one, it gets a little awkward, Revenge gonna take him down with the Renetti quickly, the rest of Army collapse with Atama, 1v2! Ooh. Okay, a chance to bring things back, 1v1. Two in a row, Atama looking for the clutch. Oh, Atama has no idea where he is. And the player's gonna wrap all the way back. Atama does have the bomb, that's the beauty of this position. And he has an option to go to either bomb site. But what does he decide to do? Sub in hand, has to make his move, has to make a decision. And it looks like it's gonna be Flameberg maybe wrapping back towards B. Flameberg has all the positioning right now. And won't know exactly where to go, but the element of surprise is definitely on the side of Flamberg for this retake, wherever it is. It's going to be a plant onto A for the defender's spawn. Planted for that end use. So chance for the uh, Itama, if you really want to, to hit the full wrap through the defender spawn, take control of you and play it through mid. Oh, Flamberg. Is he going to go for it? Itama looking for the check, and there it is! Itama, 1v3! Okay, Atama, we see you. We see you on main stage. Eight and three so far on the search and destroy. Absolutely putting the team on the back in those clutch moments. That was a chance for the army to go four rounds in a row. But that takes the momentum right out of the sails. And that is exactly the moment that you needed for Space Force. A good hero moment to take you back into the game. Wow, Atama up to eight and three. We talked about the subs and what they can do, and Otama is living up to it as he continues to try to build and see if they can try to rally back. Just down by one round now. Army trying to get it back as they're back on the attack. 
Check, gonna start to clear things out. Challenge near the bottom, one for one trades. 3v3, we go. But at least Hale finds that one kill. It's not gonna give Army the quick plant that they were hoping for, and players stack through mid. It's a triple stack in the middle of the Mac for Space Force, so they're gonna be able to kind of control the information here, which they haven't got anything of. Actually, Army just post up, wait, stall out the time. The stun's gonna give away the presence there, and that's gonna allow Space Force to start to work a flank, see if they can try to find their way around, and it seems like they're gonna double hit this from both sides with a player in mid. It's great info, and it's gonna force them to kind of hold their position and not go for the plant just yet. Revenge, taking a long route, doesn't see the top of his head. Oh my. And oh man. What a gunfight this is. Dexy responsible for watching the flank. Can he snap? No, he can't. Revenge able to find a critical kill. Atama, he is still here to play. He's up to four in a row, and that will be it for yet another round. Space Force put together two back to back. Everything's all over the ground. I, I don't know how Army fumbled that. They get the first blood. They have control, a chance to get the bomb down right away. Uh, but because Hale finds that early kill in the trade, they can't go for that quick plant. They don't know where the rest are. They force stack the A site, so they have no information around the rest of the map. So they have to wait to see where the rest are. Is it going to be a quick link? No, but it's just enough pressure that Space Force give. It's an unknown that they have to worry about. Sure. And they have to watch those lanes. So they take their time. And it does not pay off. Revenge and Atama with some incredible plays. And Atama on four in a row. Can Atama work up to a streak? Two more kills gonna be required. And it looks like they're not gonna give a whole lot of info away on this A push. And React, you can see him kind of tiptoeing closer, like, hey, is anybody here? But Dexy off screen, able to grab himself a nice key pickup. That's gonna give the green light here for Hale to start moving forward. Stun will find the connection. React just tucked away, looking for potential support, but oh, hello there. And we'll be able to find him, no problem. Hello, how do you do? We'll see you next round. Three on three. Bomb going down right away as well. So you're gonna be able to plant this one through you. Flame Burst gonna get shut down. So now numbers, good trade from Check is at least gonna give this a two versus two. A little bit of a chance here for Army to make this retake. Dexy gets the info, but the big kicker is Revenge playing through mid. Oh, Revenge almost gets teammated, but he's able to just slip across in time. So all down to one. Check for a one versus two. Has to try to get towards the site. Has to get a read on both players. Not gonna be easy. AR in hand, looking for shots over the top. Atama goes back and forth. He's still looking for kill number five, and it will be gifted to him. The timing's there. Space Force starting to put it together, Colin. On a silver platter, a platter just right there. Revenge is getting back into his groove from that, uh, that map one sub base, and it's exactly what this team was missing. Atama has ignited a flame inside this Space Force team after that 1v3 clutch. And you see Revenge there with the bomb planted through mid. He has control of you wins the fight versus Dexy, immediately hits the road to P5. You know what Tom is on that statue, it's just the communication from this team is giving them so much control of the map. All right, a round that's required now for Army, and they're gonna go back to this A site. B's been great for them, but it's usually been initially halfway through the round. Over the top, Hale's gonna probably have to back down here. And this is going to be a moment to potentially just take over the middle of the map again, open up for what could be a flank route, but you have someone in the back watching it, and there's the first blood. Flameberg gets it. Yeah, I like this setup from Dexy, just watching for that flank and making sure that nobody's going to be able to take control of that P5. It's going to allow these players on site to keep their head on a swivel for just only two angles, and that's going to kind of stunt this retake from Space Force. React's getting <laughs> caught by a nade. Tried to go for something cheeky, but that's going to even us up in the three-on-three. It's like he was just Spider-Man hanging off the ledge. He got stuck in the web and nowhere to go. Flameberg, good for one. 2v3 we go, low on time. 25 seconds left, Revenge gonna look to go, oh. but he's gonna be cut down, now up to one. Capacet trying to find all three, he gets a good look, but it will not happen. I am gonna take a second, and I am going to dub Flameberg the best Renetti shot in the series so far. I, he just chowed the player in you with the Renetti, well <laughs> tagged up, and wins the fight. That is some ridiculous stuff, as Flameberg is literally going bar for bar against Itama right now on this map. It is quite the duel that we're seeing between both Space Force and Army, tied up for a piece. It's a big setup, a big change of pace for them. They lose three in a row, but they get theirs back. What a tight series this one's gonna be, and what a tight s and it has been. Off by a couple rounds early for the Army. And to say Space Force able to bring it back, started to figure out some of the plays. 
and start to get some good reads in. And challenge comes through, a little aggressive from Dexy. You could feel the need to try to open up, but takes the aggressive chat, will be punished. Flameberg has been able to get himself up to five, so now oh that boy. streak is potentially in play if he can get himself just one more. Yeah, Atomic didn't get his streak earlier, so that'd be huge for the army. Kabase through mid. Hoping to equalize. Do you read the player on your left? Stun check. Doesn't, Doesn't hit. Him. So check is going unnoticed, and that's gonna pay off for a kill. 1v3 now for Atama. Gonna have to try to clutch up again for the team. Well, he we pulled off one. Would be a hell of a lot to ask for a second, but anything is possible. Reacts in the back. He is positioned well on the heady. And he's got a player behind him as well. You have to isolate the player through the middle. I mean, in my mind, you have to deal with check, but check's gonna just. Hit the gas, run right at him, and Atama, well, forced back. Gonna try to take a route, but the problem here is now the clock. 23 seconds. 1v3. An issue here, and look at the army. Just like before in the 2v1, they are playing shoulder to shoulder. Flamebergs gave the information of the fact that Atama is moving over towards A. Slides out, doesn't finish it at first. I thought for a second Atama was going to have the time of day, but with no time in a 1v3, I think Army couldn't have played that any better. Yeah, that was, I think, a beautiful play. You don't want to give Atama room to work the map, right? You don't want to start spreading yourself thin exactly. and leaving one isolated player mid, one isolated player A. Instead, they actually just opt in to push all the way through. So I love that idea. Just try to take away his space. And well, if he's not still here, then we know pretty much where he had yeah. went. Because even you and I were talking about this map. This is hands down the most clutchable map in the game. Absolutely. And if you give him Atama that chance, he's going to run with it as we saw previously. But Flamberg has the cruise missile. Six in a row, 12 and six. Ridiculous numbers, and Army are looking to equalize the series. Could they put that final nail in the coffin? That is now going to be the big question. Flameberg, he's going to call on the streak. What can the cruise missile find over the top? Looking for the first blood. Nowhere to hide. Warhead on the forehead of Kabase. Reacts a second one, and this is Army looking to take this map to. Revenge over the top, can't find anything. All comes down to one man here for Space Force as he watches all of his teammates drop around him. Shots are there, position now given away. Needs to find an isolated gun, find it, it's not gonna happen. A clean final round, the army are gonna tie up this series one to one. And we got ourselves a game. Okay, so army, they slip a little bit on the sub base, but they regain themselves in the map number two and kind of what we were expecting for the, both of these teams. This is a very scrappy, you know, Space Force team that is still figuring things out, still adapting and changing. They lost yesterday in the round robin to this army team, but they come out on fire in the sub base and, and they came out with fire as well in this search and destroy as well with three rounds back to back of Atama's 1v3. But as soon as you see the army starting to get a feel mm. for the map, you see that teamwork that they have. Every single time they find themselves in a situation with numbers, they play together, they run through these lanes, and they make sure they trade effectively. And that really kind of gives them an edge. It also helps when Flameberg is, what, 13 and 6. Yeah, that man was dropping nukes on six star, but. The Army, very, very familiar with winning that map mode combination, and they're able to do it once again. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to take a small break. Get ready for map number three. Don't go too far.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back. We are getting ready to jump in towards map number three very shortly. This series has been very highly contested. Oh, yeah. It's all tied up one apiece. Now we'll see who's going to take the swing map. First time we get to go to the distance between these two, Space Force have upped the game so far, and they have brought it to the RB six-star hardpoint. The Army, though, they bounce back in a close 6-4 victory. That's going to take us to a high-rise control. First time we get to see a control today. Yes. And this is a little bit of a change-up now for both of these teams because you think about a control map and, you know, it's not just any control map. It's a high-rise control map. Mm. This is where kind of you're looking for players to have that height. You can spawn trap the, the offensive team very easily if you're on defense. And once you do, if you're the defensive team or the offensive team trying to break out, you have to look at yourself to win those crucial fights that are not easy to win to battle your way out. It's very tough to win offenses on this map. There's a lot against you when you are in that role. But for both of these teams, they've proved that they can do the impossible so far. And heading into this map three, it's anybody's game. It is anyone's game. And I'm really expecting maybe some of the Army boys to step up a little bit more coming in towards this high rise. Now that they got oh. that, you know, warm up kind of out of the way, they had a little bit of a rough start on the sub base, but their ARs were shooting a little bit better when we got towards that six star. So now that they've gotten one, they've tied it up. I'm going to see if they can try to bring some of that. You need your ARs really popping off because if we get the exact same stat lines that we got at the map number one out of the ARs there for Space Force, it feels like they could have a field day on a map like Iris. Yeah, hail as well as Kabase. They're really commanding that map when it comes down to the high ground control that you look for on these maps. And when you do have that control of your ARs, Revenge is just able to do revenge things with that Rival 9. We got sure. on the sub base just constantly being an annoyance for the respawning players of Army. You don't have that luxury of having infinite respawns here in control. So it's something that the Army are going to have to keep their eyes on. It's that if they find themselves struggling against these AR mm. players, they have to look to punish these SMGs and try to run through those routes. Because if you allow these SMGs to kind of dwindle your lives and just continue to pick you off, it's going to be a snowball that you're, it's not going to be easy to battle back from and i think when you're kind of going into this one if you're army yes you're feeling good still have something to prove when it comes to that respawn prowess and i, I think in this control it's very important for them to kind of step up yeah step up work together a little bit more too yeah. i think that'll be a critical part to be able to shut these guys down because trades just weren't necessarily a factor the first time around in that first respawn so a chance to find redemption a chance to take the serious lead and if so you just need one more to punch your ticket to grand so you're just a few maps away from being able to secure and lock in top two and for the army's case potentially go back to back yeah i mean that would be huge you come out to another force con the third annual force con and this is your chance to go back to back this army team they look polished they look strong and they look like a team that can get it done i mean i think out of the uh, branches that we have brought here they look like one of the stronger ones especially through the round robin and into the scrims that i was hearing from a lot of these players they came out and they've really made it tough but it's been a long time across sure. those scrims and these teams have had a lot of time to play against each other here in san antonio and when that happens it, it has to be kind of one of those things you look at eventually they're gonna figure it out and this is where space force now with you know a very strong coach behind them trying mm. to get them through this hurdle you have a lot of thought against this this army team and it seems like they have cracked the code well can they put together two in a row high rise control first control on the day there will be two zones out onto the map one team defending them one team trying to capture them each holding three ticks if you lock in the ticks and get enough of them heading into a round five that will secure you the defensive round so colin big one ahead of us here a swing map space force army we're getting into map number three on high rise yeah don't let it fool you if you see a good old hank hill trying to sell you propane and propane accessories stay away because those <laughs> things are deadly as it's going to be the side of army starting off on the attacking or the defending side it's going to be flameberg taking down hail but the attackers already onto this b zone flameberg up top trying to get a good overlook of the map capacity on the other side Seeing if he might be able to make something happen all by himself and looks like he's able to use the other side of the map to get into the spawn here. Good shots over the top. Trying to lock down that kill. 
won't be able to finish it off fully, but he does stop the clock. He's now on that zone, seeing if he can try to get something done with at least one tick, but instead backtracks as he loses his teammates and is able to clean up one. And this is something where with limited resources, you really have to keep an eye on if you're the attacker stepping onto the zone, making sure that clock doesn't give you less time for the attack. And they're gonna be onto the A, they're gonna get that first tick of progression, try to fight this one with the propane with the help of the Semtex, takes down Kabase, two members stacking, second tick not collected just yet. Army hold on to A. Just one tick ends up getting locked in at A, but it feels like almost a bit of desperation coming there. Hey, we don't have a lot of luck coming to B. Let's just try to force our way into A. The kills do not follow. Check in the back now. Starting to find himself some great cutoff kills. Stopping anyone from Space Force being able to have a free avenue and making their way into the oh. point. They turn back to B. They're also turned away, and now we're down to 25 seconds. I'm not sure if there was a little bit of help there for Flameberg, but he absolutely turns on Hale. And that is going to give some more control back over oh. towards the army. 20 seconds left. Nice shots from Kabase. Five and two, opening up the map to hop onto this B zone player. Ooh. Dexy burn from Hale, and this is the oh. chance. Three, four, go down, and it's off the respawn for Army. They're getting it done. Dexy and Check continuing to dwindle this time with the height. Flameberg's able to take down Revenge, and it looks like the round is all and over. Wow, a good look there. A 2v4 push, and unfortunately, Hale doesn't get there. Almost Whoa. slides up to the point, but still would have had a gunfight to win either way. That was locked down. That was clinical coming through for the Army. They only give over two ticks. I, I mean, that's fantastic considering the opening that you had from this Space Force team. They get a two stack onto A. They get that first tick so quickly and almost the second one as well. The propanes were still active, so the Semtex kind of helps them out there, but it's the follow-up off the respawn for them to get right. into those boxes right away and take those players out of A before they can kind of get those progressions. And a map where that defense is going to be so important in round five. Only one tick over towards Space Force in round number one. Army, they take that all day. I like that. Check actually shoots out the windows just to try to make sure some of the information isn't fully revealed. And all flavor. Long range shots. He's been on one at the moment. Six and three. Huge part of winning that defensive round as cleanly as they did. Trying to make their way through B Street, though. They are being heavily contested. No clean kills as of just yet. The setup's still looking decent as Cabasse is able to get some of that high ground control. Yeah. This is what's kind of going to carry Space Force into a defending win of their own. If Kavase can dominate from top propane, make sure nobody pressures you up from uh, the helicopter. It's going to allow a lot of force here from the Space Force team to kind of press out Army. But he's denied that, and now working over towards this A side, Dexy trying to work some magic over towards Blue. Drops on down with the well MCW, done. and that is going to be Army on both A and B. Don't want to get too flustered here. Don't want to lose too many members. And Atama does a great job of staying alive. Puts together a pretty critical double to make sure there's no one able to stack the zone for Army. And now they're spawning all the way into the back. So this is almost back to step one. No ticks have been secured as of just yet either. This has been very defensively favored thus far. Kabase runs out with the Renetti check who thought he had some timing there. It seems like the communication is just flowing for Space Force as they're not allowing anybody to slip the cracks right now. The trades are good. The kills are good. Kabase on four in a row. 20 seconds left and Army hasn't gotten a lick of progression here. Yeah, they saw the zones at the start since then. It's really just been looking at the walls of their base. It's been tough. 10 seconds, one final attempt to try to make a desperation push in. Well, you don't want to feed streaks, but now you take a look at Gabbose. He's just one off of burning the cruise missile. Going for the contest. Oh, oh hold on a second. Kabase gets denied the streak, and that is four down. Army, they're not out of this just yet. They can stack both sides right now. They're working A and B. This is scary. The double stack here on B will lock in that first tick. And like you said, A was being contested for a moment, but they're able to get that player off. What a snap from Reacts up top. One final attempt to see if they want to make this happen from the side. Reacts and Atama have a chance to try to contest, but will they get here in time? Answer is no. Extra minute up on the clock. Only one minute it though. Army have done enough to prolong this. Check inside. Almost gets a second with the rifle. But Space Force need, needs some control back. They're going to battle out of their spawn. Find the kills to start getting some pr pressure and some height. And Hale now picking off these Army players out of spawn. 15 lives versus 8 with there not being a lot of time here. It is going to be tough for Army to work these resources. Check is going to be caught here and you're kind of down to your last chance hitting this as a full team. The recovery has looked pretty solid at the very least. And it will be a one-tick advantage so far for the army. Hale just trying to finesse, wants to play his life, needs a little bit of regen before he can take that reach out. And he will drop. Six lives remaining, 20 seconds on the clock. Everything playing against the army to try to secure this offensive round, but they still have one final attempt. They've already done a lot, but can they do more? 
Revenge gonna keep control of blue. Slides out looking for the player top. Helicopter. Well Easy shots for Revenge. One player on a Flameberg ahead of the boxes. It is gonna do some damage. Five seconds left. You gotta go through the army. No chances to lose your lives. No more respawns. But they're on A and they're working on this progress. This is an 8v3. This would be an exceptional clutch if they're somehow able to pull this one out of the hat. Can they get the job done? Not looking likely. One extra tick, though, could be big. The oh. tick is secured. So that was really best case scenario. They're yeah. able to get an extra tick. Four ticks now up to two gives them a slight advantage. I mean, Austin, there was two and a half seconds left in that B zone. They had zero ticks of progression. And then all of a sudden, Army, they flip a switch, and now they have four segments, a lead of three when it comes down to looking for that round five defense, and they show that they have the chances to clutch up in these high-pressure scenarios where Space Force, they thought they were going to cruise into a 1-1 yes. with that lead in ticks. Suddenly, you see that Army can fight back. I agree. It did feel like a bit of cruise control just at the end of that round. Everyone turning to try to attack the zone. And it cost them. Look at this push, though. Trophies out on A. Want to try to get something early. And if you can find some of these opening kills, I mean, you could really lock in some ticks. But Kabase not able to find that first one. Up top is going to be Flameberg as he shoots across the map, but will be shrugged off the angle. Now, looking for what is going to be a stack oh here. This is two players that have been on the zone the entire time. Second tick is locked. Finally a contest. Hale's able to fly out and grab himself a big kill. One more 1v1 on the port. Hale takes him, too. They are still alive on A. Looking for all four. Not able to get Flameberg. Propane's gonna take down Dexy, so a little bit of team damage there, but uh, you keep that A zone, you only give up those two ticks of progression if your army, you still have that advantage technically if you don't allow anything more from the Space Force. A minute four left, lives are even. An army trying to work back into a defensive hold. Space Force trying to look for some control here. Yamatama, top heli, nice shot there from Flameberg. Takes up the first, finishes the second. Revenge now just has to run away. Here comes the players off spawn. They have the map control. Now they're on to B. Will they be able to lock in some more ticks? Or maybe even capture the zone in full. Great position. Hill's been great so far on the control. Two overextends just a tad bit. That will be very costly. Three members now going to drop down. Revenge, the last one up on the map. Furthest push forward. Looking for a double. Heck of a snap down low. Can he get a read on the third? He will not. But he does create a bit of a space for his teammates to start to push out onto the map. So always going that one step further. Dexy makes the play to stop the progress at B. Player Hale on top of Propane. Doesn't spot the bottom blue flank. And the overextensions right now from the army is just what's keeping them in this defensive hold. Jack reacts, another two down. Hale pushed all the way forward, but Hale has no teammates. Gonna finally give away his presence, and look at the hunt from Army. They take him down immediately back to the respawns. 20 seconds left. One final attempt. Tama hasn't been living up to the expectations that we saw through map one and map two. Could he get something done in the final seconds of round number three? He is going to be taken low and doesn't look like they're going to have any kind of an angle to get onto one of these zones. B could be their option. One last second. Revenge going to double up with them. Could they find the kills? They are much needed. One player going to drop inside of the elevator. Revenge going to take the high ground now. Three players going to drop for the army. Now all down to one to try to play defense. And this is such an important part. You get this one tick. If you're Space Force, you don't guarantee army that defense Defense round five and you're oh still boy. fighting for that chance now you're on a and you're on B you have the life disadvantage but two seconds could be prolonged to another minute oh I've seen this before Colin but this is even better now looking at ten lives playing up against a space force just trying to stay alive on B everyone taking their time one final second to contest Kabate needs to find it and he does want to double up an extra minute on the clock okay space force they just turn up now lives are even. You only need one tick over towards A. Kaba stays on three in a row. Looking for the respawners. Almost beams off reacts, but he's done enough to get them towards the zone. Hale, you win this fight versus Dexy. You're on A. You can win this round, but Dexy doesn't get seen, and that may be a game-winning kill. No lives remaining on either side. Space Force going to lose one more. Revenge, nowhere to go with the 2v4. Make it a 2v3. Time to play with. But remember, if you're attacking, you have to stop the clock. So it will be moves on Space Force to try to make this first jump. Cavase has been electric. 24 and 16. Can they clutch up? It's the big question. Hale's going to go down. Cavase goes down. An army, they stay alive in the lead. They win their defenses. But it comes down to Space Force making that resurgence into the attacking side where Army was almost guaranteed a round five defense without even needing 
to really get any takes in their offensive side. Now they have some work to do. They only got two tick or four ticks of progression back in the first round. It is a four tick advantage right now for the side of Space Force. Maybe even around a two tick advantage for, for them. And for Space Force here, if they could shut down this defense without Army getting that, they set themselves up and taking the defense in round five. Man, oh man, this one has been so tight, so close. The final seconds, both teams still giving it their all. Cabosay through the outside. He has just been so good at locking down these lanes, and that's been a huge problem for the army. Will they be able to make something happen over towards this A point? That's where the majority of their members are stacked. Check is down low. He's got a chance to make some moves, but will be wisely dealt with from Revenge, who's now got a chance to also influence the zone on B. Dexy just laying down prone okay, in the contest spot. Revenge up and over the Renetti. Oh, ho, 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 he almost got turned on. It's gonna be three down for Army Space Force. They relinquish the pressure onto both zones, and Atama even getting Flameberg away from the propane. So back to the respawns we go, trying to fight out of what could be a spawn trap. Yeah, this is a scary situation. Player number five is going down low in pit, has a huge job to try to clear out something to give them an avenue to actually hit down one of these lanes and attack the zone. Reacts now, comes all the way around the back, has a chance to flank, has a chance to find kills, but he's taken a lot of time and he's not gonna get a clear shot on Hale. Finally, able to take his shots. Revenge up to five in a row. Reacts is gonna stop the clock with 22 seconds left. 22 seconds, we know Army has that clutch potential. Flameberg, big shots there on the Kabase. You see a Space Force though, taking the necessary adjustments in towards the heli steps. The Thomas slides in with the Renetti, clears out the progress now, starting to decap. Last chance here for Army, it seems. Reacts, though, could win the fight versus Kavase. Traded out, Hail and Revenge, dealing the damage. You have cruise missiles, you have control, you have a chance to put things away. Oh, nobody's close to a zone. The only player that could do it would be Dexy, and Dexy's got to fly. Does he have time for the touch? Doesn't matter. Too many members there to lock it down, and that is a flawless defensive round for Space Force. And now Space Force, they get the round five defense off of what was a near perfect clutch back in round number three, Austin. Their offenses, they've just done enough. Now they can kick their feet up, relax, and try to put the army away here in the control, take back their lead after their win back on sub base. Sub six start doesn't go their way, but this battle that we've seen on high rise, it all comes down to this round army. Can they figure things out on the offensive side? It just doesn't seem like they're really able to kind of keep themselves away from those trade battles. They need to start finding that, uh, that uh, I'd say, uh, forward stance onto the high ground over towards Helipad, over towards Propane, start winning those battles up top. And if they can get onto those zones with that control, then maybe Army can get, get an offensive round. The key is this breakoff for me. The Army have not really had any great breakoffs so far throughout this high rise, and they've only really made last second attempts to try to secure the round. That has to change, because you need to win this offensive round. And well, so far, not looking great. Flameberg gonna take a long range battle, and Gabasay just gonna wisely back down, saying, listen, I have the positioning, my teammates are out on the map, and you're back to step one. Oh, and Revenge, eight in a row, shoulders. The peek over towards Blue, finds his ninth one. Gonna go down in the trade, reacts, uh -oh. gets the player off of Heli. And now the stack on towards A, two players gonna be here. You have player number four, Kabasay, through mid, but Flameberg's gonna catch him. Yeah, this is a scary position to be in if you're Space Force. You're gonna have to try to play retake, but the streak is used, and Revenge doubles up with the cruise missile. What a huge moment that is, showing just a clutch moment with that streak that he earned earlier on in the rounds. That's gonna save them and give them a second attempt to get back on the map, and now they have the control they need. And Revenge is now over towards B. They stop the progress to A. They have the control on B. There's really nowhere to go here. If your army, you're into one of those situations where you have to win those troublesome fights. Take those headshot angles and see if you can shut down these Space Force players in a situation where they just seem like they are so confident to put this one away. 30 seconds left. Life oh advantage boy. to Space Force. Boy, and it's up. just a firing squad lined up. This is disgusting. Revenge, man. He is just teeing off on the army members at the moment. But it's not over till it's over. Army have made a couple of last second attempts. They have 18 seconds on the clock. Desperation at its highest so far in this high rise. It's been back and forth. Reacts down low. A chance to make a big play. Does he have the ammo needed to try to double up here? And it looks like Hale's gonna take his time, cut off the respawners. There's still only 10 seconds left. Uh, Space Force team finding some win here with seven seconds. Three goes down. It's almost gonna find check. And you know, there might be a team kill when it comes down to the propane, but enough is done. Nobody can touch the point. 
point, and Space Force take back their lead. What an electric control. We got to see it for the first time, and let me tell you, it did not disappoint. 3-2 is the tally. Defense the whole way through, but there were a lot of great offensive looks. It's just in those final seconds, those final clutch moments, it felt like both teams were able to really go big on their defenses, but it really comes back to that round four, doesn't oh, it? it? The does. ticks not coming through, securing the defense in round number five, and that's what really kind of solidifies it in my mind. It's crazy that twice we got to see clutch plays from both sides. Space Force just take it a, a, an edge farther. Two seconds they get onto that B zone, and then they get three down. They make it four down. They stack both A and B suddenly off the respawn army. They don't know what to do, how to handle that situation, and they're fighting into a setup where, yes, you can spawn trap the attackers easily with that high crowd control over towards the helipad, but if you allow those attackers to get four down, set up on the generators over towards B, those fights towards mid window, towards the spawn of the defense, it becomes so much easier. And Space Force, they exploited that. They got it done, and they just gave themselves enough of an edge there. I mean, that is an incredible moment for them to just seize control of that game. You get to see really how good these ARs can be. Wow. We take a look at the map set here. And it is a Vista hardpoint coming up next. And Colin, if last night you would have told me that all the respawns have gone the way Space Force in the first final, I would not have believed you. But they are coming out here and they're winning respawn after respawn, some of them extremely tight. But do they have a chance to put it away on a Vista hardpoint? That's the big question here. But with the way that they've been slaying out, it's looking like it is a huge possibility. Can't believe you wouldn't believe me if I told you that. I, I wouldn't mean, have. It, it, how yeah. the army played yesterday they didn't drop a map? Space Force, they got that dog in them right now, though. Okay. I, like their respawns just look like they've improved it overnight the fact that they've made those changes in such a short time is not a lot of teams can do that make that happen and it's really you give that over towards mochilla their coach for kind of bringing that extra expertise to these setups that they have that comfort in the play style for a control for a respawn the rotations have been on point the ars have looked so right. comfortable in these spots and I, I just don't think the army were ready for that area of expertise to kind of elevate th those levels of these players on an individual uh, standpoint. And heading into this Vista, it's still going to be a big, a big statement because I talked in the early portions of this series of how Vista, it's a little bit of a misconception and where a lot of people look towards the players to kind of dominate this. Everybody thinks it's going to be a rival map. It's very close for sure. There's a lot of areas where the rivals can run routes. But this map is very long when it comes down to the lanes. That's right. And that's where the MCWs can really kind of take control of those sight lines and allow those rival players to kind of sit in that hill, soak up the time while the ARs dominate the kill feeds. So if that's going to be the case for Space Force, and if Army cannot find a way to shut down these ARs, this may be a Game 4 win for Space Force. They might send the Army down to the lower bracket. <laughs> it could very well happen. Map number four underway. Vista Hardpoint, Space Force, just one map away from getting to that grand final as the opening engagements take place. Check gets first blood, but the army, they're coming out very fierce. They're able to get three down right away. Yeah, they look mad. They look like they are <laughs> ready to party here on Vista. Revenge is a flank, looking to get back into this hill and deny some time towards army. That is a good flank to come out from Space Force and off spawn, even they're battling back through mid. So back into control here for Space Force. They shake off that early gunfight. They get a little bit of time on P1, but now it's the rotations that you got to look through. The middle of the map is still owned by the army. So moving to this P2 setup is not going to be easy for Space Force. Still a solid 18 seconds up for grabs. One on one. Potentially take place for it. But Tama gonna actually push all the way through here. So this is gonna create spawns all the way at the back of the map, but it is a slight lead for Space Force. They come out with about 15 seconds ahead. Moving over towards P2. You got a lot of yellow members that were set up initially, but now doesn't look like it's going to be here. And now Atama also gonna end up dropping as Reacts doubles up. Yeah, that's good communication over towards Reacts. Finds the kill onto the hill member, then has the player on the stairs gets tagged up. Reacts just turns around, helps out the rest of the team to get to position. So off spawn, Space Force down a couple numbers. Kepase slides in with the Renetti, and Reacts is gonna win yet another gunfight. That's five in a row for Flamebird, five in a row for Reacts, both looking for kill streaks. 
Oh, Thomas just trying to do whatever he could. He had members just completely surrounding him. His teammates have not really been able to get set up. We talked about the ARs, and Army are starting to dominate in that category. Flamberg got the 6 in one Reacts also has been great. Finally, a moment here for Space Force to try to take a small breath, but it's already the rotation that's currently going to be contested. Two members in the back for Space Force. Jack's going to clear out Atama. That is a big route read by Army to stop Space Force from potentially flipping this map and sneaking through. But there's still a member looking to fight this one. Player number six still battling for some control. Revenge is alive in the bottom of P3. Reacts is going to sniff out that position. And now for the setup. This is where Army can start to look to grow their lead. However, Hale and Atama has completely pushed through. And now Space Force in the hill looking to punish the players off spawn. Oh, kills back and forth. A lot of chaos ensuing in and around P3. And you're trying to get a read on where the spawns are fully, but some of the players starting to cut through mid. Big engagement, won't be one from Revenge. Reacts trying to make his way to the point. Can we get another big double up? Turns and burns! Oh my goodness, Flamebird gets destroyed. May have ran out of ammo, but it's not enough to fully lock it down. One more 1v1, Revenge will not win it. And it looked like maybe a little bit of extra from Dexy into the body. Just some love from Dexy. He's gonna end up going down. Hail, bad timing there. Three go down for Space Force. Only members gonna be Atama hitting into the back of P4, sitting inside the building, hoping to ward off any pressure. It is gonna be a split spot from both sides, a foot race to this hill. Space Force opting in to set up for new. Army, they get the scrap time. We're at an even game. Huge moment here as it is a chance to run away with a bit of a lead. Atama making that thing look like it was an AR. Clean shots come back and forth for him. He's locking down the back with the sub, and he's able to play his life quite nicely. The rest of the members here going to spot up in the middle of the map for Army, and they're not really going to be in a position to set up a team hit just yet, but a couple individual gunfights could very well change that quickly. Now Flamberg looking for his opening, looking for his moment, but he's got a lot of members on his left and his right. And these SMGs are going rogue, and when you have Kabase shooting like that, they can... Hale swings around, looking for the player, contesting, takes out Reacts, Dexy continues this trade fest back and forth in the hill, wow. Zach goes down, and that's gonna be Atama with a double kill to get the rest of the scrap. Oh, it just a Semtex at his body too, letting him know, you can see it, certainly building throughout this series, Revenge doing an excellent job, and the subs have actually been the difference maker, they've been in a position where they can get forward because the ARs are doing such an excellent job in and around those P2s, those P3s, yeah. that's been the difference maker, 60 points separating the two of them, but early it will be Army on this final hill. Subs are taking what's given, and how will Army fight back to this one, they have the setup over towards P5, Ooh. Flameberg with a big win through mid, has a cruise missile as well, just in case for the future. But inside this one, you have to help. Kabase is going to take down the player in the back. Check with a quick trade. Revenge going to slide on through, keeping Army out of this time. And Tama not able to win the fight up top. Revenge, can you get the fight back? It doesn't seem like it just yet. Nobody in the hill. A 30, 40 point lead for Space Force right now. That Army, they want to cut this down here. Dexy going to wait patiently, just laying down. Doesn't have a clear angle and will be dealt with. Hill gone neutral here for now. Scrap time picked up for one of the members on the army. 75, up against 117. Slight lead for Space Force as we come out through the first set of rotations, and the big factor hasn't necessarily been the slaying, but Kavase has been off to a very fiery start. He's oh, yeah. up to 19. And Kavase really leading the charge here for Space Force. It was revenge back on sub base to make that change for the team on their side. Reax is having a good game. We've seen some good stuff out of Flameberg, but, you know, Czech and Dexy still waiting for them oh to heat up. But Flameberg keeping the team in it, giving them the chance, the time to find their way back. These boys are shooting, let me tell you. That's when you gotta win. Over the top, the AR will be able to get the job done. And a critical moment for the Army to stay in this and contest some of this P1 time. 20 seconds up for grabs. Both teams gonna start to look towards the rotation to that bottom part of the map where P2 will spawn very shortly. Revenge gonna give this one more go, though. Doesn't wanna allow some of these members to exit, and the nade and the kill down low is good. That is four down, as Space Force can set up exactly how they see fit. And Army, they're spawning all the way into the back of P3. They're gonna have a lot of track to cover before they even look at this P2 zone. And in that same instance, they're gonna have a lot of corners to clear as well. They have to worry about a player being inside of Burger. They have to worry about the head headies back through mid. And then a streak gonna be actually used for Flameberg to give them a little bit of a way out of their spawn. And that's enough to allow nobody on the hill for Space Force. Army, they get in. And map control will be lost, so a chance to flood through the middle stairs. 
If you're Space Force, you have to win some of these critical gunfights. Kappa State just trying to finesse, going back and forth. He's eating stuns, nades, everyone tying around him, but he's still able to deal with one. Teammate does come through, but Atama makes up for it and says, no worries, I got your trade, brother. That's now a great break, and Space Force are up by 50. He said, don't worry about it right now. It's just the contest is needed to keep Army on edge. Player and Burger does not get an eye on to Kappa State, and... You know, the help comes in a rise. Space Force gonna lose the strap time to Army, but with that winner's advantage, they don't really need this time. They can look over towards this P3 rotation again and look to get set up. In the back is Chex. Dexy's gonna be able to watch that cross through P1, and you're gonna need these two to go electric here on the rotation. Yeah, you gotta feel like this is gonna be easy to read if you're Army, but Chex able to get that. Oh, stays alive. Fight. Just barely able to survive. Has to get a read on the second. Good shots. Not enough to finish off the elimination. One 26 to 158 now. It's been very close, but Space Force have been able to lead the majority of it. However, this one's starting to take a bit of a turn, Colin. Army are looking better. They're slaying out, and they're starting to hold some of these hills. Yeah, you see Dexy starting to win some of those long-range battles that we look to in sub-base to see if he can step up. Nobody in the top just yet. The hill goes white. Jack's gonna get caught on the cross, and that's two down for the army. So that's gonna be time for Space Force to jump in and let Kaba say gonna clear out the bottom of P3. Dexy's gonna jump away from this one. Needs to win the fights in the back, but as Space Force win them, cement these spawns for themselves, they can look to push their lead into a winnable territory. All time is great time if you're Space Force and you're up by this amount. One last contest gonna come through. Actually, Hale's gonna deal with two more members who also want to play for the flip in the back. So he is overwhelmed. Not all of the Space Force members have actually been able to rotate here. And oh. there's only one member in the back who actually ends up dropping. So this is a critical moment for Army. You can lock this hill down, especially if you fend off this first push. Yeah, this is a hill where you can get 40, 50, maybe even 60 seconds if you're winning your fights with Flameberg sitting at caught. Revenge beaming with the rifle. Reacts, trades it. Still in the hill. The crossfire is good. Dexy still stays alive, and Space Force playing from the high ground, just hop into contest. Trying to buy time for his teammates to move on through. Flameberg, double up, big moment. 1v1 on the point here, and the challenge comes to him. Reacts able to get one back. Just 20 seconds now up for grabs. Army would love to soak it up, and it looks oh, like yeah. they will be allowed to do so. This one's extremely tight, Colin, as we rotate to P5. I was going to say, Army, they're right back into this with that P4 hill. Over to P5, yes, they're going to lose the rotation, but Flameberg is in an area where he could do some serious damage. Unchecked, 25 and 15. This is exactly the player that you want here to shake it up. Trigger discipline is good. Contest is now in. Flamebird flies. He wins the 1v1. Teammate. That's the big patient play that you wanted to see. The trade is going to follow. And in the back, the spawns look like they should be here for the army. But will they be able to continue to lock it down? And Flamebird hits that well. A teammate comes. Space Force are backed out of the hill. And now army starting to set up on these power positions. It's going to be down to the MCWs to fry to see if they can find their way back in. And check with a big win there against Hale. Wow, big kill over the top. Reacts might be able to earn himself another cruise missile. There it is. Cruise missile secured. Late game insurance is in, as well as the lead change. Panic also starting to ensue here for Space Force that might have had this entire series locked up. But now they have to dig deep as they move to P1. Scrap time looking good for Army. Yeah, Army looking for that map five high rise. Scrap time for Space Force. Hale's going to find their way in. Nobody in the bar for P1. Middle map control on the hunt right now for Army. As they're going to want to set these ARs up for that height or for that those middle map power positions. Jack's going to be watching the jump over there. Looks away at just the wrong time. Revenge the stun. on the stun. And Tama backs him up in Space Force break. Oh, this is just pure chaos. It's mayhem in and around P1. Both teams trying to get in, trying to hold it down, but everyone's just sprinting to the point. Big win in the middle of the map. Hale trying to give them just a bit of breathing room and some security on which lane is actually going to be safe. And that will now give them the breathing room they need. 30 seconds left on P1. Army still up. The Space Force, they can collect a lot of time. Neither team can win on this hill, so this rotation over towards P2 is so important for both these players. You have Reacts there hunting for this player, Hale, who has slipped the net. Both teams doing a little ring around the rosy, but Reacts is going to catch Hale on rotation. We're in near tie game as it's 10 points separating these two. Or no, not even. The break back from Army keeps us even. And over towards P2, you're going to have to sit up for Army looking to send us to high rise. Here comes the streak. We've been waiting for it. Reacts earned it. Will it pay off? 
Here we go, looking to try to create some more space. Everybody's gonna have to back away. The kills have come through on the map. The army now 20 seconds away from the dump. Everybody's gotta fly right now for Space Force if they wanna get their way back in. They have Huge. to battle against, but it's three down. Only 13 seconds needed. Hale has to make the hero play. Needs to be the hero. Can he do it? Has to fly, has to contest. Hale with one through mid. Two seconds left for the win. Hale will get stunned up. Just trying to contest. Challenges out. He wins one. Is it enough? Almost gets a second. One final attempt. Gabase is shut down. The army, they stay alive. We're going to a game five, Austin, here in the winner's final. Our first best of five for the day and Space Force Army, neither one of them want to give it up. What a way to battle it back here in the hard points. I mean, Army, they were down for pretty much three quarters of that map, but that P4 hill that they locked down when Drexy starts to get comfortable in that MCW role, you hold down that time, everybody's winning their fights for Army, and the rotation to P5, Flameberg hiding in a corner, the teammate from Space Force, the stars align, and they get the map five. Woo! <laughs> this is the series. It is incredible. It's living up to everything we expected. The first seed up against the second seed going the distance. But we got to give these players a break. We got to get them prepared and ready for our final map to see who's going to that grand final. Don't go too far. We'll be right back on the back side of the break.
Everyone, welcome back. We got a game five on our hands for the winner's final. This one has been electric. It's been a banger. Call whatever you want. I'm having fun. It's a great time, Colin. Call it game five. I mean, this is just incredible for both of these teams. Space Force, uh, they look unreal the way that they are playing, but the army is just right there alongside of them. Both of these teams are neck and neck when it comes down to their play styles, the way that they're you know winning these games. They're not blowouts at all. They are so close in contention. And the fact that Army trailing for about three quarters of that Vista yes. hardpoint, bring it back the way that they did. Everything goes right in that last little pit and those last couple of hard points. And you have some major players starting to heat up, starting to come alive on the main stage there for Army. You started to see the players too as we went to the cameras after that game number four. And it didn't really look like they were popping off, like really mm. confident like getting it up and getting loud they look a little worried they look a little bit on edge trying to find their comfort in this series and sure. then we're heading back to the search and destroy where they won back on six stars so for army it's kind of getting back into the comfort zone for themselves trying to find their rhythm that they're I wouldn't say losing, but they're not able to secure us easily. That's right. We take a look at that map set. It has been back and forth, back and forth, but can only go one more direction here in the final map. We do, in fact, go the distance. We will be seeing this high rise as you certainly framed up here, Colin. And you talk about this map, you talk about the players like Flameberg that have been popping off, that have been going big, making those clutch plays. Oh, yeah. This is one of those maps where a lot of those AR battles are going to take place, but we also did see when we watched the high-rise control, some of the players with the subs making some great routes down low, making a lot of big plays happen in the pit. We'll see if that comes into play in the search now, too. It's one of those maps where you're comparing six-star to high-rise. Six-star, you're able to kind of sneak away, make those routes yours, especially when you're a rival player on high-rise. You really have to bank on the timing in your favor for this one. It's, it's very easy to kind of walk into this map and lose a timing, lose a first blood. But on the side of Space Force, when you look at a player like Atama, who is constantly left in 1vx situations back on six-star, you can't let that happen because Atama, those 1v3, won't come easy to you. Well, we did lose our feed, so we're casting off the big screen where you guys are watching as well. To, to the tally, early engagements, revenge, able to grab that first one, no problem. Flake, we're gonna drop. Critical player to lose if you're army here for round number one. Revenge gonna wisely back down. Yeah, that's the B site where the bomb has gone. Revenge looking for the player, he's gonna find it. That's bomb down 2v2, and Space Force now a chance to steal this one away. It's gonna have to be up to the army to try to get this bomb plant, but you both are separated, and Revenge goes back in. Wow, Revenge <laughs> takes a high route, able to put himself up to three in a row, wants the ace, and he might be able to get it. Reacts, wants to take it away. He's already been good for one kill on the round, submachine gun in hand, 40 seconds left, but also has to try to grab this bomb. Reacts, t does the damage, looking to hunt down this kill, but shoulder to shoulder, Space Force taking a page out of the book of ARMY back from Six Star. And they're gonna be able to play things together. Revenge with the ace in round one. Great opening round, my goodness. Setting the tone early, coming out here absolutely frying. And that's a heck of a way to come into a high rise with a sub of all weapons and run through every single member. So can they keep this up? And I mean, already talking about an early cruise missile here on a map like High Rise, that's a big factor. Yeah, on your way to the, that cruise missile, you get that. There's not a lot of places to hide on this map unless you're in blue underground or in the buildings off spawn. Hail, nice damage down through that B lane. Revenge continuing on this warpath. First blood, that's five in a row. Gonna hop in towards B, looking for the next one. Sneaks in towards the elevator, just playing their life. Look at this guy go. He's got no fear, despite being one off the street. He is ready to push and go oh. wherever he needs to, but finally they're there to make sure he does not slip through enemy lines, does not end up going big. And now we'll see what he's gonna be able to do. 3 versus 2 for Army Space Force with the advantage now. They turn things around with two quick kills. Kapase Hale, two separate 1v1s, gonna catch some timing versus Army. That's gonna be Flameberg, the big hitter from game number two, into a chance to clutch up quite like their counterpart Itama did against them. So they are in hand, map is flipped, Space Force looking for the bomb. 
He's caught with some timing. Looking for the 1v2. High ground is here. Hale should be able to find it and just barely gets the job done, but it's still enough for the round win. So that's going to be two quick rounds there from Space Force Revenge with the ace in round one and Hale with the 1v1 victory there. Flameberg, not a player you want to count out in those 1v1 scenarios, but he did have no information on to where Hale was. It was all reaction in that gunfight. So now two rounds in a row, Army down. They're gonna have to find a way to win things out as they're back onto the offensive side. Check is gonna grab this bomb. They can't allow Revenge to find those first bloods. They can't allow him to run rampant in their spawn. Hey, oh, nice little off angle, ready for a long range shout. Someone decides to opt in for it. Just oh, peeking man. in the corner of the window, Flameberg. We've seen him play that position a lot, especially in the control. And they want to start working themselves up B lane, but there's two members here ready to fight them on it. And that will be some great team shots that end up coming in. First blood secured for Space Force. A little miscommunication there from Flameberg, or maybe a, an idea that they thought they had the timing, but the bait and switch for Space Force finds one. Not just that, they push forward. Revenge with the Renetti and the Rival 9 just continuing to be a nuisance. So many kills right now for Revenge. Seven and one. Reacts now one versus four. It's going to have to be an unreal round here as they already know where he is. Yeah, this is a tricky spot to be sure. Has to get through four members, needs to try to collect the bomb and then play it. So, a long laundry list ahead of him. And you got players that are oh, pretty man. much on a lot of the high ground. React says, I'll take that freebie. Thank you very much. But again, clock playing against him still feels like this one will be out of reach. Yeah, it's just playing that time. Space Force, they know they don't have to give anything up to React. And Looks like they're gonna find him nonetheless. Space Force, three rounds on the bounce here on high rise. They're able to put it together in this map five, shaking off that win or that loss back on Vista. And it's all off the back of this player right here, Revenge, eight and one Austin, an unreal performance. Man, have to really stop the bleeding coming into this round number four, right? 3-0 down, Revenge is taking over. The only good news here is that he doesn't have a cruise pistol, but take that for what you will. He's still up to eight and one, and he might even be able to reach another one. So need to find this round if your army, our number one seed, looking to try to bring this one back like we've seen many times throughout this series. Revenge, oh, slipping on through. This could be the timing. But he's going to be caught. Flameberg not allowing him to get into the windows. First blood this time goes the way of Army. As now they are looking for their first round of this game five. Flameberg has to be careful not to go down. Kavase going to be backed off from that top heli control. Hail over towards Propane. Ties us back into a three on three. Hail looking to take the high ground now after grabbing that kill and evening it up. Have a say, oh my, how do they not see each oh. other? I don't know. He knows, he knows. Oh, the shot's gonna come through and now the position gonna be given away, but everyone's moved up on the map They're here, so no trade's gonna follow. They're gonna hop it, they have no idea. Chess just gonna stick it out. Oh, in the clutch, the ninja defuse from army. <laughs> Space Force, they had no idea. And Army's gonna put their first round on the board. Talk about Call of Duty timing. Both players pass each other, so is saying, listen, no one's down low in pit. No one's hopping up top onto the bomb. You gotta imagine those comms are more than likely coming through, but it does not matter. And that is the round you needed. It doesn't matter how you get it, Colin. That's the round you got. A dub is a dub in a game five. It does not matter. Trophy is not going to hit the right spot, so Jack's going to miss a little bit of a timing trying to get down and towards pit. But Army now looking to rattle a couple rounds off, see if they can find their way back into this game five. They are used to going back and forth. As we saw on that six star, it was three rounds back and forth between these two teams. So let's see if they can take their second. Patient play coming through for both squads. Not really moving too far forward outside of check down low with the bomb that. Very well, could look to break into B. Information though, gonna be kept on both sides. Clean shot from Czech over the top. He will be able to eliminate one of the critical ARs. Hale also has a chance to be able to oh, find Hale. a kill and he does spot this player through the outer side of B. That will be a free pickup, 3v2 we go. The timing pays off and 
Now you look at the spread from the defense for Space Force. They're trying to cover their angles. Check's gonna be seen. Oh, the rival night. The best go to the game. Revenge the keeping it true. And that's the bomb down. Check takes it all the way over towards the Space Force side. Reacts into a 1v1. Revenge flips the map. You only have 20 seconds left. Oh, yeah. Does he go and actually try to pick it up? You gotta just play for the kill, it feels like, at this point in time. Can he get to B? There's no time. I don't think so. He's searching for him in the back, and he's not gonna find him unless he can encounter him oh. from here, and Revenge is gonna see him, and he's like, nope, I am not interested in that gunfight. Wisely will back down. Draws a little picture for us in the back. His face force. They grab another one. All smiles for Revenge as soon as you see Reacts where he is. You might be shooting straight if you're Revenge, but you don't need to shoot that far. This place is smart. Had some good search and destroy from Revenge. Not getting over aggressive and a chance to go to the grand finals. Now up four to one. Everything favoring Space Force right now. Army just cannot get their gears turning. Got to be a bit frustrating, right? Check able to find two pretty tough kills with the rival line, but the bomb is not in a good position. So here we go. Round number six. Army looking for another one of those must-eaten rounds, and Revenge just lines up two down low already in immediate 4v2 in favor of Space Force. Uh, Revenge is in takeover mode right now. He can do nothing wrong at all. Every play, every timing, every gunfight going to Revenge, 12 and 2. Kabase is not going to spot the player over towards the paint. Dexy is just tucked away, so that's going to be a trade back. But Revenge now in the spawn of the defenders. Can't stop, won't stop. Oh, gets a little bit tricky, but locks down the kill. Revenge up to 13 kills. My goodness, and that's another one on the board for Space Force as they're looking to lock up map number five. That boy is shooting right now. 13 kills, Kabase is going to give them match point on game five in this series. It has been neck and neck, so close until this moment. Army have been silenced on the main stage. And the number two seed, Space Force, now looking for the upset for their chance to be our first grand finalist, be our first chance to hoist that tro trophy. And revenge is on five in a row. Looking for another cruise missile here. Will it be needed? That same grit, that same perseverance we just saw in that Vista hardpoint now required for five rounds in a row. Her army's going down to the lower bracket. Nade stuns over the top. You definitely got to stick on revenge if he decides to make his move because this boy has been shooting. He's been finding kills. He's been opening plays this time around. Kamase. Kamase finds the first one. Oh, looking for a big trade oh. in the back. Flameberg gets pinched out. Double team. Of course, it's revenge. He's there for 14. And that comes down to Flameberg. Seems like he has to make a play. And Hale's going to fall off the map. Revenge is going to call the cruise missile. Reacts goes down. This could be it. This could be it. Revenge able to get in there. They take it cleanly, and they're going to the grand final. And look at that on their feet. Hype as ever. The crowd in their favor. Space Force to the grand final. A chance at being our Force Con Year 3 champions. And they go out with a bang there, using the Cruise Missile Revenge, having himself one of the best games <laughs> I've ever seen in Search and Destroy. That's got to be a good feeling. Yeah, almost got to see that scoreboard and what he finished at. I think it was 15. I think he got up to 15 with I the cruise so. missile, which is insane because I think his teammates had combined eight kills, and I don't think Atama got anything. He didn't even need to do anything that map. He was just chilling. He's like, dude, my teammate is just <laughs> running over them. You do what you do. When a player is playing like that, it doesn't matter what he calls. You say, yes, sir, we're doing that. <laughs> yes, sir, right away, <laughs> Everything's sir. Everything's working. <laughs> and uh, it works at the end there. You see Kabase starting to turn up as well for the team. A lot of first bloods coming at a lot of transitional points where Kabase is just in the right spot with that MCW. I've been so impressed with this team ever since I saw them earlier on that Rio hardpoint versus t the Air Force. And when you have this team just clicking, just in the flow state, winning against the number one seed here at ForceCon, this is their chance to be a champion. Oh, well, it was a banger series, but now we got to send it to a banger interview on stage with Spider Tip. Hey, what an epic winner's finals we just witnessed here at Forest Con. I was Spider Tip, and I was able to snag revenge here for an interview. You guys just took down arguably one of the favorite squads here in the U.S. Army Esports and did it in style. How, what's going through your mind right now after that win? Honestly, I'm just looking for grand finals. I know we're going to see them again. They're coming for revenge at this point, and I'm not worried. 
I'm really not. I thought. So. Brushing it off, not worried at all. Even, I believe, we saw an L get thrown down on the map. I mean, if you're not going to plant bomb on an attack, you're all the way across the map. Like, make it to the bomb. Do the objective. Or kill me. Or kill me for once. Like, I don't know. Man, I mean, we got some big words here out of Revenge. He's already talking about getting amped up for the Grand Finals. What are some things that you as a team are going to take away from that matchup against the U.S. Army Esports? Uh, the fact that they won't play us on any of those maps ever again. So we're going to have to get better at the rest of our maps, look at VOD for the rest of them, and honestly just come out swinging again. Come out swinging again. I guess you better watch out if you're Army or for other teams that are looking to try and take down Space Force. Now, one more thing. I got to hear any last minute thoughts, any shout outs you want to send to anyone outside? Honestly, no last minute thoughts. Uh, it's all about the next game right now. But shout out my family for being here. Um, and shout out everybody for putting on ForceCon. I love that. ForceCon just getting all hot and heavy in the action. Thank you so much, Revenge. Have a great rest of your day. And we're going to cut to a quick break because we got more action on the way.
Welcome back, ForceCon. We have our lower matchup ready to go. We're into our lower round two, and this one is looking like a good one. We got a long road till we get back to the grand finals, and now Space Force is waiting for a challenger. My name is Seymour. With me is Cruising back on the desk, buddy. We're back. How you feeling? I'm feeling great. That last series, banger. I oh, hope that we just get series like that the rest of the time out. Otherwise, I mean, Colin, what's even the point, right? We need those banger matches. That's what gets people into Call of Duty. That is the best part about Call of Duty is when you come out and you get unexpected outcomes. It is, it is my favorite thing. It's literally like moments before that, I was sitting there like, Army can sweep this thing. I was waiting for <laughs> like, hold on. Wait a second. Yeah. There aren't gonna be, it's not going to be that easy, but it, it has been a very good day so far. Lots of teams really surprising us uh, across our schedule, and I think for um, the fact that you know Space Force has now shown us that Army is beatable, suddenly this kind of series opens up, and you know heading in with our lower round two matchup for Air Force versus the Marines, these are two teams that very easily could make a run here. For sure, I, th I think I said that before too when the Air Force went down to the lower bracket originally. I said, hey, you know, these guys are a really good team. They went 2-2 two two through that first early uh, group stage yesterday, and they had a good opportunity. We can take a look at our schedule here as well, kind of see how everything is all playing out here. It's Air Force going up against the Marine, and we have Army now waiting in that lower final up next, right? So yeah. it's, it's all elimination games from this point on, Colin, and it's going to get really down to the wire here. I don't know who's going to come out of this one, if I'm being completely honest. Marine yesterday, we were playing with their coach, right? So yeah. we really don't know how this team plays up to their full potential yet. We didn't get to see their matchup against Army. That was the only match we haven't seen on stream here today. So, yes, they lost. We don't know how exactly they lost, though. It was like, it wasn't as close as a series. It was a 6-3 in the search and destroy, about 250 to kind of 130, I'd say, for the Army as well as, you know, the Marines just couldn't get anything going. Maybe it was being off stage. They just couldn't get those vibes up for sure. But for sure. We're, we're turning back and against a team like the Air Force, who also hasn't been having a good day either. I mean, you show up with the original, like, head-to-head where you play close against the Space Force, and you get blown out in that matchup. You yeah. go to play the Coast Guard, and it was a very, very close game versus the Coast Guard, something that, you know, maybe heading into this lower round two matchup, you're not going to be feeling the most comfortable with. I think a lot closer than you wanted it to be, right? Yeah. Now, when you go into this one, you really, really need to make sure. I think if Air Force wants any opportunity to go up against Army and come out with a victory against Army after this, they need to dominate the Marines right now. Yeah, and it goes both ways. It's vice yeah, versa for, sure. for the Marines over towards sure. the, the Air Force. You don't want to sneak your way through this series right now. It's going to be a grueler, a grind. You win, you move forward, you lose, you go home. And you got the Army up next, and there's a Space Force waiting for you in the Grand Finals. This is our last best of three of the tournament. After that, it's going to be best of five after best of five. And I think it's time that we announce our teams taking the stage. First off, we look to the great blue yonder as Air Force is up. And Air Force coming into this one after a big victory in their last series, able to take out the Coast Guard, able to get a little bit of momentum going their way here. I think my big thing for this team coming into this now, how are we going to respond in our search and destroys? It has not looked great today. Yes, they were able to win one against, uh, against the Coast Guard, but if you guys can come out, win a big search and destroy here against them, this is a very big opportunity. It is. Looking at venue, Wazd and Chewy. Waz again, we started to see that dominant form from Waz back in that lower round one matchup versus the Coast Guard. Still, you're kind of looking for things to form together for this team to see if they can find that next level, continue to evaluate off these wins and move into that winner's final and maybe into that grand final versus Space Force for a little bit of a match, rematch in that chance. But it's a long road till we get to that, that uh, possible matchup in the grand finals and first for the Air Force they gotta take on a team that is looking to make it deep here in the bracket the Marine Corps please welcome them to the stage
and the Marine Corps today, Colin, they have been looking much, much better than we saw yesterday, right? They came out, they did not have their fort yesterday. The fort is back. Cairo is completely ready to go. This team looked really good in our first series. Again, we didn't get to see them yeah. against Army, but this team, we know they're ready to take the fight to the Air Force. They've been working, they've been plotting. Cryo, Jay, Frizzy, Schnapps. They lose to the Army, but earlier taking down the Coast Guard, they looked like they had that form. They had that chance of the potential. And now both teams with wins against the Coast Guard, this is kind of where you're going to set yourself apart from each other. And for the Marines, like you said, with Cryo joining into this roster, he looked unreal back in that first match of the day. But, I mean, Jesse, when you're kind of looking at these two teams and you're looking at these players, it's going to be not many things on pen and paper that do separate them, especially considering the last time that they did battle, it wasn't the same roster as the Marines. Not even the full roster, exactly. So now that they've got the full roster, you can go into this one like, hey, we played them a little bit tight the last time. And now we come out, we have a full squad. This is our time. We need to come out, we need to show them absolutely our best. I feel really bad, I kind of sound like an Air Force hater right now, because all day today <laughs> I've been kind of on them about their search and destroy, about their hard point. I'm, I'm not a hater, I'm not a hater, but they need to show me something here if I think they're gonna make a run through this tournament. Well, here we look at our best of three, our last best of three for the day. Karachi map one, Karachi map two, and then high rise map three if the control is needed. Oh no, I was just told by production. It's gonna be Karachi map number three for that control. Look, switch up right away. Shut up, production. Production for is on fire right on now. point with that switch. So, yeah, we're going to get a triple dose of Karachi here in lower round two. We get to take a look at those bands as well. And I think for, you know, for the Air Force, the fact that, you know, they're getting rid of those, you know, close engagement maps like a six star. They didn't do too well on that Rio earlier. So I like to change over towards the Karachi. This is going to really play into maybe a little bit more of a structured play style. And if I'm being honest, I think this actually does favor the Air Force. Um, when you look at Karachi overall at this turn, between these two teams. Again, yes, you know, different roster for uh, for the side of the Marines, obviously, but they are 0-2. They haven't won a hard point yet. 0-2 in that map mode combination. Yes, they haven't played Search. Yes, they haven't played the Control on Karachi yet, but that's going to be a big thing. It's got to loom in the back of your mind just a little bit. And then you look at the other side now, the Air Force. They're 1-1 one one in, uh, in Karachi, and they've been able to take that Search and Destroy we saw in the last series. Yeah. So they've got a couple reps. They know what they need to do, and... Honestly, I can't pick who's going to win this one, but I would say the map set favors Air Force a little bit. And it's, you know, it's a lot of Karachi to play. I'm sure, you know, as you get into the search and destroy, you're going to get a feel of the map as things go on. And, you know, it may be not the best record. You might not have shining numbers right now, but this is your last chance if you're both teams. You win, you move over to play the Army in the winner, the losers' finals. You lose, you go away from the ForceCon tournament, and you kind of bow out, I'm sure, before any of these teams really expected to. So it's a big moment for both uh, the Air Force as well as the Marines to kind of reach that next potential. And you're kind of saying with the Army coming up next, you're looking at this to be a pretty comfortable game because that Army team, albeit they lost, it's a game five. These two teams, the, the Army put up quite the battle there in the winner's final, and I'm sure they're looking for that revenge right back into the grand. Well, let's, let's not beat around the butt. The Army team is disgusting. They oh, are for sure. very good. I don't think that map set for them played really well into their favor in that last series, and that Army team is going to be very hard to beat. They didn't go 4-0 yesterday for no reason. They are going to be a tough, tough opponent for anybody to oh, go yeah. up against. Even if Air Force, like they end up going up against Air Force again in the grand finals, Air Force will not have a walk in the park to go up against that team. So if you win this series, it better be convincing Either convincing or you, it needs to be like a game five round 11. Or, oh, I guess game three. It can't be a game five yeah, round you're 11, right. It can't be a game five round. It's only best of three, Jesse. But it has to be like a close series, you know what I mean? Either one yeah. way or the other, where you're coming out with a ton of momentum going into the next series. It's either you slip away with this comfortable one or you grind your way into that winner's finals or, or that loser's finals because it's a long road. There's a lot of Call of Duty being played for the team that wins out this game. You got potential three more matches if you win here. And you want to make sure that you're hopefully not grinding your way through because that is going to be tiresome once you do make it into that grand finals. And I'm sure, you know, whether it's Air Force or it's Marines, you're going to be bringing the best you have here. I think yesterday when we were talking to that Marine team or whenever they would kind of come up to us and they would, they would mention it, they would really, really vocalize how uncomfortable they were with their coach in, you know, around the coach was kind of talking to me like, hey, I don't play too much competitive anymore. And that really hinders the team a little it bit. Does, and sure. when you're bringing Cryo in um, and back into the roster, it's not only the gameplay is going to be better, but your mood is going to be better as a team when you have that core structure 
back sure. in the play. The camaraderie is there. The exactly. team is going to be a lot better. And to even add on to your point, I mean, if you're not practicing with your coach, like the plays are going to be completely different. That your point of the trust isn't there, right? It's not the same. It, it, and as good as he might be as an individual player, not getting those reps in with the team will be the big, big differential between these. So now you get Cairo back in. Everything is looking much, much better for the Marines. And I would love to see them come out, have a really good series here against Air Force. I mean, I think I'm due for a map three at the very least, right? I think you're due for a map three as well. I mean, you've been gassing two O's in the it's best of threes. <laughs> So I'm hoping it goes the distance between both of these two teams. And for the Air Force on the other side, I mean, you lose to Space Force, who are now in the grand finals. You work back through losers round one. You beat the Coast Guard. And now the Marines are next up to your block. We got Karachi Hardpoint loading in for both of these teams. And this is their last chance to show what they're made of here in Force Gone to move, for move on. Yeah, absolutely. Quick reminder, Marine Corps yet to play the, uh, the, the uh, they are, sorry, 0-2 on hardpoint here. And then the side of Air Force, they are 1-0 and or they are 0 one on hardpoint, 1-0 on Karachi, search and destroy. So just kind of something to keep in mind here right off the rip of the game. But you can already see off the break, it's a good start for Air Force. They're able to get right in the rubble. Yeah, and they have that top third control. You have a player out towards the clock tower. Waz to making sure that nobody can get that set up for the retake. Frizzy has to take the full wrap around. You have to deal with this player over towards the clock tower. If not, the rivals can't fly. And here we see Jay now looking to kind of bat his way in towards the point. There, and that ain't good. Good. Cryo helping him out. Chewie goes down. And that's three members out for the Air Force. Now some time for Mar Marine Corps to catch. Even more importantly than winning those gunfights, though, Air Force actually spawns up on the left side of the map here. Let's not forget where our next hard point is. It's the top left-hand side. You can see player six and player seven. They are already set up, ready to go at the diner. This last 10 seconds does not really matter because you can absolutely lock the full 60 there. Yeah, and you see that Waz is looking to spread out through this map, get this high ground over towards top soda with the AR. We know how dominant this player can be. This is not an easy hill to break. Anyways, having Waz in this one is just gonna make it all the more difficult. But you do get a spot in the back for Marine Corps, and they're gonna hit this one over the side wall. Venue wasn't ready for that. And that's three down immediately. The break for Marine Corps Air Force, uh, Air Force with the wrong read on the spawns, and Marine Corps gotta get away with murder there. Not a break you see come through very often. Not very often do you see a team able to hop that half wall and be able to find those kills in succession like that, but they do. But you know what? Air Force, they're not out of it yet. They're gonna start to fight their way back in. They get a two for two trade. They're gonna try to break their way in here, but with 20 seconds left, it might just be more worth it to go and rotate to the new hill. It could be. Frizzy, specs in the push to the back, couple shots there, won't clean up the kill. Chewie walks away with it, but the trade's favoring Marine Corps to get the rest of the scrap time. They're gonna have just about a 30-point lead heading into the P3. Cryo trying to find the rotations, but he doesn't know that it is a very well-stacked spawn right now for the Air Force. One player does spawn out, though. Chewie's gonna have, now have to make his way across the map very quickly. Team Nate does come through, so the Marine Corps able to find the break early on here. The, I like this play out of venue, though. Just kind of sit in the back, wait for your teammates now, then make your play. He's unknown in that position. Yeah, Cryo off the early break there for the Marine Corps. Not allowing Air Force to get set up. It's going to be a dangerous heading to try to play through mid. Daisy gets caught. Venue going to break through the front of that hill, though it is going to be if Mar Marine Corps immediately fighting right back in. Cryo is going to take down Waz. And for Air Force, they have to look to this rotation towards P4. It's not going to be a hill where you normally get a lot of points on, but so far, Marine Corps, they're dominating when it comes down to these breaks. At this point, if you're Air Force, you need to not only rotate to that hill, yes, you don't always get a lot of time there, but you're going to need to start to find some time here if you're Air Force. Almost a triple, the triple the lead here for the Marine Corps over Air Force at the moment, and this is where it gets really scary. This game can absolutely snowball. You need to answer back with some points right now. Yeah, you really do. Daisy, 0-5 start to this hard point. Going to be the first one into the hard point. Now trying to stay alive, but not actually going to stick things out. The nade's going to push him off. Sh uh, Schnapps looking for the kill, and that's going to come through. Schnapps for the break underneath green, and Cryo's going to double down for a little bit of control for Marine Corps to again own this high ground. Make sure that Air Force just cannot get anything going. Finally, the Air Force get themselves a break in three. Go down, make it four. This is a much needed time for the team. Big thing to note as well, Cryo not only went on that big streak, also ends up finding the kill streak off that as well. Cruise missile will be available later in this game. So that's just that extra little bit too for the Marine Corps. You end up falling down a little bit in this game. Air Force gets a good hold. You can absolutely break your way back in with something like that. WSD five in a row from self. 
It'd be good to answer back with another cruise missile of your own. So at least you have that tool as well to combat the likes of Cryo, both members 11 and 6, but Cryo gonna immediately invest the cruise missile for this P5 break. Schnapp's gonna take down Venue in the back. Cryo finds Wazd all the way back and towards P3. Does Wazd use a cruise missile of his own up the respawn? It's gonna be tough with Jay. It's just killing you off spawn. Chewie goes down. Wazd's gonna spawn all the way over towards Market. And Jay continuing to find kills with the Renetti. Three down again for the Air Force. Almost a 100 point lead now built up here for the Marine Corps, they are 100% running away with this game at the moment. I loved that streak usage too, Colin. I mean, they were able to drop that down just at the perfect time to completely stop any push from the Air Force from the front and able to completely combat anything that they were able to throw at them. Now, if you're the Marines though, you're able to at least lock down this time, you hold on to this, and this game is getting really out of control. It Air is. Force needs to find a way to not only get P1 here, but string this into P2, because they need to get points really, really bad. They do. Marine Corps just continuing to snowball this game. Daisy's gonna find Cryo, but Waz immediately traded out. Frizzy in top red. Doesn't know that there's a player right behind him. Gonna take down Daisy in the hill, so no time for Air Force just yet, but it is gonna be a trade fest. As both teams are just trying to find enough to set up, and Chewie is still alive, still going unnoticed. Jay turns his back. They know Chewie is here, but nobody's going for the kill. Could this be the moment, though? for Air Force to start to bring themselves back into this game. You get some good points off the rip of this so far. Unfortunately though, Frizzy is able to find his way up to top second onto the AC and able to find that player inside the hill. That's just gonna take away those few points that you could get because you're just not watching all the angles. And unfortunately for the Air Force, they just keep getting broke. Marines are on fire right now, Colin. Yeah, the Marines just cannot do anything wrong just yet, Jay. Now looking for the rotations. Frizzy's gonna catch Venue, looking for two. Oh, Frizzy getting the kills through Hotel. Won't get Shuey, but enough damage has been done. Cryo gonna fill that hole. And back into the setup here for Marine Corps. It's the first time that we've really actually seen them be the team to get this initial time off rotation. That's even scarier, right? Because normally it's just a big break and then they get the rest of the time. Now an opportunity to get a full 60 here. This could bring them well over 200 points holding on to this. Air Force are getting blown out of the map at the moment. Shaky shots from Frizzy and Daisy now trying to get the break going. Around the back, Schnapp's gonna spot it. Cryo with a double kill. Daisy not able to get the rest, so three down for the Air Force, and Marine Corps back into the last 30 seconds of this hill. So they're gonna be looking to the 220 point marker for this game in a winnable condition. Frizzy, Schnapps, another set of kills. Schnapps is on three in a row. And this is where it gets so tough, right? Because you can't afford to not hit this scrap time, but you also can't afford to not rotate across the map and try to get a full setup here because you are just so down on the scoreboard at the moment. You're gonna reach right around 210 points here if you're the Marines. Actually, they'll hop off, so not gonna hit it just yet, but it feels really like it's a matter of if, not when right now, Colin. Yeah, Wast up top, still holding onto this cruise missile. Only a couple shots, not gonna connect, but will take the kill down onto Cryo. Now finessing his life, Chewie's gonna win the fights through scrap, so it's gonna be a three down, make it four down for Marine Corps as a map like Karachi, when you can put hills together like this, it's only a matter of time before Air Force can maybe find their way back, but off the spawn, Marine Corps winning their individual fights. Still 30 seconds that I'm not sure Marine Corps really would desperately like. Frizzy's gonna jump right in with the Renetti, takes out Daisy, and in the hill we go for Marine Corps. Oh, this is where it can get really dangerous. They can't win here, they can get really close though. They can put this to about a 20 point game, or a 10 point game, sorry, from winning this one out. And I mean, Air Force, you gotta go, but you also gotta rotate. This is where it is just so tough. They'll send one player to try to hit this scrap time here. There's like five seconds left. They'll be able to take it out, but unfortunately the backup is right there for the Marine Corps. They will hit 230 points, 19 away from closing this map one. Yeah, Cryos causing such a ruckus over towards P4 off the initial Air Force. They have the rotation, but they're losing the battles. Cryo, 19 and 14, keeping this Air Force team out of the hill spots, down underneath construction. A member of the Air Force team, but won't be able to lock down this kill. Jay setting up for the pinch. It looks like Marine Corps looking to collapse on this one together, and Jay could blow it all up. Jumps over with the rifle nine, but was waiting there, traded by Cryo, who is still continuing to be an issue for this team. Finally, though, you'll touch the point here. If you're the Marine Corps, see if you can win this gunfight out. That's massive. Cairo, again, really just being the, the lead force here for the Marine Corps to lock down some time. 
But Kaw, this has been multiple hills where you've had an opportunity to put this one out, and you have yeah. not yet. This is only going to be building opportunity for Air Force. Well, you can win this one here still for Marine Corps. It seems like they have the tick to put it away. So you're going to have to hit this one last time, Schnapps. Could this be it? Ooh. Yes, it is. Just enough time on P4 to put the Karachi away. And the number four seed of our Marine Corps continuing to push on. And what's crazy about that is when we looked at the score from yesterday's hard point between these two teams, yes, not the same map, but when you look at that map mode combination, it was almost the identical score, just kind of flipped around. Yeah. And they got really ran through yesterday, obviously, with the coach, not with their, with their actual fourth player. But you give them their fourth, and today they have absolutely turned it on. I mean, today they have just been incredible when it comes down to a lot of these plays. Uh, the talk about into the second set of rotations, the majority of the rotates there on Karachi were Air Force being the first one to the hill. And how many times did we get a break there from the Marines? It's just non-stop success when it comes down to their individual gunfights. And it's just showing just how confident these players are today when they're loading into these games. 100%. I felt like a broken record. I'm not going to lie to that cast. I was just like... <laughs> They have an opportunity to hold and come right back into this game. Oh, they're broken again. It just over and over and over again. They just kept getting just broken, and eventually it just spirals out of control. You need to be able to hold on to those points. Unfortunately, you don't. And now is when it gets really scary, because yeah. we go into search, and they have not looked great in search today. It has been probably the biggest worry for me for this team is looking at their search and destroy. So now going into that mode, it is going to be a tough battle back here for the Air Force. Yeah, Karachi, Search and Destroy up next for both of these teams. And the Air Force, they need a lifeline right now because mm -hmm. uh, they just continue to get kicked on today. And it just seems like they're not playing up to the team that we're kind of used to seeing here for Air Force. I mean, yes, just yesterday in the round robins, uh, they were going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Space Force, who's yeah. now in the grand finals. And I don't know if it's just maybe you haven't been feeling the same today. I don't know if it's maybe a change in the rest of the teams just kind of elevating their skill levels with, you know, Marines making the changes, Space Force making some obvious adjustments for overnight, sure. and for Air Force, we're just not seeing that. It just seems like they're trying to base their play style off of their skill alone, and you haven't really seen any adjustments to try to change what we are looking at for this Air Force team. And they just continue to try to push through, and it's not working. Yeah, it feels like they're a little bit behind. It's, it's like we, we see the potential, but it's just the small little mistakes that they make on the map is what's really kind of screwing them over in some cases, right? Like, I mean, I specifically think of looking back to the Search and Destroy in the first series that we actually cast together on the day, and it was Invasion. Every single time they push up the map, they would get some control or have some sort of idea, but just very indecisive. I think they're lacking some confidence right now, yeah. which is really hurting their team. No, I agree with this one for sure. And a Karachi search and Troy, definitely something where you can get that confidence going. Uh, you look at this map to kind of be a little bit of a haven for the subs, especially when you're looking at, you know, trying to find those routes for first bloods quickly off your spawn. The breakoffs are going to be super important for this Air Force team in trying to not allow Marines to get too much control of the map because we saw it back for the Marines when they were on stage, back in the invasion versus the Coast Guards. Every single time they would get a first blood, you'd see them push up into the face of those Coast Guard players. They didn't sit and wait. They were very proactive. They were on the hunt for these members. And I imagine Karachi's gonna be quite the same. Well, the positive for Air Force, they played this map earlier on today in the loser's bracket. They won this map earlier on today in the loser's bracket. So if there's any opportunity for them right now, it's to come out and just absolutely dominate here oh, inside yeah. of the Search and Destroy. Way easier said than done though, because it's gonna be tough. Marines have looked really good in this series. And they just dropped the bomb and left it in spawn. Yeah, you know, you don't need a bomb. It's just search. It's just search and destroy, you know, it's just the objective. Jay's gonna go back and get it. Oops. And Schnapps already through Church Alley. Gonna get tagged down to 24 health. Stays alive, not giving up that first blood just yet. No, oh, and you can see, I mean, they actually have a wide open B bomb site. This is a very good opportunity to be able to get this bomb down. Unfortunately, I think they wait a little bit too long. I don't, I don't know if they saw each other there. It's... Jade just needs to find a way to break out, obviously, and get this bomb down with how open it is. But the longer they take, the more time it gives for Air Force to rotate back. And they absolutely have now. Jay's seen, lost, set up. It's not going to be easy to cross this one. Shops looking to catch some timing, but Wast is waiting. It's a good read. 
from the AR of the Air Force to pull a first blood in their favor. And the bomb has still struggled to get over here. Jay has been noted on this cross into the bottom of scaffolding. Yeah, Jay's kind of trapped there right now. I think Venue has an idea that there's a player in that position as well. You can see the ADS right on it. Have not been able to find anything yet, though. And this bomb actually gets to the site. The bomb can go down. This is very holdable in a 3v4. Yeah, this is possible for the Marines. Air Force wants their way back in. Cheeky Heady here for Cryo. Almost getting an angle there for Waz. He's going to reposition. And Cryo, nice shots there. Going to be caught by Daisy over towards the top ACs. Jumps down in the middle. 27 seconds. You have a player in market. You have a player back bridge so still a lot of work to do here if you're the air force on the retake the marines at a disadvantage jay not gonna get the timing gets the kill pops up traded one versus three 12 seconds left frizzy's still alive venue's gonna hop the defuse and they're gonna double up frizzy's above and oh my god frizzy with the clutch Frizzy finds the correct player to close that one out, and they will take round number one there, Call That was that was crazy. I did not think they were going to take that round with 30 seconds left in it, but they got that bomb down, and 3v4 on that site is very holdable once you get into those power positions. It got scary as soon as Daisy gets rid of Cryo on that heady, and you're in two separate individual battles. Jay finds his one, though, and you put Frizzy in a situation where there's not a lot of time. Air Force with numbers they took so long on that retake they did they absolutely did and i think that's been the problem with air force all day though is they just take their time and you just do not have that type of time in search and destroy to make those big plays like that taking sites and retaking sites has been their biggest issue so far in search and destroy and it's been what's hindering them here in this tournament so marine corps stealing one away there 1-0 on the board it was Waz with three kills, though, from the Air Force. Stays alive still with that possible shriek. Frizzy, absolute demon shots. They're just barely seeing Chewie's head. Almost pulling that first blood, but they stay alive. That player's got to be like three HP. That was so many shots and just somehow stays alive there in that situation. Fantastic job. But again, on offense here for Air Force, really, really just don't seem to know what they want to do. They try to get picks, they don't find anything. And now with 30 seconds left in the round, they have to make a decision. And it looks like we're gonna wrap off site here, but they do not have the numbers. Cryo spots the barrel of Venue, who stays alive again. Air Force just barely holding on to their lives. This looks like we're heading over towards AJ, gonna spot that cross. And now you know the bomb is where the bomb is heading. 20 seconds left, Cryo backed up towards the light arches. Smokes go down, but a first blood there on a the Venue. Might even be able to get this player off the site before bomb gets planted. No, the bomb will go down. So at the very least, you have that. But a 2v4, this is going to be very hard to hold. All down to Chewie. One versus four. Jay's going to hop the defuse. Chewie's still alive. He make the magic happen. Jay's going to hop off it, but Chewie can't get away. Valiant effort there. Almost for a second. I thought those members were going to line up. That's literally what I was going to I thought they were about to line up for a second there. I mean, I wouldn't have even blamed them if he jumped down and, and did a quick little pump behind those stairs either. In that situation, you got to take anything you can to be able to walk away with that. I, I'm not saying snake. I'm just I was saying, gonna say, hey, one pump's okay. I'm waiting for my red card. Schnapps there, getting the final kill. Lots of time for the defuse too, and, and it's just those opening damage that you see from the Marines just constantly stalling out that attack. Venue getting tagged down low, Chewie getting tagged down low, and they have to back up and adjust over towards B, or sorry, A. And it just seemed like Marine Corps had so much control of that map. Air Force just could not find a way to battle back. This round, though, Marines are going to get really aggressive here through middle of the map. It's going to be a double push in through Barrel Alley. They might even be able to find a first blood here. And if they don't, they're going to immediately push through. They'll find first blood bottom church. Schnapp says, what's up, brother? Let's go to bottom green. Have that control of the church now. Marine Corps looking for that 3-0. And with that first blood, it seems like they are almost ready to seize it. Jay watching for the flank. Nobody's going to be coming, so the bomb is going to rotate a B. The only player anywhere near this bomb right now for the side of the Air Force is WASD. 
might be able to find a first on the player top church, but will inevitably have to back down. We'll lose the gunfight as well. That's wow. so unfortunate. This bomb will go down for free. Another player drops. This is tough, tough spot to be in. It's tough scenes. Venue doesn't even get the trade there, so Schnapps is still alive and ready to punish. And look how worried Venue is. They have no idea where this player for the Marines have gone. Frizzy gonna spot out both, and luckily both stay alive there. Schnapps gonna be giving himself away, but with the kill onto Venue, it's Daisy in a one versus three now. And all the information for the Marines to put this one away. Daisy, 15 seconds, you gotta fly. And it just seems so impossible, no time to make it happen. Yeah, I'm fortunate there. It's just, it's so tough because they, they do a lot of the things right on the map and then it's just like one gunfight goes the wrong way and it almost is like it just spirals the entire round out of control for the Air Force. And unfortunately now down 3-0, back up against the wall, they're down 1-0 in the series. They need to start to find some rounds here if they want to stay alive in this loser bracket. Yeah, Marine Corps, I mean, they look good though. They, they look very good. All their decisions, all of their aggression, the routes that you're seeing from Schnapps there, it's not only Schnapps, it was Schnapps and Furzy double swinging into bottom green. They're just not giving any leeway to the Air Force and they just continue to lay down the law. And just constantly hitting them with different pushes too. It's not the same thing over and over again. And Speaking of the same thing, we're going to see Air Force with a very slow push out towards market at the moment, not finding anything. And when you look up at the top left, you have a player in a very dominant position in, Sn in uh, Schnapp right now, not able to find the kill just yet, but this is a spot where you need to get this player to this spot, position. Yeah, Schnapps. Maybe the deciding roll, Chewie, ooh, the stun's gonna catch them. Schnobs gets rid of Daisy, sticking the ball plant to the very end, and Daisy's gonna get away, or Chewie's gonna get away. I don't know how you get out of that spot, but you do. So there's a very good opportunity to hold here now, but if you're the Marine Corps, you need to just fly at them right now and just try to overwhelm any positions. You can't let them hold post plan. And Frizzy sees the cross for Chewie, slides in with the Renetti to go down, and we're into a 1v4 for Wazd. Playing through mid, now Wazd is known. Jay's gonna track him down, and that's four rounds in a row for the Marines. This is getting ugly. The Marines with another great round on the board. Not only are they finding these rounds, but they're finding them with ease, Colin. That bomb yeah. goes down. You're in a 4v3, yes, but it's a hard retake still with the positioning inside a market because you have to be the player to be on the aggressive, to find that gunfight win. And they just slide on, they take the child, they win the gunfight, no problem, and they walk away. They trade efficiently. Fantastic round there out of the Marines. Doing everything right right now, Marine Corps. Looking for their rematch versus the Army. We didn't get to see it on stream, but if they beat Air Force now, they get to show us where they can improve on. Frizzy through mid, bomb heading over towards A. It's a triple stack on B from the Air Force, and that's gonna leave uh, Daisy all alone here. They've done this before. They did this earlier as well. Daisy just needs to play their life, stay alive in the back here. But they have an idea already too that Daisy's back there. Daisy goes down, this bomb should be free, and this is gonna be a 4v3 hold. As Schnapps just flies, he's been flying, he's not gonna stop flying. Seven and two, three in a row. Now looking to wrap yet another route. He's gonna spot the cross there, climbing the ladder. No, you don't. Was gonna go down. 4v2 for the retake. 30 seconds left. Air Force, life on the line in this elimination match, and you both are separated. Schnapp's gonna get caught. Venue over the wall, but it's all down to Venue in a 1v3, and that's not gonna happen. Marine Corps 5 0 on Karachi SD. It's gonna have to be a full sale now if you wanna stay inside of this tournament if you're the Air Force. But again, I just don't understand where they go from here. It, it's. It's like they're not making any adjustments. It's the same defenses we've seen all day. It's the same offenses we've seen all day. If I see them pushing a market again right here, I might take my headset off and walk away. <laughs> Please don't. I don't want to do this I alone. I wouldn't do that to you. Hey, Austin's right there. He can come back over anytime. <laughs> well, Air Force, I mean, they need a miracle right now. As they're on the edge of elimination, Marine Corps, with the change in cryo, it looks like it has elevated them to a new level. They look comfortable, they look composed, and they look like they're ready to take on the army yet again, Jay. Bottom lights, Venue's gonna take them down. First blood for the Air Force. That's big, big first blood. Will get traded out. Can you find the trade with the player up top? Oh, weird gunfight here. Daisy can't come out with the win. And now, man advantage, back over to the Marine Corps. Cryo doing the Lord's work right now. Schnapps is gonna put us into a winnable spot for the Marines. 
3v1 for Wazd, the miracle player for this team, the big hitter that we've been highlighting. Can he stay alive? Swings out, stuns out. Schnapp's gonna put it away, and Marines, they move forward. 2-0 versus the Air Force. They knocked them out, and they'll move on. Yeah, the Marines just came different today. They were ready for this matchup against the Air Force. And yesterday, with their coaching, I mean, they, they didn't play the greatest hard point, but they played a really tight search and destroy against Air Force. So to be able to come out here and go up against them now with your full team, you can see why that fourth player matters. Guarantees themselves top three here at the event. They have looked so good, and I am so excited to see them go back up against Army. From one and three in the round robin to now making top three in the tournament. I mean, what a turnaround from this squad that we've been seeing for the Marines. I, and we'll say a lot. I mean, teams will come up to us and they'll say, this isn't, you know, the best form that we've had. We have a new player coming in and it's going to completely turn things around. Well, they talk the talk and now they're walking the walk. And I am impressed with this team. Yeah, me as well. I think that this team has looked really good. I like the hard point changes that we've seen from earlier today into that. They look really good inside of that hard point specifically. But I mean, how, how can you even say no to a 6-0 search? That was that crazy. Was I mean, if you're looking at this one of your army, for sure, you don't want to child them on Karachi Search and Destroy. They look so good, but that's going to be all said and done for us on the desk here. We got Spider Tip on stage with the interview with a player ready to go. Hey, let's go, boys. That was a great cast, a great matchup, and I was actually able to snag Schnapps after that dominating victory. Now, the job's not done here, though. I know you guys were prepping. You were watching that prior match knowing that we have to make a run. How are we feeling going into that? Uh, we're feeling pretty good. Uh, we just got our new fourth back, Cryo, so, you know, we put in the effort, the reps, and I think it's paying off in this match right here. We lost to that team yesterday, so that's an improvement, you know? It's definitely an improvement, and you did mention Cryo being back. We got a chance to talk to him on the stage early on. The vibes were high. Now, what does something that he brings to the team that allows you to find success? Because I was looking at that hard point earlier on, and you were frying. Yeah, he's so on AR, he just holds the lanes a lot better, and he'll get all the kills. You go, you know, count on the window once, get to two pieces. So when we were to sub, it makes my job easier. I could just hit my routes and get to where I need to be to get those free kills and rat out. So, yeah. I love that for you guys. Look, see, we're all filling a role. We're getting things ready to go. So knowing that you guys were backstage watching, we need to get the cohesion. We need to hit our shots, hit our ones. But there's been a lot of talk behind the scenes between some of these U.S. Armed Force branches. What would it mean to you to be able to take down the Army? It uh, means a lot. You know, Flamberg, that's my guy on the Army right there. Me and him, we teamed up for a little bit. We had beef playing against each other a lot. So it's a good rivalry there. And that, it'll, it'll mean a lot. They took us out in the pool play that we did, but we're trying to get our licks back right now. All right, so you hear it. There is revenge here. We are on that revenge tour against Flameberg. So I just need to know, any final shout outs? Do you want to thank anyone at home? Uh, not really at home. Shout out to the, uh, the team we just played, you know, good coaching. They had a good team, team effort. They beat us in pool play. Uh, we just had to bring back together. Shout out to my teammates and my coach for putting us on and yeah. Let's do it. All right, give it up, guys, once again for the Marine Corps here, taking it a dub, keeping on that run. We're going to jump to a quick break. When, when we come back, we got more action. Go P boys.
Yes, sir. <coughs> and welcome back to ForceCon 2024. We are getting deep into the bracket as we get ready to line up our lower finals. Taking you through it will be myself, Visions. Alongside me, I got Cruz and Spaz. How you feeling, brother? I'm feeling good. I mean, it's been a really fun day. This is my last cast of the day, unfortunately, but you and Colin, you guys are gonna kill it come that grand finals. Let's let's go over the bang, right? Like, Absolutely. It, I'm really hoping we get a good one here. I, the Marines have looked good. Army has looked kind of unbeatable outside of the Space Force, so it's going to be a tough one for them, but I think we're going to be in for a really fun one. Yeah, I agree. I think that we're going to be in for an exciting one. It's a rematch. I mean, you look at these guys when they did match up in the upper final there earlier today. It wasn't too bad. It was about a 100-point differential and then about a three-round differential in the SD. So those are slight tweaks, you know, and you can add in a different map pool, maybe get something in there that could potentially be more comfortable. But one thing that we do know is that the heat and the intensity start to pick up, and the Army also coming off a bit of a tough one. They just lost that map five it got knocked down they did lose that map five i think even more importantly to even touch on they lost that map three which we have not gotten a chance to see yet from the side of the marines they'll get to be able to come out they'll get to play that control guaranteed because we are into that best of fives now so yes. that's a big thing to talk about they lost it they looked weak it's one of the only modes we've seen the army really look weak in so far so if you can come out and you can take that win against them that could absolutely open up the back half of the series here for the marines could be your opportunity and of course of course as you look over that schedule you can see space force they're sitting up there and they are going to be hanging out for a little bit get to watch over this losers final and say all right well maybe we'll take that one away maybe we'll pick this map and get to maybe dive in a little bit deeper to how one of these two squads are going to square up against them this will be a best of five so this did get changed i think that everyone is probably going to be pretty excited about this because initially it was supposed to be a best of three but now we know that we are going to be guaranteed at least a control at the very least so that is going to be very exciting that's going to give you know a little bit more chances for teams that maybe are aren't too good at just hardcore or maybe just search you could rely on control we'll see if that'll end up happening but for now we are going to introduce our first team to the stage give it up for team army and team army today i mean they came into today 4-0 through the group stages they looked like they were a clear cut above. Unfortunately, you end up falling finally inside of that winner's final, but you have an opportunity now to make your revenge, win this series, get it done quick, and go back to the grand finals to take back on the Space Force. Yeah, these boys you know the number one seed. You're never gonna underestimate them. You know what they're capable of doing. I mean, they also brought things all the way back in that mat number four in that upper final as well. So you know the potential is there. The ice, the clutch, whatever you wanna call it. We take a look at the roster, Dexy. Flamber, Reacts, and Check. These boys all coming together looking to see if they can get that rematch. Yeah, I'm really excited to see Dexy again. He looked really, really good inside of that winner's finals. I think if the rest of the team can kind of get that back, the, that team camaraderie back, they can absolutely take it back to Air Force. But they got to go through a team first. They have to get through their opponents. Well, they've been able to beat them twice, once in the round robin, once today in the upper bracket. Can they do it here for our third time? We're going to give it up here to Marine Corps. And the Marine Corps, I mean, they come off of probably their best series of the entire weekend. They just ran through the Air Force. It was a 2-0, a dominant, Very dominant clean. faction. If they can replicate that here today, they absolutely can start to take maps off this Army team. Yeah, looking to get a big redemption win. Losing twice, obviously not going to feel great, but maybe third time is the charm. We will see. Cairo, Jay. Frizzy as well as Schnoopish looking to come away with what could be a very big dub, but you need all four players firing at all cylinders. You need all four players coming out here and dictating the pace because that's what Space Force did, right? They had a Absolutely. really good job of getting a foothold on the game early, putting Army on the back foot, and all of a sudden they're like, whoa, we're used to kind of dominating everyone through the round robin. Well, that's not exactly what's been happening, at least in their most recent match. This is what I'm really excited for. We get to see a okay. rematch come okay. through. And that is a very interesting map number one, Austin. <laughs> I'm big on it, right? Because Subbase was looking pretty solid, at least, uh, you know, for Space Force when they were playing up against Army. Army now saying, we're going to run this one back. We know what we did wrong. We're going to fix those mistakes. And we're going to see if we can try to get this win this time around. So I love the idea of this. I'm surprised Army lets it come through. I know what you're saying for sure. But this is an elimination game. 
just saw pressure. how good the Marines looked. Now we're gonna let them go to sub base and play around two. This could definitely get dangerous. It can, but I'm almost a little bit more worried about that high-rise search, right? That's what plagued them in the upper final. They did not look too good on it. Now, is that just because Revenge was in takeover mode, couldn't be killed, and he was running around dropping 15? I'm sure that was part of it, but on the other end of that, it did feel like they were a little bit disoriented, weren't connected in a lot of those plays, and they're saying again, hey, we're gonna run that back, we're gonna fix that, and they're trying to maybe extend that map pool, clean it up, heading into that winner's final, assuming they win this. Absolutely, and I mean, if we go the rest of the way through, we can just take a look. We guarantee that high-rise control that will come through at some point. If we go the full distance, Karachi hardpoint, then a six-star search and destroy. So a lot of opportunity here. If you are on the side of the Marines to come out, you saw them lose these first two maps. I almost feel like these are must-win maps for the Marines. You can't go down 2-0. I think once that happens, then you're gonna be kind of hit very hard with it. But if you come out and you take this first map away from them, one, you're gonna put army on the back foot and be like, whoa, what the heck? We beat these guys 2-0 twice in this tournament. So if you let them come out, you take a map one dominant here, that absolutely could get an army's head. It could get very interesting very quickly here, and it is very interesting because it's like a salty run back, or is it just like, man, we just like, we outplayed ourselves. Like, you know, you have to really ask yourself that question because you do go back to what was the difference maker on that sub base. It was the P4, right? It was sure. two times in a row. P4 was basically a full lock for Space Force. They were able to get themselves a full 60 seconds. I mean, that's 120. That's something that I think we critically are going to have to look at. Let's see how P4 goes for them because that was the difference maker. Absolutely. Like, like you said, 120 points is literally half the score that you need yeah. to get to close the game. You do that on two hills, you are going to walk away victorious. So yeah, we'll see if Army can make those changes, make those, uh, fix those little mistakes, all right? Because let's be honest, they were little mistakes. They didn't get blown out of the water. Of they came into that, they played their hearts out, and then they even brought it back in the second hard point, because <laughs> that hard point was not very good at first. They bring it all the way back, unfortunately end up losing in that last game, but this team has the, uh, has the capability to go into that grand finals and absolutely dominate still. I like that call. And once again, if you're just tuning in with us, we are now down to our final three. It has been a hell of a day of competition so far. Yesterday, we played our round robin. Today, we are playing out the double elimination bracket. And this loser final changed to a best of five. Whoever takes this goes up against Space Force in the grand final. It's going to get spicy. It's going to get exciting. We are now loading in once again. It is sub base hard point. We're kicking it off here in the lower final. Interested to see what side everybody starts on here as well, because we've seen a lot of teams so far today putting a ton of focus on flipping out those P2 spawns immediately, not really putting a ton of focus on that P1 hill. I think opposite though, if I'm the Marines and I'm on bad side and they are on the bad side, I would play for the hill off the rip here. Try to get them as much of a lead as possible, because like you called out earlier, when we saw Army on the back foot, that's when Army has looked at their weakest, because they are not used to being down in these games. That's right. Make them uncomfortable. We'll see if they can do it. Dubich looking for a nice little jump up top. Shows us a little bit of the parkour. Great first engagement, and will follow by a, a second early kill. So the Army not able to find any the successful engagements through their opening break, and that will be early time now coming to you from Marine Corps. That's a really good start here. That's exactly what you want. Marines start to build up this time. They even hold on to those P2 spawns as well. It's a great start for them. And you can see now Army, they're gonna put a lot of focus, winning these gunfights through the left-hand side of the map, trying to break their way into the top of P2 to really start to lock down some time here. Got to remember, Marine Corps also coming off of a, a very swift win, so these guys are probably feeling pretty hot, feeling pretty loose. And that could be a problem early for the Army. And so far on the scoreboard, it reflects exactly that. About a 20-point lead. Rotation of P2 being fought for. Two players for the Army. It looks like they're in a solid position. One more even going to back up. That will lock down the back spawns. Now they got a hole from the front. Yeah, Flamberg with a big win there to lock down that initial time. Now Czech is just going to sit inside the hill, wait for these players to push in, use those guardrails to full extension here and to be able to close this out. It's hard, though, because you've got all these players pushing in from all different angles at the moment, and the Marine Corps will find a break. They will find a very swift break here. So it's always that weird moment when you're 30 seconds in. How many members do we dedicate to this hit? Don't want to give up the rotation. Don't want to see back-to-back -back kills come through here for your opponents. So a very 
important moment coming on through. Dexy in the back will be shut down, and this is where you start to call for that rotation, so the army could be able to break in. Looking for kills, but it's going to be Snoopish able to find himself a nice little double with the help of Cryro, so shops looking solid, time looking good. Marines now up with a nice little lead, and Cryro might be able to earn himself a streak. I really love this play of the Marines, too. Not only do they get back into the hill, they start playing bump inside of the hill. You, you run in, you send your next player out. That way you can try to get as much pressure up the map into the next hill as possible. Unfortunately, this is a very hard one to break once yes. you get a full setup. So that's why you saw them trying to at least get that. Now as a team, you need to group up together though and hit this as a four-man unit. I like it. How will the teamwork play out? First kill, gonna be good. Brizzy's also in a good position to try to deal with this AR in the back. That's Dexy. Dexy gets a good look at the kill, but won't be able to finish off the elimination. Brizzy still playing the high ground. Decides now to drop down from above like Batman, but he won't have anyone in front of him. It's only one player in the back. Dexy's been playing his life back here for a while. Might have actually got to spawn back in. Shots are good for two. Looks a snap to his left. Goes to the pistol. Dexy puts him six feet under. Dexy doing as much as he can right now to hold on to this time. You had one player left there if you were the Marine Corps. Does not matter though, it's fine. You contested enough time there and made that scrappy enough that it's not gonna hinder you too much in this game. It's gonna be relatively a tie game here as we head over towards new and look at the side of the map. It is all Marine Corps set up right now. That's right, so far not gonna be able to win a successful rotation. They Players the in the back, too. the spawn in the back will be here. So, once again, we asked the Army, how are you going to break this hill? This was a huge problem the last time around in the upper final. This is where they lost just about every single second across this point. So will this change? First 15 seconds, uncontested. Check might have found somewhat of an open lane here through the back. He might have an opportunity to try to influence the back, and it looks like that first gunfight is good. Will be weak though, so needs to stay alive. Actually, not very weak at all. Still full health. I don't know how that comes through. Will end up losing that fight in the back. But unfortunately for them, the from the front, the Marine Corps has just still got the back spawns. They continue to spawn back there so they can continue to reinforce this hill very quickly. Uh, it doesn't seem to matter though because the army's just sitting in the hill collecting time. Yeah, Dexy's in a great spot. He's got cover fire up top three and, and that is at least a little bit better. You don't win the initial rotation, but they do a good job of contesting the second half of the hill, even gaining those last 20 seconds, give or take. And that means it's just 11 point differential here between these two squads. We head over to our final hill through the First set, first touch will be good for Marine Corps, and they also have some of this high ground in their control. One thing I love from the Marine Corps we're seeing here inside of this map is at least they're, they're getting broken, but at least they are out rotating them on every hill we've seen so far. Any hill that's important in terms of getting a good amount of time, we have seen the Marine Corps lock that time down early right. on to make this game scrappy. I like the call. We'll continue to watch for it. And Cryro trying to look for an angle onto the point, stunned up, locked down, big kill up top. Dexy going to be constantly battling these other ARs on the opposite end for this top snow position. He'll drop. Koopish now looking to take his same position. Won't find an angle on the hill. Good crossfire coming through for Flameberg. Those are really nice shots despite being across the map. He's able to weaken them up, but not enough to keep them completely off the point. Everything said and done. First set of hills. This one extremely close, but it's Marine Corps that's been able to come out on top by about 20 to 30. The Marine Corps are looking good. They, they absolutely come out with that little bit of a lead, but it's exactly what we said we needed them to do. Come out hot, play up to the full potential you can play up against and they're riding a high right now and they need to keep that high going and they're doing a great job here more time on p1 we do have a bit of a break starting to develop here from army they do push through the hill they'll find two at the very least but the spawns for new still in favor of, of the of team in red jay up top control will be able to make the hill go neutral teammates off screen also fighting for PT. You can see just how important this next hill will be, but there's still 30 seconds up for grabs on P1. So there's still a lot of chances to try to collect some time, build this up a little bit further. If you're Marine Corps and Flameberg is so focused on locking down this rotation, he is not gonna be helping any of his P1 time, but he does win that critical battle in the back. He does, and it's gonna give a lot of the bottom spawns now to Army as well. Only thing to look at though is that the Marine Corps are spawning in that back left position still. 11 seconds left to fight for here on P1. You'll keep it as scrappy as you can. But everybody right now should be putting their full focus towards P2. Flameberg will find that first. And you can see just going to completely fly off the map now. Try to win these gunfights. Snoopish is going to have a big job to do in the back. Jay's also denied his streak at five. Flameberg is the one to do it and might be able to earn one himself. He'll actually end up dropping. So no streaks in play as of just yet. Now a chance to break into the point. You've got one player in the back here. Keep your eye on check and how he decides to break this. They now have to deal with him and he can hold this position. Wait for his teammate to set up this break. They're now all swarming the hill, ready to jump in. 
And from the top, I mean, they look to find these kills, but everything right now going in the favor of the Marine Corps. It is so much easier to win these gunfights when you are constantly out rotating the other team. And Army has had a hard time here inside of this lower final of being able to rotate over the Marine Corps. And it is showing here in the score, almost a 90 point lead. This is getting very scary because you take a look at the map and sure you got a player top snow, it's Dexy, but he's got to hold a hell of a line to make sure a lot of players aren't flipping through. This is also a required hill. You need 40 plus seconds or this game gets completely out of hand because we're getting close to that 250 mark, Jesse. I think the positive side of your army at the very least, you knew that you held this hill for almost 60 seconds in the first set of rotations. It got a little scrappy, so maybe you lost a bit of time here and there, but this looks like a much stronger hold so far and they know that they can do it. They just need to keep it together execution name of the game now need a required hold push looking good in the back will not let anyone slip through Dexy through the front is able to find two that's exactly what you wanted to see if you're a fan of this army squad Snoopish though he's been able to get himself through will could try to contest tries to turn and burn as well just doesn't have enough health to fully take on that kill and that means that the army are looking solid for about 40 that's what we asked for Jesse some of it was neutral but they do enough what I actually like about this too is the spawns come through, yes, for Marine Corps, but there's only 15 seconds left. You kind of exactly. want them back there right now because now you look towards new, you can see player number one reacts, gonna completely set up in the back of sub, get ready to go. And now as the Marine Corps push through, you're gonna be ready for it. You can have an opportunity to hold this P4 hold, which has been their biggest hindrance on this map. From It's been a problem for them, without a doubt. And now a chance to finally lock down some real time themselves. This is the first time we've really seen army in this position where they've been here first but can they hold on and it's so much to clear out you're seeing the stuns the nades they're being used in the middle of the map just to try to get info on where some of these members are going to be positioned at through the back side the bottom half of the mini map big win for reacts dexy also to the back not going to lose that one cryo would have to do something pretty spectacular alongside his teammate up top three this is really the first time we're seeing the Marines in this game have to make a break, too. We have not seen it yet. Army, the first time they've had a massive setup here, and they are holding it to perfection at wow. the moment. Finally, a few kills will come through for the Marines. They're able to get back in, but it's just for scrap time again. But that scrap time is going to get them really close to winning this game. Yeah, it might not seem valuable, but in the grand scheme of things, it gets them very close to 250, and it starts to question, all right, do you need to play perfect hard point? Looking like a yes. Still a pretty big separation between both of our squads and on the attack will be Jay in the back trying to create an opening and might fight for the high ground. Still no one's able to get themselves on the point initially, but the power position is starting to be taken a hold of. Can Army bring this one back? It's going to be really up to getting these players out of the hill first and foremost. Jay is going to be a tough player to kill here in this position, but Flamebird will find two. That's going to open up an opportunity now. Army gets in, and they've got Marines pinched in the back. I love the discipline from the Army. They say, listen, you're going to hop on this hill first, or we're going to fight for high ground. They stay on the high ground. They wait for the push to come through. They clean up a nice little double. That allows them to win out in the trades. 20 seconds left. Army is still fighting in this sub base. Jesse, they are not out of it. This could get spicy. This could get really spicy here. Game clock is not going to come into a factor at all either. This is going to come down to the score and this game is getting crazy about a, it's gonna be about a 15 point lead here at the end of this we look to head over towards new you do have a lot of map position right now for the Marine Corps up on top but very easily able to find a break pedal to the metal now for the army as they continue to find great kills through the middle here. So the setup just hasn't necessarily looked the same as it did a little bit earlier on in the game for Marine Corps. And because of it, Army have brought this one all the way back, down by about 80 points, now just eight points, separating the two. P1 will be neutral. 40 seconds left on this, and both teams have the ability to secure and win it, and Marine supporting on the pressure now. Deep spawn out for the Army, though. They are far away from this hill and the marine corps have a fantastic setup right now oh you boy. will finally get a few kills so an opportunity to try to break frizzy such a huge moment for him trying to stay alive but they get him off in the nick of time is there anyone for the marines able to throw themselves on the point not yet stupid looking for a play won't be able to get it 15 seconds on p1 marines what are they going to do do they play for p1 do they rotate it is a call to full rotate to p2 absolutely it's a call to rotate to p2 you only need two seconds to close this game out Two seconds for the win. Can they get the job done? Can they bring it all the way back? The rotation looking solid. Everyone being taken down on the Marine Corps side. 10 seconds. That's what they need. Stupish up top. What can he find? The answer is absolutely nothing. But he's the one that has to go. He's the one that has to fly. And he never makes his move. Too little. Too late. Army, bring it back.
What a comeback there from the Army. Two seconds was all you need if you're the Marine Corps, but the break is in at the perfect time on P1, and finally they started to put some holds together. They could not break, and then finally when they do break, they couldn't hold onto a hill to save their lives. Finally, though, the back half of that game, it just felt like Army took a long time to wake up, and then once they did, they woke that sleeping drag, yeah. and that dragon came out hot. Wow. Well, we see what happens when they lock down a P4. All of a sudden, it was, the game it was changes. A, that's the game changer, eh? <laughs> I mean, that's got to be the game changer, right? They're able to bring that one back. That's where they start to make the comeback. They had a nice little break and a nice transition towards P5. I, I love the discipline and the patience that came out. They knew that they're the ones that were under the gun. We're down by 50 points, but we're not going to just jump on the hill and throw our lives away. We're going to let you make that first move. We're going to stay on the high ground, and we're going to deal with you. It was very, very well executed, and I mean, you got to give uh, it just a big props to a team like this that's down in a moment like that. Yeah, absolutely. And I mean, you got to think, too, they're coming off of a loss. They also just have to sit and wait through an entire series. They're coming in a little bit cold. It's not feeling great. You start down like 90 points at one point in that game. Yeah. To bring that one back, that's got to be a big blow to the Marine Corps for sure. So that's something that we really got to take a look at. I also really just want to point out, too, I love your call on the uh, when they were able to push through on that P5 in the second set of rotations to be able to lock down that last little bit of time. That absolutely made the big difference because once you got that team spawned up in the bag, it is just free kills at that exactly. point. Exactly. They, they were able to rotate that to P1 as well, not get the time that they were looking for, but keep it just close enough that they were able to close that game out. Crazy stuff. Wow. Two points separating the two. And now, well, our question is answered. Hey, can they bounce back on a map like Subbase? It wasn't looking like that was going to be a possibility up until maybe the last two, two or three minutes or so, but they do get the job done there. And that one's a bit of a heartbreaker on the other end, right? Because you're almost thinking in the back of your heads, oh, we're up by 80, we're over 200 points. Like, surely we got this one locked up. But high rise, search and destroy. This was also problem sum here it was. for the Army. They were up. Or, or I think they, what, got one round, right? It was 6-1, I want to say. Yeah. So they did not have a whole lot of favor. Again, it was maybe just down to one player who was just running through Revenge them. was going <laughs> kind of crazy. <laughs> Revenge was just, he was just not scared of anything, man. He was sprinting at them. So was that just one player? Was that bad team play? Were they not trading? Chalk it up to whatever you want. What we do know is that they did struggle. They did struggle. And honestly, if I'm Marines and I'm coming into this, Sure, you know what, we lost that last game, we threw it away. It is what it is. You just need to completely forget about it. Look at the way that Army was able to lose inside of that last series on this map mode combination and try to replicate that the best of your abilities. Yes, you're not going to have somebody who's going to drop 16, 17 kills, like whatever Revenge killed with Hopefully. in that game. <laughs> For their sake. <laughs> but, I mean, if you can at least find a way to, to try to get a couple kills, try to maybe even run some of the routes yeah. if you saw Revenge play, because you weren't playing at the same time. You had an opportunity to watch the game. If you can find a way to replicate some of that, it could definitely be problemsome for the Army. Yeah, it can be. And I feel like when we do talk about, you know, high-rise search and destroy, a lot of it is like the info that you're going to get at the, the start of the round, but you really do almost need either your ARs to create those first blood advantages when you're on the attack, or you need to help your subs at least get to that for forward sure. position to create the space for you. Clear out B, get that bomb down, because it is difficult, I feel like, to play retake on a map like this with all the high ground outer ledges <laughs> i mean man we're playing like a you know a whole park parkour map here so it can be very difficult to, to try to find some of these players when the bomb goes down 100 percent retakes are hard even harder in a man advantage or a man disadvantage you need to make sure on this map especially first bloods are so key to winning out on these rounds because it's such a close map you can trade out absolutely anything so in those situations you need to need to need to make sure you are trading out efficiently otherwise you are going to throw away rounds that should be round wins agreed well we'll keep our eye on that as uh, we get ready to load into this one very very quickly but man army after bringing that one all the way back out of the depths and closing it up by two seconds. One, you're feeling great. You're feeling electric, saying, Woof, well, we won the sub base, thank goodness. Because thank God. if you lose the sub base and you go into another map that you just got stomped on, well, maybe their mind's uh, at a different place. So, not the case. Don't have to worry about that ultimate universe. It is a chance to go up 2 0 here, coming into high rise, search and destroy. A big one, though, on the other end. How composed are Marine Corps after knowing that they had that one locked up? It's going to be you important know, to come out here. Ways. Win round number one, I think, for the Marine Corps. Just to kind of set that pace like, hey, yeah, you guys beat us, you got us once. It's good. We just need to make sure we're coming back, though, not allowing that to affect us overall with our mentality here. They will grab the bomb off the start again, just leaving it in the site. I don't know what's up with the Marine Corps doing that. It's, too, it's, it's like a rank play special, right? It's like, I'm not grabbing that thing. It's like, I'm allergic to it. <laughs>
Snoop's taking his time, doesn't want to fall off the map. And he'll come all the way around the back. Just have to be worried about this mantle. Remember, this is a pretty big sound cue. You lift yourself all the way up, could be hurt potentially. But he is in a good spot, especially if his teammates are able to give him a little information. Doesn't seem like there's very many people around him either. He might even get hurt if he does this hop up here. And could end up catching the player off guard that is inside of the spawn right now. That's player seven, it's Dexy. But Dexy's been off fire today too. So maybe not the player you want to take a one-on-one -on -one with right away. <laughs> could be scary. And well, there is that first one-on-one. -on -one. Goes the way of reacts. Player pushed up on B. He still got one in the back. Finally, that play does work out. So they have to worry about one player being behind them. Oh, that's tough. Wasn't ready for it. Reacts backs all the way up, and he's good for his second here in round one. It's just too bad he couldn't have made that play like two seconds sooner, because then it would have forced the arrows to kind of turn around. Maybe they don't even end up finding that first blood. Now you find yourself, though, stuck here. Two versus two. Bomb is in a pretty rough position right now, though. You need to go back, wrap and grab that bomb so you can at least try to get it to one of these sites, but you don't have a lot of time to work with. Oh, no time, right? Trying to use every single second on the clock, but it still all comes down to Flameberg. Will they be able to get that over to B in time? I don't, I don't think, think that I don't happened, think and it doesn't matter. Flameberg, as long as he stays alive, Ooh. he's good, and Ooh. he does stay alive, but it comes down to the wire. <laughs> Flameberg just made my heart drop to the floor. <laughs> I thought for sure that they were about to fall there, but they get the job done. Obviously, he has no idea that he didn't get the timing correctly, so he has to take that first gunfight. Wins it very cleanly as well, gets away. But wow, that was there was a very, very small opportunity there for them to lose out on a round where they absolutely deserve to win that round. Yeah. Quite literally doesn't get closer than that. No. You tuck yourself behind cover, and you're just praying for the cow guys. But it works out, and the Army do in fact grab that first round. We said the importance of Marine Corps really starting this one off hot and just grabbing that first one after the way they just lost. So now you really start to ask for it here in round two to be sure. What will we get on the attack? Coming through for the Army. Down low will be Reacts. He had a great two-piece there in round one, looking to try to turn it into a third. Well, oh, I think he got underneath without being seen as well. So first blood and now an opportunity to make some noise here inside. Oh, they'll lose out on a gunfight, but Reacts should be there to find a trade. Yeah, Reacts does make his move right away. Doesn't want to sprint out there. Does have a player top heli that can scout out over the map. But this push is going to come all the way through. Flameberg was just simply not expecting that, especially with a submachine gun of all things. But will React snap? Oh, he will not. Another big double up. And now the army going to lose that man advantage all down to one. Dexy looking for the 1v2. That flank ends up working out to nothing. It was a good opportunity, too, because you get into a really good spot, but unfortunately don't find anything. Dexy with a big one-on-one. -on -one. I'm surprised we don't see the second player fly out and chow that, but Dexy going to be allowed to keep his life. Has no idea that player's on the left, though. Yeah, this could get interesting. He's going to actually wrap around the left side of him. So this cross that's being watched right now inside the site, not going to be there, but potential sound cue. Either way, it works out here for them, and Marine Corps get to take a breath. They are here. They're on the board. They tie us up. It would have been bad if they threw two rounds in a row away like that. that Absolutely. <laughs> it definitely would have hurt the momentum quite a lot. Snoop is just having a great start to this game as well yeah, here so far. Good. Really, really good stuff. You know, just need to find a way to keep that up here for your team. I, I hate to use the backpack phrase, but if you got to throw some players in the backpack, right now is the time to do so. You are backs up against the wall, lower bracket. You just got came back on in round number one, and so this just needs needs to be a map win here for the Marine Corps. Well, five and one. Stoops looking pretty solid here thus far. Back on the attack. Opening engagements taking place. Remember, trophy systems are now also in play, so hard to find as much value with those stuns and with those grenades. Jack will be responsible for watching down low in pit, and it is a very passive setup here. Looking for top heli, just looking for information, but they do get picked off. They're going to lose one early. Maybe a little bit too passive. You don't have an opportunity now to really fly out. They did win the last round 3v4, but they had a lot more map control. Really not a ton of map control here at all for the side of the Marine Corps at all. And they'll end up falling with a second. That player top will go down, and Flameberg, that's a big that's a big one on one to win. Able to get one back. Stoops has been great. I would love to see him just play for this streak. This is a pretty hard situation to work yourself out of. A little bait and switch would be great out of his teammate. Does want to maybe make a play down low. Check has got that on lock. Not going to be able to push through and flank. 30 seconds now on the clock. Time becoming a huge factor. The bomb will be picked up. It is Stoops that's going to grab it. And will they make their way over to A? And can they even get this bomb down? Oh, I would hate to see him lose a streak just trying to get this bomb down. Now you're in a 1v3. I honestly think you play for the streak. I, d I don't think you go for a bomb plant here, but I think Snoop does not care. Bomb is going to go down here. If you can get the bomb down and at least get one of these kills because you're going to force them to come to you, there's a big opportunity to get that streak still. I like it. 
I think Snoop's got other plans. He's like, guys, I'm gonna try to close this round. And oh my goodness, Reacts just gets blown away. Snoop's I think is gonna drop here. There's two members and they do trade him out, but what a snapper. We didn't see that from his POV, but it looked just as bad from the other. I can't even blame the observers. I fully thought he was losing that gunfight there too. at that spot. Absolutely. And he just blew him out of the water. That was insane. And even bigger than just getting the kill, you get the kill streak on top of it, and that can be massive on a map like High Rise. So much open space, you can get a ton of map information just yes. off of that streak alone. It's almost a guaranteed round win if used efficiently. I would 100% agree. So that is now a little bit of late game insurance. Pull that out whenever you see fit. But now Stoop just needs a little bit of help. Frizzy J got themselves a couple kills on the board. Cryo, one of the key players that we talked about coming in towards today, has not found a whole lot of value just yet. Propane blowing up. Needs over the top. Oh, you just took out your key player who's been trying. Not what you want to see. And then right away, you're in a 4v2. Yeah, that's really tough. Uh, I mean, what more can you do? Kyro will propane. also end up going down to propane. This is uh, just, uh, you just need to forget completely about this round. 1v4. Frizzy is in a tough spot. I think Frizzy just jumped off the map. I wouldn't have been surprised. That is just, that is death by propane that round. Yeah, propane does in fact go boom, if you didn't know. <laughs> now you do. <laughs> That's a tough one, though. Your key player who's been dropping bombs is just completely eliminated from the round, doesn't even have a chance. But you can see what they were trying to do. They're trying to fly to blue. They're trying to get a lot of early control, see if they can maybe put the aggressive play and work it into a bomb plan. Just does not work out there for them. So one round so far for Marine Corps, Army, stacking it up. We'll look to try to build off of it and make it four. It was crazy, too, because it looked like the initial nades in that round were good off the rip, but unfortunately, they just went the other way, and it, it really flipped them on its head. I'm not sure what we're seeing off He's the start here. I think Snoopish is about to invest this, but doesn't have... Does he want it? He has the bomb as well. Well, look at his teammates. His teammates are actually frying on the map, so this is going to be good info, but Flameberg is going to take down Frizzy, and does this find anything? No, can't weave it through the window, so it's only information, but it was a 3v2 up until that point in time but didn't want this one to get too out of hand. So decides to invest it. 2v2 we go, lots of time to play with, and now we'll see if they can maybe work towards the site. Well, I'm not sure if you got spotted through middle of the map there as well. Dexy had an opportunity to see that. We obviously didn't see from his POV. And now Marines need to find an opening on the map. It looks like the opportunity is going to be towards B, but Flameberg uh -oh. up on top of this propane tank again. We'll find one through bottom, and it's now one versus two yet again here for Snoopish. Oh, and I think there were shots actually taken over at Snoopish as well, who was Trying to push through, look for a very much needed trade. He's gonna rewrap every single time. We see these squads using every single second. A little bit scary there, but the finishing touch is in, but not the read in the back. They completely flip the map on its head. They catch him off guard, and that was also the investment of the streak. Finds no value. Yeah, I mean, I'm gonna be honest, I don't like this player with the streak taking the bomb as well. I really dislike that play. I think that the best way to use a streak, especially on a map like this, when you have that cruise missile coming down, yes, you get a ton of information, but you also force a lot of the players inside. It gives an opportunity to push up and get a bomb plant down for free. But if you're holding that bomb in the back of your spawn, you completely cannot do that. You kind of trap yourself and unfortunately end up losing out on the round, get no value from the streak. And Cryo, I mean, we need him to come out and start shooting, really start badly. putting something on the board here. He is their star player, you know, framed up by his teammates and his coach, but Stoops is now out of the picture, so now you're calling for someone else here on this squad to have to come up big. I gotta talk about Flameberg right now. 10 and two, having a fantastic map right oh now, and another first blood, and now will use the streak himself going to see if he can maybe bully this team off of the map. Has an idea that there kill. is a player inside elevator, but the, the I don't know how that doesn't find a kill, but he, he stays alive somehow. I don't know either. Trophy systems no longer EOD block the goes cruise crazy. missile, but yeah, <laughs> whatever he's got, I want. Flameberg's also going to end up dropping as well. So Jay able to get one back, and now it feels like there was a big opportunity to try to pull this one out and come out clutch, but it's trades back and forth. Reacts gets Jay. Coming down to the wire again on the clock, 30 seconds left. I think Frizzy might have just spotted them out too. A little jump over the top, maybe got some information in that spot. Bomb is still down as well, that's a great call. They need to wrap, pick that bomb up so they can get it down. That's the objective. You only got 19 seconds, it's very similar to round one. Oh, Cryo, just trying to lock this player down. He will find it, so finally able to get his first on the board, turns it into a second. Only opportunity that you have here if you react is just to hope I can get this bomb down and exit safely. 
Who will get out, but Cairo should be able to close this one out here. Lots of damage done. If not, Cairo reacts from the other side, will jump on him. Able to find that, and yeah, one player left here, left alive. 1v1. Reacts has got to go searching. Where is he playing? Or does he just work the clock? Checks the bomb. Bomb is good. 20 seconds now left. He's playing it like he wants the gunfight. Kind of slightly tucked away here. Do these elevators get checked? Yes, they do! But the 1v1 is good! There is no clutch up, and a big 1v2 comes through. That's massive. And I feel so bad for Cairo right there, too. I mean, you win that gunfight there. Look like After starting out 0 5, you could have gotten a 3 and 5. Absolutely could have turned that round on its head and maybe built some momentum, not just for yourself, but for your team as well, to be able to come back in that. Unfortunately, ends up falling there. And this is getting a little bit to that point of the map where it's scary. You're down 5-1. It needs to be pretty much just perfect search and destroy from this point on. And I have not seen enough in the Marine Corps to think that they're about to bring this one back. It's a tall ask, as we've been saying most of today. But yes, five rounds in a row. Just have to start with the first. That's about the only thing you can really say to your teammates at this point in time. And well, they're going to move back over to this A site. And there's a great first blood. Farrow at least has been coming online a little bit more. He's been great in these opening engagements. He's getting himself back in the game. That's what his teammates need. He's definitely become more active here in the last couple rounds of the search and destroy. Uh, and they'll be able to find a, tra uh, a second here inside of the round as well. This is looking good for the Marine Corps. They are they're able to find a pick, able to find a second, but Czech will be able to trade it out. 2v3 makes it at least doable if you're an army. Czech going to start to get himself into a better position to try to actually watch over and defend this B site. It is still a man disadvantage right now for army. There's 40 seconds left, and there's a lot of opportunities to find one slip away. So this is going to be a really big push. Need to find trades cleanly, if not the entry, clean into the site. Oh, Dexy with a big kill. The check oh able to find boy. another one as well. This is going from bad to worse right now. It's all up to Jay. No trades going to come through. Jay asked to be the hero for his team. Oh, he destroys Dexy in a huge 1v1. But it always comes down to the clock, doesn't it? 14 seconds left. Jay, oh, he's on top. Will he be able to track him down? Waiting for the reach out. It's not going to be there. Through the outside. He's been finessed. Check has done enough. Four seconds on the clock. Jay has no idea where he went. And Check says, see you later. Thanks for map number two. That is back-to-back -back maps, it feels like, that you just get kind of screwed over if you're the side of the Marine Corps. Yeah, you were down 5-1, but that's still a round that definitely should have been won there. Unfortunately, you just make a small mistake, don't get the job done, and Army, if you make mistakes against this Army team, they will take full advantage of it. They will punish. Man, that's a tough one, because like you said, two points in the hard point, that's the differential. It feels like that one was, was theirs. Like, that was theirs to lose. Yeah. They lose it. You go into a high-rise search destroy where you just saw this team lose to that exact score line, and they end up dropping that one as well. I mean, you saw a lot of great plays come through there for Schnoops, but uh, just, just not enough from everyone else. It was a slow start for three of those four members. So, yeah. tough seeds. 2-0. We have not seen any real comebacks, any reverse sweeps, but hey, this is the first time for everything. Maybe it could happen. We will be heading to a control right after this break.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to ForceCon 2024. We are getting into the thick of it. Very well could be our last map here in the lower final. If you are just tuning in with us, right now it is 2-0 up for Army. They made an incredible comeback in the map number one, which was a 250 to 248 banger. And then we went to the high rise where things were a lot cleaner, a lot more swift, where they were able to get the job done in 6-1 fashion. And now they have a chance to close on high rise control. And this is where it gets really tough, right? Because you had a good opportunity in both those maps i'll say if, if you're if you're the marines you had a good opportunity to win i mean obviously the 250 248 it goes without being said you were up by yeah. 90 points that map you should have won that map uh, and then you look at the second map there yeah you got 6-1 but there's a lot of opportunities to win out a few of those rounds where tiny mistakes cost you the round eventually ends up snowballing out of control so it's an unfortunate spot to be in you're not out of it yet you do have a control coming up we did see the side of army lose a control earlier on in their first best of five here today that's right they did lose that first to five. You have to imagine they're feeling a little bit better at least this go around, but it's not over until it's over. The high res control was very defensively favored when we were watching it over in that uh, in that winner's final. It was very back and forth, and there was like those last second heroics almost every single time. So will we get that this time around? And will we also get some of these members on Marine Corps stepping up? Can't just be one guy, like we framed up For coming sure. into the matchup, but that's all we've been getting here so far. Can they all come up collectively and try to get the job done? That's the requirement. Requirement. This might sound a little weird, but I actually think the team with the first offense here has the best chance of winning an offense right now because how many trophies we're running on the map right now, a lot of the time when you're opening up things on high-rise control, you're using your utility to find that. A lot harder to do that because they're running so many trophies on the map right now Agreed. that it's really, really hard to open things up. So if you can find a few of those points here and get maybe a round win on the board, this is a good opportunity for the Marine Corps because they don't have those trophies yet. I like it. Well, we'll get right to the long-range gun battles here with the ARs, looking to try to solidify some of this map control. Flameberg, this is pretty much his favorite position. You'll always see him in and around the propane or on this B lane, so something to keep in mind here if you're Marine Corps. Schnapps looking to try to make something happen through the left side, looking for that extended trade where Flameberg's going to take now some of the high ground and the scaffolding, <laughs> but oh, he gets smoked, and that's a big key gunfight if they're on A. Yep, Schnapps able to walk away with that one that's massive. Opens up an opportunity now in that B lane to get to be able to move on to the site. Unfortunately, I don't think anybody was ready wow. for Reacts to come from the bottom. Oh, boy. Able to find three in a row, Reacts just completely just flipped this round on its head for the Marine Corps. Now you're trapped in the back of your spawn. You've got to find some kills to get out. Yeah, this is what we call the blender, folks. And uh, right now, Marine Corps were in it. One player is able to get through. And now there's a chance to try to draw some of the defenders back. Another big key gunfight. Schnapps putting it together. Finally cleaned up, but he's done enough to at least push forward. His teammates in court are just unable to follow in his footsteps. It's crazy because we were watching and we were ready for Cryo to come in and fry today. But it's really been Schnapps in the series who's been going the above and beyond the next mile here for the Marine Corps. And he's been the player who we need some people to come and help him out. He keeps finding the openings, just has no backup after. And you're starting to hear the deads in the background as well, so everybody knows the intensity increasing. Challenge comes through, Schnapps again, trying to be the playmaker. Needs some collective traits to come through here from his teammates, and Chrissy just waiting for a chow. Will one come his way? No, it does, but Flamberg able to win out on it. 63 now for one of the key ARs on the side of Army. The clock is going to become an issue here. You need to find three ticks of progression on one of the zones to give yourself that extra minute on the clock. But you'll finally hop on. You'll start to at least stop the time here. But as soon as you get on, it's basically Flamebird's wow. world. You're just living it. He'll find two more here. And the clock is windling down. Only five seconds left. Yeah, you can see the differential in lives as well. 14 playing up against nine. Chance to try to lock in a couple of extra ticks, potentially, and oh no, we've seen this before, haven't we? It's always the last couple seconds where things just happen to come online, happen to come alive here, and this looks like it might be the security of the B zone. They might just be able to get themselves that extra minute, and those kills as well, you were talking about a differential. Those kills really just swayed that in a different favor. The contest comes through last second, and they're able wow. to get on, and that's going to close that round out. Wow, I thought for sure we were getting another minute. I think they did too. Jay had actually pushed all the way underground. He was ready to flank and come behind the, the play that was going to come out right after this. But all of his teammates dropped. The trades are just so clean. And Flameberg, I mean, 10 kills through round number one. That is one third of the total lives that you even have through a round. Yeah, Flameberg. Exceptional. Really, really well there. I actually love that play by the Army, by the way. I mean, I think that they just kind of played that so passively that the Marine Corps really thought, like they you said, he rushed yeah. it through. They thought they just chalked the time. 
they hit it with just just in the nick of time. They get on that point, they stop them, and they're able to stop that clock, and it really caught them off guard. So great job by them, and we'll see if Flameberg here reacts and keep it up because they are on fire right now for this army team. This is the guy to shut down. Need your ARs to really step up in a big way. Oh man, first gunfight, clean as ever. Doesn't even take any damage. Second gunfight, on the way, no problem. Doesn't even take any damage. Flameberg up to four in a row. First tick, locked in. And this, this can get really dangerous. You can get to a very no. powerful position. Ends up losing out on that gunfight there. That's a massive one-on-one -on -one win there by Jay to be able to open things up. We'll find a nade kill too. Jay doing everything he can right now, and then we'll get taken out by the propane. At least some of the trades are there, so there's still numbers in and around the point. Reacts brings the fight to one of the defenders, almost turns and burns, but the trades will be successful here. Now, Flamebird, as he pushes through the underground, able to find a nice flank route, he can start to play for spawn kills. Yeah, right back in the same position we saw him in this spot earlier on, ended up losing out on the gunfight. This time, we'll at least find one, stuns up a second, so gets the information. Oh, and the spawns are coming through the bottom. Wow. This is actually a really good opportunity for Marine Corps to be able to get past him for free and to try to stop this push from coming through. Flameberg is a problem, and if you don't find a solution, you're going to start to see a lot of zones, a lot of ticks go over for free. And this progress has been slowly accumulating on this B-point. Two players will be stacking it for that second tick. Dexy also here to try to play assistance, but he is actually going to let one slip by. And I think that might have been enough to at least clear the point out. Flameberg, though, back on the map, ready to pounce. What a snapper that is. He'll find two. That's four down, and that should be the B zone. B zone comes through. That is completely successful. And they only need one tick at A as well. Flameberg is going crazy right now on five in a row, looking to continue this streak. Flameberg is shooting man he is just snapping not missing bullets and he is up to 20 kills he is still averaging one third of the total kills that you have available to your team in a round 20 and 7 putting up incredible damage doing it all he's playing like he's got a, a rival in his hand man <laughs> he he's just really sprinting is. around not afraid to take gunfights and he's doing it as clean as ever that is an ar i need on my team if you're running around with an <laughs> ar like like that is an smg please come play rank me. i need over some me. help like, <laughs> i absolutely need the help but flameberg yeah like you said absolutely tearing it up I, it reacts even at 10 in that first round as well only ended up getting four there but did not need to do any more when you've got flameberg running around with like a menace at the moment we obviously stay on with him here looking to possibly find that streak here not able to find the kill so it won't go to him but i mean the dominance right off the rip of this round though has been very good for the side army yeah the only trade is dexy taking himself out but my goodness flameberg still wants to try to earn that final kill wants to get himself that cruise missile you got a cruise missile man it feels like you got this one locked up you got the insurance to drop it down on the zone and get them off of it but this is as clean as ever look at the kills already creating a nice little solid four life advantage Flameberg won't be able to extend it, but I believe the streak was earned, so that is now in their back pocket. Yeah, and that's going to be that little bit of insurance, right? If you end up getting into a situation where they hop onto a hill and they've got a good amount of time or you get somebody in your spawn getting really annoying, that is where you can use that and absolutely bring yourself back into any situation. The kills are going all in the favor of Army right now. Six kill lead. It is getting a little bit ugly here. Flamberg pushing all the way through, taking away more space. You're hearing the deads just constantly on stage right now. These guys are feeling good, but there's maybe a small moment to try to take advantage of this push. Flameberg says, all right, it's time to call him the streak. Let's get him off the zone, try to get my teammates out of their spot. What does the Cruise find as he drops it in on B? Does not find anything. So both streaks that have been used have not been able to find value, and B has just about been secured. Yeah, have not been able to find anything. B does get contested, though. Check will hop on, but not able to finish it off. So you still have an opportunity now to close out B. At the same time, progression going in towards A as well. Marine, with how bad this round started, have really given themselves a good opportunity to win it. Schnapps does find that incredible important trade and that looks like that will be enough to secure the zone so you got some time to play with they've also been able to bring the lives back to a pretty even state so a good moment here and you just need one solid push and you can try to lock in that final tick i believe that's all that's needed there on a yeah i, I think they got the second tick yeah uh, oh, they oh actually they did not they're gonna clear it out now that's crazy they won't get that second tick there on a you're kind of trapped in the back of your spawn here too you have a minute, you need to really take your time here and make one big push together, otherwise you are just gonna keep running into just players set up on head glitches and it's not gonna be a fun time. Well, they do find it a pretty swift trade onto Flameberg. That feels like the biggest step in the mall oftentimes. 50 seconds on the clock. The pressure starting to set in here on Marine Corps as they only have 
Another 40 seconds potentially left here in this tournament. Dexy trying to get a forward position, punished for the play. Flameberg doesn't want to take the initial challenge. He's got a lot of players in front of him, but you have check on point. He has the chance to really stop this play down low in blue. He might not even have to. <laughs> the, the teammates, they come through, they find the kills. You've got 24 seconds left and four lives. This is not looking good right now for the Marine Corps. Your game and your tournament is on the line. You need to find a way to make it work. My goodness, Jack. He is the front line. You got to get through him, and they do. A chance now on the zone. A 1v1 needed, and Dexy will find the final kill. That will do it. Army take a swift 3 0, and they advance to the rematch in the grand final. It kind of felt inevitable. After that 250 to 248 comeback, it really, really felt like everything was going to go the way of the army, especially you go into that search after two, you win that six to one, you take advantage of every little mistake, and they did the same thing here inside of the control. That was a very, very tightly contested control, but a 3-0 because you just take advantage of every little thing you're given. You give that team army, you give them a, an inch, you they will take it a, a mile, that's for sure. Yeah, it feels like this series, watching the map one from the rest of them, Totally different, right? For you sure. could see the momentum change that ended up coming through. It's like a gut punch. It's, it, it is a gut punch, right? You're like, man, like, we should have had that one. Even at the end of it, too, you know, there's a small glimpse of one player that had a chance to even contest, give it one last go, <laughs> didn't come to life. And that is one that can certainly sting, stick with you. Whether or not that was a factor, either way, it's really one of those defining moments you feel like in this 3-0 that could have been completely different here through this best of five. I think one positive I want to take a look at, at least, though, for the Marines is you did not get, obviously get to play with your with your fourth yesterday, so that obviously is going to be a hindrance coming into today, just a little bit, right? Because sure you get the reps with them, but reps on land are very different than reps not on land, right? So that's always going to be one of the differences. But then also, I mean, you come in today, Cryro doesn't even play, like he has to play his first match here today. Going to start a little bit slow. That was against Army earlier on. We saw here after having a few, it was great. It was great. Well, that is going to do it here for this series, but we do have Spider Tip standing by on main stage. Well, guys, it looks like we're potentially getting a rematch for our grand finals. I'm live here alongside Reacts. Congratulations. What's going through your mind knowing that that's in store for you? We want it more. We, all we do is want it more. We're going to go back out and play our game. We're going to 3-0 and we, we're going to call it quits. We're going to go home. We're going to 3-0, call it quits. Well, now, here's the deal. It just got amped up to a best of seven. So talk to me through a grand finals at the best of seven now. they gotta, gotta, You're in it for the long haul. Hey, we got a better map pool. I mean, they can hire all the pro coaches they want, but we're just better players, so we got this shit. They're just better players. Look, I'm sensing this rivalry. It's deepening. Everyone was kind of talking some smack after that. So knowing that you and Flameberg, I I'm going to call you guys like the dynamic duo. How are you guys working together? What's that chemistry look like? Because it's showing on stream. We've been practicing together for a month and a half. Like, uh, we, the comms are flowing. We know exactly where we should, are supposed to be in you know, we're just pulling through. We're doing exactly what we're supposed to do, what we've been training to do, and uh, it's showing. It is, it's 100% showing. Everyone here at Forest Kata is definitely vibing with it. So are there any other persons you want to thank? Shout outs at home? Uh, yeah, shout out my two dogs. Those are, but they're, they're really cool. Uh, I have a girlfriend, so shout out her. Um, and then everyone that's supporting on stream, I know my boys T-Mag, people from the 82nd Airborne Division, people from work, everybody that's watching. I, and even if you're not in the Army, anyone in the stream, I appreciate you guys, because this is what uh, you guys watching and supporting us gives us more uh, funding to do this again. So I appreciate every single one of you. What kind of dogs do you have? Uh, I have a lab in pit mix, and then I have a purebred golden retriever. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much, Reacts, for joining me. It's been a good time. I appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Well, that's not all the action in store for you. We do still have that grand finals rematch coming on up right after this break.
I would describe Gold Star Gamers as someone who didn't know what it was. I'd say it's a, like an organization that helps people who have lost their parent to the military and help them cope with that through video games. Gold Star Gamers means I have a place to connect with other kids that have gone through the same thing and we all get to have fun. I would describe Gold Star Gamers as a 
caring, warm community of people that look after you and will basically give you a big giant hug. More than two million American children have had a parent deployed, and the main connection a lot of those kids have had with their family is often through gaming. When a child loses a parent, it can often cause all of their world to change. And the family can make a big sacrifice and to participate in Gold Star Gamer as a kid. It helps them find hope, healing, and a sense of community, not only in esports, but in the world beyond. Thanks to GSG and within eSports as a whole, they offer mentorship programs to allow them to build a sense of community through training camps to boost their in-game experiences and also through competitions to show off their new skills. And we are joined here alongside of our GSG children and I'm so happy for them to get to experience ForceCon and cheer on our US Armed Forces branches. So give it up to them in the crowd here and give them the applause they deserve. Who knows, y'all? I can see you guys on the stage eventually or competing in one of your favorite titles, and I hope that does come true for you. And guys, we still have so much action. I know I've got two casters in the booth. I have two teams up here on the stage ready for a grand finals best of seven rematch. Let's get into it. Thank you so much, Spider Tiff. Man, I'm excited. I'm Visions, that's Seymour. We are lined up for yet another incredible grand final. We just got to see how close these two teams played each oh, other, yeah. and now we get to get them in the ring once again. Army gets knocked down, but you know these players, they pick themselves up by the bootstraps, they get right back into the grand finals. It's time for a good old grudge match, a rematch in the grand finals. And Visions, we've kicked things up the notch a little bit. We've moved things from a best of five into a best of six seven now folks and that just means we get more call of duty yeah i can't complain right a little bit more call of duty some more map changes up the veto system quite a bit oh yeah and i mean well we saw how close it was the first time around why not see how different it could be with a bit of a different set but we take a look at how our day has come together day number one was all about the round robins that's what created our seeding coming into it but it's been a lot of maybe sweeps coming in here and there but if there's been one that has been incredible it has been these two squads army space force three two and space force got loud they popped off in that final map and they've been sitting waiting and prepping for army for this grand final it was all revenge at the end just going absolutely sure crazy the only game the only series that isn't a sweep were these two in the winner's final and that just means it's teeing us up for what could be a long long grand final for the for these matches one team to walk away a champion and hoist that trophy austin i'm so excited to see these two heads ahead man i'm amped this has been you know an incredible day so far we've got a lot of great call of duty obviously we've had you know a lot of great messages throughout the, today as well you know sharing just a lot of love with this community as well as everyone here involved. It's been incredible, but they're competitors at the end of the day. They These are. guys want it. Only one winner is going to be able to come away with it, so we'll see who's going to be able to do it. But man, I am very, very amped up. Yeah, it seems like it's just time for us to introduce our teams, Austin. So why don't you kick things off for us? Absolutely. We got to introduce team number one. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Space Force. Man, the way that these guys have battled through this bracket, the adversity that has been shown, the changes and adaptations for Space Force to move to Forest God, show up, take down the Air Force in the round robin, do it again in the bracket, and then take down the winners of our defending champions in the army to move into the grand finals and have the chance of that trophy. Absolutely, give it up for Hale. Kabase, Revenge, and Atama. These guys have been absolutely elite so far on the day. They've been bringing it. Everyone has stepped up at a different moment, and that's what you love to see from an entire squad. Yeah, you love it. And I think for the Space Force team, the one thing they're going to be focusing on is doing it again. Can they beat the Army not once, but twice on the main stage for that trophy? I'm sure for a lot of these, it would be a great memory to go home with. 
It would be incredible, but now we have to introduce their opponents. It's the rematch. They're looking for redemption. Give it up for the Army. They're looking for redemption, but they're also looking for another title. The defending champions of ForceCon here, matching up versus the Space Force. They beat them in the round robin. They played them in the winner's final. It's a close one. It's definitely not a blowout, but now they're matching up against them, looking for their revenge to be champions once again. Absolutely. And well, ladies and gentlemen, please give a round of applause to both of these squads as they gear up for this grand final. Players now can take their seats and get ready to get locked in for this grand final. Once again, have to reiterate, best of seven for oh, yeah. us, Colin. This is going to be a little bit different from what we're used to. And as you take a look at both of these rosters, who's really standing out for you coming into this grand final? I mean, you have to look at the side of Space Force and it, right away, revenge comes off your mind. The way that he played that game five, double digits, 14, almost 15 kills to put it away in a games five setting. I'm sure that he is really uh, aggravated these army players. On the other side, Flameberg. I think Flameberg had a fantastic series back in that winner's final, always being that kind of player that stood out for the army, whether it was the respawns, the search and destroys, Flameberg was always active. And now, if there's somebody to kind of pull you up here in the grand finals, you have to look at Flameberg to be that person. Well, let's take a look at our best of seven and all the maps that we have in our set. We're kicking it off with Subbase Hardpoint once again. This has now been a little bit more of a popular one through the last half of today. We got through the start of it. It was all those newer maps that have been added into the rotation. And last time we did see these two play, it felt like it was pretty handily in favor of Space Force. But after that last rep in the lower final, feels like the army ready to run this back. Yeah, every single map from the winner's final going to be seeing a repeat here, except the Vista hard point you get that six star search and destroy as the game seven you get a high rise control as the game six and the high rise search as the game five so this has the making of potentially if you can get to that five six seven if you're the space force then you're thinking we can do this again on those maps but the change that we've made from uh, the army heading into this one the invasion invasion for maps two and three we didn't yes. get to see those between these two teams previously and that six star hard point as well uh, this army team, they're fantastic at six star in general. We saw that in the six star search and destroy how that transition into the hard point for that map number four, as well as how these teams handle invasion. I don't know. We haven't seen them play invasion for quite a while. The Space Force, they got to play it back against the Air Force and they look damn good. They did look really good. And it felt like it was a different level that we weren't expecting based off of the results that we were getting through the round robin. Because again, you know, this is a team that lost to army in the round robin. There was about a hundred point differential in the hard point lost six to three i want to say or so in the s and d so we were coming in with expectations that army would be the one that would really set the tone but it feels like when you're the one that takes that first step and you're able to build up a lead put them on the back foot jesse and i talked about this that's maybe your opportunity to shut these guys down don't let them get fired up but that said, they're yeah. also coming off a series where they just 3-0 and they put up big numbers, so these guys are also feeling pretty hot in the controller too. Not only that, they beat the Marines. The Marines themselves were making quite the run throughout that loser's bracket. True. Obviously, I'm sure for the Marines, it's not the outcome that they were hoping for. They told us yesterday that they were going to be champions. They lose in the loser's finals uh, to a team that's, you know, it's a respectable team to go up against. For the Army, they've been at the top all weekend long. They get knocked down a little bit, but it's that revenge tour heading into the grand finals that I'm sure the Army, you're right to say that they are going to be fired up. They're are going to be riding the success from that best of five and it's been a while since Space Force have taken the stage and you got to talk about that you're sitting you're not practicing you're not playing you're watching everybody else play and that's gonna cool you down so for Space Force heading into this best of seven you kind of expect them to have a slower start than the side of the army because the army They've been playing. They've been grinding it out. That's right. That's, you know, one of the big things we talk about in the Call of Duty scene. When you do have to go through that lower bracket, you do play, you know, that last match coming into the grand final. Sometimes that plays a big factor because you're just warming. You're just hotter. You're yeah. coming out and you've got to match that pressure. You've got to ramp up to that pressure as a team that's been sitting around. Now, 
But if you add Mochilla, Mochilla, I have to imagine, would be like, hey, listen, they do this, they do this, this is what we need to work on. So it's hard to say exactly how much they were also able to learn from that Army squad throughout their lower final as well. Yeah, I'm sure you're sitting back, you're watching this team play in that loser's final, how they match up against the Marines, what brought them to that 3-0 sweep, and you definitely will, you know, it's good to call out that the coach is going to be listing everything to kind of turn things around here in the grand finals as well. And first sub base for the run back, you can you and I were kind of talking about that. And map one, kind of bold for the army, but they did take it against the Marines. And that game earlier on, it was not a one-sided affair. 250 to 173 was the map score back in the winner's final in favor of Space Force. So that's a close game. And the army, they know that maybe it just didn't go their way, but after beating the Marines, I'm sure they're ready for revenge. Ready for the revenge, seeing if they can fix their mistakes from old, come out stronger, and beat these guys down the second time. We are in the grand final, San Antonio. Are you ready? We're not ready. <laughs> we're almost ready, I guess. Uh, we we're almost there. We thought for a second, but we're going to have to wait a little bit to get into that sub base. It, it just, you know, sometimes that's the way she goes sometimes. So she goes there, bud, you know? <laughs> we're going to have to reload the lobby, get the server all set off, the players back in to run it back in that game number one. And I think for the sub base, but we can kind of dive a little bit deeper because when you're asking me after the walkouts what players to kind of look at for a map like this, you have to shine some light on Atama for Space Force because like that. map number one, Atama dropped 24 kills with the Rival 9 swapping to the MCW at times, but always being up in the face of these army players, never allowing them that height control, never allowing them to really set up on a lot of those hills. And I think for majority of the time that Air or Army was trying to get, they were broken within the first 15 seconds by this Space Force team. So even on rotation, they weren't able to get those kills. They weren't able to select that time and it really soak up that hill. And then you go to the P4s. You guys noted mm. this back in the Losers Finals. And who dominates the P4s? It was the side of Space Force. They get about 120 seconds off P4 alone in rotations one and two back in that Winners Final. And that has to be something that changes here for the Army. They did slightly fix it, but it still wasn't as cleaned in their last set so I think that's really respectful to bring up because it's the fact that that's really the driving point of what could turn this game one way or the other so I'm in the same boat as you brother those P4s we're going to keep a close eye on it how are they going to be on those rotations how are they going to be on making their way through the map cleanly those are really the key factors that we're going to keep our eyes on but we are just getting ready to load into this one just a small player issue I do believe and then we get right into this grand final and man once it starts I just I am just going to be absolutely amped. These boys are nasty, and they are ready to grind, ready to get the dub. We take a look at the map set once again. Anything else that sticks out to you here, Colin? I mean, when you look at this series, this is an AR map set. You got six-star search and six-star hardpoint, and that's like the only time that you're going to look for the rival nines to go rogue, to kind of be that annoyance. Other than that, you got sub-base, invasion, invasion to kick things off. That's where the MCWs are going to be looking yeah, to AR post Supreme. up and wait. And that's a little bit scary, I think, if you're looking at this from the Space Force kind of perspective, because the AR battle was starting to level out towards the end of that winner's final, and the subs were what took over in that game five. It was Revenge who kind of broke through the barrier, took over the game, and didn't allow those MCWs to really have a chance. Now you don't get that high rise search and destroy until game five of the series. And when you're going through a sub base invasion and invasion, you're not gonna be able to kind of be as cheeky if you're the rival nine players and kind of slipping through the map so when you look at this map set i think this is the army trying to say they want to take those mcw duels they want to take those long range engagements i like it we're loading back in second time is the charm i think is what it is surely right either way we'll try this again san antonio are you ready Are you ready, Colin? I'm ready. Let's get it, baby. Are you ready? Always. High rise. Sub base. Sub base. Hard point. I was looking at the helicopter. It kind of threw, threw me, me off, off too. I didn't even know there was a helicopter up there. Sub base That's hard point for map number one. Space Force, they take down Army back in the winner's final. Army, they get their run back in the loser's final and take down the Marines. Now, 
back into this matchup. Army starting off on the better side than the Space Force. The Space Force is going to have to look to break through the map and flip these spawns where you look at the side of Army to get these ARs hot early. Yeah, and take a look at the player on your screen. Flamebrook just put up unbelievable numbers. This man was winning gunfight after gunfight. He was snapping. It was unbelievable. Certainly a key part of this team if they're going to be able to come out and take this dub. We take a look 30 seconds in. Army able to get themselves in some of this early P1 time, and they're also already set up for this early rotation over to P2. Kamasei gonna win a big fight. Now Snow Control. This is gonna be tough for the player in the P2 window to get, but Kamasei is playing aggressive off this. Flame Burst not gonna check it, and Space First are gonna have the height now to start to work across the map. You can see these blue arrows trying to push through the line of scrimmage. Player number three is gonna be all the way in the back looking to pull these spawns away, and is gonna pinch with player number one. Itama goes down. Hale's gonna get the trade, reacts. Nice turnaround to get rid of the player who snuck between your back line. Three go down for the army, but they have the spawns for P2. They do, and they got 40 seconds off of P1, which is pretty unheard of when you talk about that being a little bit more of an open hill here on sub base. Now we make our way into the P2, Will be gunfights one from Hale who puts together three in a row. Atama comes up with a fourth, and now Space Force starting to get the ball rolling. Tom on the back line, big win there with the MCW. Space Force starting to garner some time on P2. Revenge, Top Snow now looking to see if you can start working over towards the next deal. I like this proactive idea from Space Force to try to maneuver this map and manipulate Army to kind of be in a less preferred side. Revenge now going to be able to cut down these players on the cross. A couple kills for the Space Force, and you have to be worried if you're the Army here at not losing the spawn. You get the scrap time, but it's just a measly seven seconds. Just going to be a bit of scrap time. They do a good job of limiting their time despite the early rotation. You said it. It was 40 seconds they got off of P1, only limited to nine on the early rotation, but those gunfights are going to be certainly bringing home a lot of time. As there's still one player in the back, Revenge will be a little bit annoying to deal with here, and he's now going to play his life. Yeah, Revenge is going to lay down, wait for the reinforcements, try to win some battles here, but Revenge is going to be seen, and Jack is going to hop this hill for time, so... Revenge takes the shot, gives his position away. They know he's going to be in the back line. Nobody giving him anything for free. If Revenge wants to break this, he has to jump on in. The trade for React, the bait and switch. Now Atama traded by React. 25 seconds now. The army off to a firing start. All right, they are going to get just about all of this time, but you take a look across the map, and this is where the army were really having a hard time actually breaking. But this time around, there's no one in this position to kind of block them from rotating early. And Flamebird's on five in a row. So one more for Flamebird, and that's going to be a streak in the black pocket. You see he's trying to bait for these players off spawn, but the shot's just not connecting. If he wants to get this cruise missile, he's going to have to go hunting for the skill. This is a pretty forward position for Flamebird. Number six is locked in. Cruise missile now in the back pocket. In the open, in the back, or there's a chance to find a big spawn flip, and they'll be able to do exactly that. Seven kills in a row! Flamebird gets help from Reacts. They break it, they get in here, and they have fixed their P4 problems. And he's going to use it right away. They want to snowball this into a big lead, so 97-41, and Flamebird wants more. Cruise missile right through the middle, finds nothing, but it is going to funnel the Space Force inside, so Army off spawn. They can see set up and look to cut off these rotations at the stem. Revenge still battling for this hill. He's going to take out check from the time. 21 seconds to fight for. Good time that Space Force don't want to give up as battle for P3 or top third for Dexy is going to go his way. Army now looking to the rotations once more. As they're spawning Space Force out P3. All right. Now have to look at the rotation over to P5. Army have been so clean on some of these map movements, and you're seeing it on the scoreboard right now. 60 seconds to 70 or so, separating the two. Flameberg is still on a spree, by the way. He got that streak in the back, locked down the spawns, and now he's up to eight in a row. This man is trying to keep it rolling. If anybody was going to turn it around, you're looking at Flameberg. So nine and four doing exactly what is asked for the Army. Reacts, goes down. Dexy trades it. Nobody in the time. As Jack is looking for top warehouse control, everybody fa fighting for some semblance of the map, but two go down for Space First, and that's going to allow Army to jump the hill. A lot of the game clock wins out here between both of these squads, but 20 seconds, starting to go the way of Army now. Eight in a row still for Flamberg, by the way. He's looking for number nine. Shots are going to come in, just won't find any eliminations. A lot of members now set up for Space Forces. They really need some critical time on this P5 hill, but Flamberg up to nine. He's looking for double digits, takes up another player, and now looks to try to secure the time himself. Yeah, Flamberg looking for double digits on the Shriek, swinging out all the oh, confidence boy. for Flamberg. He is the danger.
Ranger Flamebird is doing what the army needs. He's looking good, Colin. He is just on one at the moment. I mean, he started off one and four, and now he's up to 10 in a row. So what a big turnaround for him. The pressure starting to set in for Space Force. They're forced to try to come over to P1, and at the very least, you want to keep this neutral. Try to get control of the favorite side of the map that's going to transition to P2 for you. Reacts in the stairwell, able to deal with some of the high ground, and that's been the big factor so far, Colin. Nobody for Space Force feels like they can stay alive on the high ground. No, and I think that is the big difference that Army has made adjustments to finally a set of kills for Space Force. They're going to allow Look to set up on this map. They need to hop this hill, get as much time as they can, and flood in to flip these spawns. But in the back line, it's Flameberg still locking down these spawns over towards P4, making sure that Space Force can never get an advantage here. 143, 72, P2 set up for the army. Space Force, they need an early break fast. Check in the back. He's got a great read on this transition, and it just feels like kill after kill. Everything is coming together. Everyone's making the right play at the right time, and Dexy now has the complete middle of the map on block. He's going to watch this cross. Will they sniff him out? Oh, no, no, they will not. There is a trade that comes through, and now maybe a moment to start to push towards the point, but it just feels like they can't get anywhere. They're hitting a brick wall. That's so unfortunate for the Space Force. The Semtex doesn't fully clear the corner where Dexy is sitting. So Dexy basically just... Is sits there and waits for somebody to fall into the trap and while this happens army getting all the time at p2 their lead continuing to grow and because of this 100 point lead space force they cannot just rotate to p3 they still have to send bodies here to contest anything you can do to slow the army down from making their move over towards p3 is going to be good value because this has just been a very difficult look so far at space force now again they have been sitting around they are still trying to get into the rhythm but they're down 100 points so if you're going to make anything happen on this sub base and win it like you did in that winner's final it starts right here on p3 yeah this is a great time to get a full 60 and we know space force have what it takes to lock down p4 if they're able to flip those spawns flamebird goes down hail back up top snow this is the set that you want if the Space Force, all four members going to be here to defend. Dexy is still alive. The hunt wow. doesn't work. Dexy turns on him. And now the army looking for the break. Looking for the break. Dexy over the top. Can't combine for anything more. But it will be a double up here. Cabasay finally getting involved in the kill feed. We saw how just critical he was and important he was in that last set. 113 to 182. We asked for a full 60. It looks like we are going to get our full 60. But P4, this is where we haven't really seen Army have that initial advantage outside of this map. Can they lock it down? Can they hold? This could very well lock in the game. 60 point difference. Space Force, they have a chance here. If they can break this hill, you're going to be looking to cut down these members through mid. But look how aggressive Army are in this setup. Somebody has slipped through this. Revenge takes reacts off of this time. And now player number five and player number eight, uh, Jack and Dexy, through mid. This is all null and void. Now Revenge has a chance to just continue to keep Space Force out of this time. Just the numbers dwindling before they ever even see the hill. There was one player in the back. Reacts was able to slip through. And it looks like now the flip could potentially be in. Still a 50-50 battle because the high ground's going to be controlled by Dexy. And Dexy's going to hit some clean shots over the top. Looking for a second. Not missing a whole lot, but the assistance will come in. That will be a solid clear, but still not enough to actually get on the hard point time. And you love to see that if you're a fan of the army. Because last series in the winner's final, Dexy wasn't having a great series. So the fact that Dexy is winning those fights at range just means that the army are here to win and they want this sub base to go their way 95 to 138 heading into this p5 rotation space force they have the bodies here it's, they just need to look for that win in these fights they have a player top warehouse who can shut down a roto well they do bring it back to just about 50 seconds not out of it just yet the army haven't been able to accumulate a lot of time trophy system looking to be dealt with it's the tankiest trophy system ever so atama finds a freebie and now trying to get themselves with the time a lot of this has actually got neutral important to maybe keep your eye on the game clock too we are now down to about a minute 30. if more of this hill goes neutral that could be an incredible factor as we get further and further into it it's good movement from Tabase, not able to stay alive 27 seconds army they can't win this one here but they can get closer to a win and space force is doing a good job at just denying army of any of this time p4 and p5 but and that's all this good 
for Space Force, but they need time of their own, so they're gonna hop this hill, look for P2 control, Tama with the slide out on the Renetti, over towards P1 we go, and take a look now of this setup for Space Force, they're gonna have a player in towards top comms, a player over towards top third, and with that, they should have the dominant hold here on P1. P1 will be neutral again, Game clock ticking away, and this is good news for Army because that almost gives them a bit of a leg up, saying you're the ones that have to make the move for the hard point. We can finesse the map. We can move how we see fit yeah. and just try to keep you off of it. Dexy now going to take a bit of a route through the outskirts down low. Has a chance to lock down this lane as well as influence to Hill as he makes his way into the point. Dexy with the timing to hold to Tama to win, though. Big fights won for Space Force, and the lead is cut down to 30. Now Space Force climbing back in towards the sub base. 27 seconds that can bring them right back into this game. Atama finally shut down, but Hale, four in a row. Top comms, chance to take them out. Peaks it, shut down. Trades go the way of Army. They hop back in. Signs of life here for Space Force. This one is not done and dusted as of just yet. Army are still gonna have to make some big movements in the back of the map here, try to flip out the spawn, as well as cut through these ARs that are really starting to pick up steam. Huge chance for Dexy, trying to find a freebie. He's good for one, and now just tries to play his life. 22 Dexy. and 19 from Dexy, and a triple kill to break P2. 233, and this could be the dagger, Austin. One last chance for Space Force to break, and it's a time to open it up. It's gonna have to be a flood. Have to dip, have to dive, have to slide, have to get in here some way, somehow. Seven points is all you need to secure the win, but Hale says no, not just yet. 30 seconds left on this point. Options, however, available for Army. Game's not done. Seven seconds for the Army Space Force. They have to commit bodies to this and half the rotation as well to P3. It's gonna be a two on four inside. You need to go big. Kamase opens up with a kill. Inside though, it's Hale looking to lock down this time. They go down and nobody's here to trade. Army, they run it back on sub base and they take it back. You can hear them get loud. You're hearing the deads. You're hearing the screams. These guys are amped up, feeling good, carrying that momentum from the lower final and bringing it right into this grand final. Man, that was incredible. The things we said they needed to fix were fixed. The rotations oh, yeah. were a little bit better. They were getting to P4 earlier. So even if they weren't the first team there, it felt like they were able to at least take those battles at a reasonable range where they weren't just dying one at a time and it felt like they could never really get in. They were using the teamwork to get to the back. They were using the high ground a lot better this time around and you can see the adjustments and it certainly pays off here. And when you have players, uh, when your AR role actually controlling that high ground, it makes the world of a difference on a map like Subbase. So often we saw Space Force just not able to set up at a hill, not able to control those points of contact that you really want in locking down lanes. And when you move to P3 and you lose top snow, it's, it's just so easy for the team trying to break to get into that hill. It happens in the first set, it nearly happens in the second set. And throughout P4, you only really saw the side of um, of Space Force get any time at all when they were able to control top third, which, you know, Dexy, even when they lose the rotation to P4, was dominating that height. And that is what you love to see if you're looking at the army to take this back. A critical win, to say the least. 204 to 250, my goodness, sub base. Well, this time around, they get the best of their opponents, but Invasion Search Destroy, something that we saw a lot of yesterday, something in fact that ARMY were willing to play quite a bit of, if I do actually remember correctly, and this is one of those maps where you can look to make a lot of those fixes, it plays similar ways in high rise where you get a lot of information at the start, but then it's really about trying to execute your plan immediately after that, and we'll see if they can try to bring at least what we get out of Six Star and some of their proactive plays here on Invasion, or if that will even come into play whatsoever. And with Invasion, you know, coming out yesterday uh, quite a bit in the round robins, there were very comfortable wins for a lot of these teams, like 6-1, 6-3. I think the, exactly. the closest we saw was like a 6-4 game between the Coast Guard and the Air Force. And that was all the way back 
back at the start of yesterday. So sure. we haven't seen too much invasion search and destroy today. We did see the Space Force pull it out earlier uh, versus the Air Force. And, and that was kind of one of those maps where you see that Space Force, quite like the Marines when they were playing, they're always keen on hitting those flanks through DVD. As soon as they get that first blood, they take that space. And once that happens, Space Force just kind of hold things down. They know when they need to push. They know when they just need to wait for the other team to come to you. And I think that, you know, sub base, it was fine that the army brought that back. Obviously, they felt a lot more comfortable this time around. But now you're heading into a map that Space Force picked. And this invasion should be a way that they can bounce back. Yeah, I think watching over what they were doing in Search and Destroy, they play Fearless, right? And you got to really respect Fearless to Search it. and Destroy because they are willing to take risks. They're willing to challenge you on certain openings and certain routes where if you're not watching them, if you're not set up for those initial plays, they're going to just run with it. And then you have to start playing a little bit more passive in some of those later rounds. Like, okay, guys, they're just sprinting through. They're running at us. They're creating openings. We have to find a way to shut this down. And that sometimes forces you to play a little bit further back. So I loved what they were doing. And obviously, we're kind of really framing up revenge for the most part based off of what we were getting in that high rise so if he can find those value if he can find those openings that could be you know something that was working out for them very well in the last series that could work out here too I mean, if Wrench drops 15 kills again, you might as well guarantee the map win to Space Force at that point. Fair. But, you know, Invasion's <laughs> a different beast in general than that high rise. You don't have those, you know, straightforward openings that the Rival Nines could get, you know, towards bottom blue like you would have for those breakoffs. You're going to be looking at, like, a player like Revenge needs to look for cafe control. And if you have cafe control, whether it's a B hit or an A hit, you're going to be involved at that cutting off the players through mid or setting up a flank in that same scenario. And I think a player like Revenge is going to be somebody you have to really watch out for if you are the army, because if you start to let that kind of flank unfold, if you start to let Revenge pick you off from behind and you're not aware from that, it's going to snowball. It's going to trickle down the line. And we didn't see too much of Revenge back in map number one. We didn't get to see too much of Atama back in map number one either. It was mostly Hale and Kavase trying to hold things down in that AR role. And moving into the invasion, you'll look towards these sub players to try to find their footing here in the grand finals. You need it, without a doubt. And you even take a look at some of the time. I mean, Atama might not have been getting a lot of kills, but man, this guy was playing the objective like crazy. I think he got over two minutes of hill time. And that's the kind of dirty work that you certainly need. You just need the sling to follow alongside it. Oh, yeah. That's what elevates you. That's what allows you to be an incredible hard point team. Not to say they haven't been, but certainly some hard counters and some adjustments being made for the army and a lot of all their players stepping up right i think that's a huge part of it too it feels like they've been coming in as a force and they've been doing a really good job of staying consistent yeah there's a moment where like flameberg starts off with a double digit streak drops 10 kills in a row yeah, that's from gross. p3 all the way in or p2 all the way into what felt like p4 for this team and it wasn't even Flamebird that towards the end kind of sent them over the edge. Dexy went from being negative about like, I want to say 10 and 15 at one point to positive about four or five kills. So Dexy towards the back half of that game really turning things around. And, and that's what you kind of were asking for from this team of the army, that if they can step up into this grand finals and start to find the form that we see outside of these big key matchups like we saw in the lower finals or like we saw earlier versus the Marines for this for this team, mm -hmm. uh, that's when we start to see the best out of them, when it's not just the Flamebird show. That's right. Can't just rely on one person. We've been saying it a lot today, but I mean, that's team play, right? I mean, one person can win you maps at certain moments, but it's just so difficult to rely on it round after round after round unless it's just one of those games where you're revenge I guess but either way we'll see what they're going to be able to do important to note always in those first rounds I love to talk about the fact that there's no trophy systems all a huge opportunity to try to work yourself into the site when you're on the offense first because there's nothing protecting those defenders if they're caught behind construction at that B site caught behind that tractor those are big opportunities to try to double nade create space create the opening and because you're so widespread because invasion's a, a pretty wide map Usually, you don't have too many members at the same place at the same time unless they have a perfect read on what you're doing. And those pre-set nades, you have to be cautious of them. They catch so many people off guard they for do. those first bloods. And before you know it, that first blood happens and you're attacking team and you're just like, what do we do now? Like, we don't even have map control yet. Yes. You don't even have any time to react to what happens if you're not prepared for those set nades. So it's definitely something you have to keep in your mind 
for sure. And fortunately for, you know, a team like Space Force, earlier when we were seeing them on Vasion, they were winning rounds, losing the first blood. Mm. And I think that's kind of something that is not talked about enough on a map like Invasion, with how wide it is, with how many corners there are, with how, how many head, headies there are on this map. This is a very possible map to kind of pull things back from losing that map, that first blood, especially if you can, you know, find a transitional kill to the opposite site, plant it over towards A instead of B. As long as you get that bomb down on Invasion, mm. you have a chance to win, whether you're in a numbers advantage or not. Yeah, retakes can feel really difficult if your pinch players aren't finding value, because taking any of these sites, retaking them from the front or just from one direction, it's just, it's too easy. Because oh, yeah. the way that you set up crossfires on this, map it feels like one player gets tagged you're not going to be able to turn the snap to another everyone's kind of watching everyone based off of just how some of these positions work but that's enough of us vamping we've set it up the best we possibly could the expectations are in now it's about the execution again this is map number two army able to come out and grab that first map they're looking really solid coming out hot carrying that momentum for the lower final now we'll see if they can keep that moving into map two and can the space force ice it i mean they had a fantastic showcase in that high-rise search and destroy six-star search did not go their way but that sub base it was close and they started to pull things back it's the second set third set of rotations and I definitely wouldn't expect Space Force to kind of be down on themselves but it, it does look like we're down a member inside a, of the game itself so maybe we're not ready for invasion just yet not yet unfortunately we keep it moving player unfortunately is having tech issue, doesn't load in, so we'll have to try to redo that one. But either way, man, anyone that's really kind of standing up for you coming into this one? Anyone that you Definitely. want to keep your eye on outside of some of the players we've highlighted so far? I think for sure I, you got to look at a player like Itama, like you said, the fact that he was able to, you know, struggle when it came down to kills, still find value with the objective time, and it's kind of vice versa when you're looking at the subs over for, um, over for the side of... Uh, uh, the army reacts in general back on that sub base always kind of being that player to push those lanes whether he's in the hill or he's looking to kind of go rogue on the map you always saw a member of in the sub role kind of going for those battles in those lanes which you like to see from the army and i don't think we saw it really enough back in the winner's final and the fact that you're seeing the army actually kind of find that rhythm in their sub play to back up the ARs on their team, it definitely looked like they had a lot more control of right. their flip pacing. And I, I think going into the search and destroy, that, that is something you can really latch on to heading into it, especially if the first bloods are favoring you for sure. Army, they had a great sub base, started to slip away towards the ends, and Space Force kind of vice versa. They need to kind of look at the way that they played towards the end of that sub base and ride that. We'll see if they can do exactly that. Loading in once again. The players were on the opposite sides, which is no good. Can't imagine playing like that, giving them comms right off the start. Do you imagine? Would be a wild thing. So we load it back in. We come in for the second time, and we'll see. After a little bit of a pause here, if that's been enough for this Space Force squad to actually find themselves in a better spot. We'll have to see. Need a big bounce back, or Army could really start to take away this one. They've been looking really solid as we jump into the map number two. Yeah, Tama gonna be watching the outer bridge, early shots onto Reacts, it's only damage, nothing to write home about, as here come the set nays, the car's gonna blow up, and no bloods coming from it. Flameberg's gonna be on an island, over towards Broken, and for the army, it seems like they're really banking on this A site execute, just kills, looking to go their way, Kibase stays alive, backs up towards Dark, and Seems like Space Force now gonna flood through this zone. Flameberg traded, Hale almost going down there. Flameberg had a chance for two. That's a lot of information. Dexy's still all the way at the back of the map, so we'll have to decide what he wants to do. And it looks like the plan will be to regroup with his teammates, but you show a player five in the mini map there, that's gonna be Atama. He is watching this entire right lane. So this is going to be the A lane unlocked, but it's enough for a check to get through. And we'll see if they decide to drop a bomb. They may be looking for one more kill. When Wrench trying to get away, reacts on the chase. Uh -oh. The Renetti shot's not going to secure that kill. And Itama actually finding check. That's bombed down. Hale's going to be traded by reacts. But now with 20 seconds left, Army, they have to recover that bomb and go for the plant. The biggest thing we've seen today is just how much time these teams are taking to get that bomb down. It almost comes down to the wire. And that's going to make things fairly difficult here. Dexy just going to have to send it. Bomb now going down. A chance to try to get it off, and it looks like it will not be contested. 2v2 post plant, inbound. Yeah, Dexy. 
actually spotted backing up in towards Cafe. React's gonna be on that middle tank and player number six, Revenge, has made the full wrap around. Are you gonna be ready for this one if you react? Because Revenge could find that first blood. He's gonna take down Dexy, doesn't get away. 1v1 versus Atama. One versus one. 20 seconds, can work the clock. React's just gonna lay prone, wait for the push to come to him. The read is in, Atama! Over the top, big 1v1. And that's just the knowledge there from Atama playing the whole time over on that bridge. Gets that bomb down for Army, makes sure that they can't get that early plant on the site, and allows for the rest of Space Force to kind of take their time and work their routes. Revenge there, finding the kill onto the player inside Cafe, sets Itama up for that win. With the MCW, don't want to have to push into such close quarter battles, and with that, Space Force bouncing back after losing the sub base. Itama has really been that ice man multiple times throughout today as well. You can rely on him in some of those big critical moments and that is just one of those that you might look back on and say, all right, that was a potential difference maker. First round secured. Army looking for a big bounce back. Early stuns and nades all coming out. Remember, trophy systems are just now starting to come up here for some of these members. Still a little bit of value to find here with these nades if you spot out a member. That's early info into Cafe for Space Force as well. They know that it's going to be occupied. So you can see them taking a lot of angles on this small door. You have a player in towards the boss stop. You have a player in laundry. And it seems like Revenge may actually not know if a player could have snuck through or not. Gonna turn around for a moment, but he's gonna go in with Renetti. And it's just a tag, the bait and switches out. Still check finds the kill, trades back and forth and his army on top. Oh, they tried to make the move. They tried to go for a little bait and switch. It just doesn't work out entirely. So we're gonna lose one here for the army. Space Force gonna lose two. Drops us into a 3v2 with 30 seconds left. Once again, coming down to the wire with the clock. You don't wanna be in these situations where you don't have information on anyone inside of the site, but it looks like they have no choice. They're gonna have to go. 2-0 for Atama. Oh, almost beamers over towards Flameberg, but that's bombed down. 1v3 now for Hale. As you're gonna have to not only find the kills, but get this bomb down as well. And it doesn't look like Hale is really in a position to make any of that happen. A consolation kill onto Reacts, but this should be a round for the army to tie us back up. Flameberg just toying with his food, says, I know you can't plant the bomb. And he does not even want to take the gunfight. Simply going to try to play his life, maybe work towards a streak. But it feels like throughout most of today, we haven't really seen too many aggressive fast hits. And I feel like if you're going to get away with that on any map, you're certainly going to get away with it on Invasion because of everything we framed up. It's widespread. It's a, you know, a wider map. You usually are just not going to be in, able to enforce that if you have three or four members running to the site. But it's always coming down to the wire those last 10 seconds, just hoping to get a plan off. It's very easy to kind of isolate players because of that too. So you're hoping the smokes can make that first blood kind of bully you onto site. But the early pre hates Flamebird barely alive. 57 health. Must have lost a leg there. Nice shots from Hale, but he stays too long in check. Wins of the first blood battle. That is the B site open for a plant. Flamebird on the site. He is in a great position here. And this is what we talk about. When you're able to get one in, it could be very difficult to try to play retake here. So construction control locked. Now you're going to see Check also make his way over towards the tractor. B will be slightly checked with shoulders in and out here from Cabasay in the back, so he's going to be able to get some eyes in. But now, finally, the call to make the move onto the site. They're going to get that bomb down at B. Look how deep reacts is. Revenge has an idea as well. And he's going to check it. Big wow, win. Not going to allow Reacts to bring the numbers even lower for Space Force. But now you're against the clock. And Kamasek is a little too ahead of the game. Going to cost those numbers equalize back into a lesser side for Space Force. 3v2 for the retake. And it's going to come down to the flank from Revenge. But he gets caught. Tall ask once again. Atama. He's pulled off some crazy clutches so far in the day, but there is just too much to do with too little time. And that is just going to be no feet of streaks. If Tommy doesn't want to run in there, he knows. With 20 seconds left, there's no way I'm trying all three. So he'll simply lay back, let the round slip away, and the army will take a one-round advantage. And that's back-to-back -back for the army. They win the defense, they win the offense, and a lot of it comes down to, I think, what we've talked about previously, but 
you saw from the player on P2 tank taking that early gunfight for against Czech all the way into top treehouse. You lose that battle so early and you don't really have to take your time at that point. If you are the army, the site is wide open to get that bomb down. You get that plant and all on the other side is Space Force sitting over towards that P3 bus stop. And it takes so long just to get that retake going. So for Space Force, you like to see them pick up the pace here in a lot of these rounds. They're losing it too fast. We'll see them slow down, try to get some info. Aggressive push coming through broken there on that B side. And that position is huge from Flameberg. Look at this spot right here. Hello, trying to line them up. And oh, it gets a little bit sloppy, but he's still able to come away with one. Second gunfight on the way. The trade luckily will follow, but oh! Jack just hits the flank and they'll stop the play right in its tracks and that will turn us into a 1v3 here as Revenge needs to go big. That's a good one-two punch from Flameberg and Jack. Flameberg had all the information. Shots weren't really there but he got the job done and Jack cleaned up the rest. It was sloppy but I'm sure Jack was okay with that and we see Revenge. Last one up again for Space Force. So another 1v3 scenario. React's gonna see him. to say no way it happens again <laughs> i would have lost my voice for him if he did that that was almost disgusting holy he goes for another punch there i mean i think he gets him that was close I mean, you still had a few more players to get through but that would have felt like a win in itself it's a little windy in the venue a little windy a little, a little breeze coming on through here san antonio they turned the acs up and now they're shooting circles <laughs> hands are getting cold man <laughs> it's all good. They get the kill. That's all that matters. But big problem here for Space Force for me is that it feels like they are a little bit hesitant. And the army are reading into that because they're not giving them breathing room. They get a read on their play, they're attacking, and they're stopping them where they stand. And look at this. Trades from shots. check. Four in a row. Dex is going to split the difference and give numbers back to the army. And now look at that setup from the army. They have three members alive still in their spawn. Not a lot of map control, but they're going to let this one sit a little bit. Stir in the minds of Space Force and try to force some rotations out of these two. They're very separate, so no matter where you go, you are going to have numbers advantage in what seems like a one versus three. Atama going to give his position away, and Thor's going to get close in his face, and now they know at least where one of these members is. It's hard for Atama to get one and slip away from this position. You can see the pressure. They don't know. He is going to reposition, though. So they knew that he was kind of playing in and around that angle, and well, they do sniff out Atama. So he's got nowhere to go. He doesn't have support with him. It's going to be a flank down the middle, and well, nothing you can really do if you're Hale. You're caught between a rock and a hard place. The army, they're giving him nothing to work with. Nothing at all. I'm not really sure how Hale doesn't see the rotation from that player pushing through the B Street, getting all the way over towards Dark unnoticed. When you know he's in DVD, that player number seven, Hale, should have been on watch for the flank it could have equalized things in a 2v2 but instead you leave atama a little high and dry there for your hail you play way too disconnected if you're the space force and this is not the team i was expecting in the grand finals who just took down the army in a game five setting the army they are walking all over them here and now up 4-1 a chance to take themselves to map point in invasion search and destroy Wow, those cars are not finding kills on these members right next to them. EOD going crazy at the moment, keeping them safe and sound. Also important to note that Czech actually has earned himself that cruise missile, and he's gonna have a double there, but he decides to just pump a load right into that guy, and that will, that didn't come out right, but <laughs> he unloads his clip into him and destroys him. Either way, that is now gonna set them up for a gnarly 3v3. A lot of map control gonna be here. And we'll see if they're going to be able to recover. 3v3 for Space Force to look to get their second round on. 41 seconds. Bomb leading over towards B. It seems that Army have the right setup here. The crossfire from Bulldozer and the concrete. And that's going to pay off for Dexy. Watch it over him. Reacts cuts man. off the player rotating. And again, it's another 1v3. This time, Kabase who has not had a good search to destroy one and five, not gonna make anything out of it. Man, they're shooting bodies. I mean, the fact that he finds one, shoots his clip into him, and then doesn't even turn for the second, absolutely filthy. Dexy at the back of the map, hitting nasty shots, and it feels like 
There's nothing that you can do that is working for you. You play fast, you're shut down and flanked. You play slow, they play patient and don't allow you to manipulate the map. What do you do in these situations where it feels like nothing is working? You almost have to go for a full send play, it feels like in my mind, but That's they are I'm back thinking. on defense, so how aggressive do you want to even be? At this point, what's there to lose? You've lost countless rounds here in the invasion. You just gotta shake it up and try something different, and it looks like they're gonna do that. It's a double stack through mid, reacts. Gonna be seen over towards laundry. And this could be a double flank, but the same setup for army that we've seen in the past rounds. They have player number four, Dexy, standing all the way back gas. Yeah, so even if you decide to flank, you're gonna have a member see it. Check has been such a problem too, and he's still got this cruise missile, and yeah, he's gonna call it in, why not? Let's try to get some information. Player on B, now gonna be forced inside of office. Couple players ran into cafe and well, nowhere to go for Atama in the back. He was responsible for watching A lane. So that is the first blood. Now you're gonna see the go button. Hale trying to find something in office, but he has shrugged off the angle and there might be an opportunity to look for a bomb plan. Flameberg sitting two HP after that hail, a chance to equalize, but you saw Atama scurrying like a nest of ants back to their home and not able to get there in time. I'm gonna have to watch from the bench as your team is trying to retake this B site. Flameberg set up, it's a full post plant that you have to break with numbers disadvantage. Check wants to go look at how antsy he is. He's just waiting, picking his moment, flies through office. He's able to come up with one. And well, nobody can track them down. This is a different level we have not seen out of this army squad. They are just rolling through their opponents as they now are 2-0 up. And look at them standing on their feet, letting them know as well. Check the body shots and the trash talk on stage. Army are feeling themselves. And at the end of that search and destroy, I mean, just looking back at it, check 11 and 3, nine non traded kills. A cruise missile pays off for killing that last round. And I don't know what's happening with the Space Force here. They just do not look the same. It looks like the confidence has left the building. It feels like they're really struggling to figure out how they want to play against this team that is coming out a little bit diffy at the moment, right? I feel like they're just making the right plays at the right times. You saw it really start at the sub base where it feels like, okay, now they're starting to be ahead of the curve. They're the ones that are actually putting you on the back foot. And we said how important that was coming into this series to try to have that good start. Because when we saw Army in this exact same position, we were seeing them struggle to actually find that exact same confidence that you just brought up. So everything has been working out very well for them at the moment. And it feels like you now need to find this next map or it is uh, it is do or die. You talked about how fearless Space Force were in their search and destroys previously. At the end there, Jack flying through ice cream getting the right timing to put that game away. 11 kills is incredible. 6-1 on the Invasion Search and Destroy. 2-0 up in the Grand Finals here are your army team. As it's going to bring, bring us into now our control on Invasion yet again. It is the second one after this Search and Destroy. So hopefully this is where certain space force can kind of slow things down talk amongst each other that high rise was a grind fest back in the yeah. winners finals it was not one-sided at all you were fighting for those takes of progression and that's going to be the same story told on invasion where defenses are so prominent defenses are basically the main kind of win percentage on a map like this for control and it comes down to if you can win an offensive round you basically win the map pretty much at this point in time you're talking about invasion it's very difficult to come out with those offensive rounds man so you really did say it say it frame it up well because if you're able to get onto a even early put that pressure on and you're able to that transition through mid after capturing it it's so difficult to defend that B zone unless you're pushed further up into yeah. the lane, have middle map control, and it's so much to control for a very long period of time. So this, in my mind, feels like it is one of those must wins because even as you get a little bit further in the map set, you have that six star search and destroy waiting at the end. So just in case we fumble just a tad bit, this one goes the distance. We still got our pocket pick deep in the bag if this one goes the distance. I was gonna say, don't count that six star out for Space Force, the way that Revenge played that game five. If you get him to that game seven, you gotta let him take the reins. Just Revenge take the wheel, fly 
as you may desire. But first, they need to get a map win, Austin. And yes, Invasion they do. Control loading up. You ask who I want to see pop off for this team. It has to be a full team effort here. Nobody on Space Force has impressed me in this grand final. It has to be a full team effort. Well, we've seen the disrespect, the shots into the body. We've seen it all. These guys are coming out dippy, and so far they're showcasing it. Map number three, underway. First Blood will be locked in, but traded quickly. And now you're starting to see yellow pour into that feed. Army looking solid for another one. And like I just framed up, if they get onto A and capture this early, this could be very dangerous for Space Force. Bad news, they're on A. Not so bad news, it's not a stack. It's gonna take some time. Off the respawn, Space Force, they're gonna have a chance to battle back to this one, but Flamebird somehow still alive. Finally goes down to hail. They Nobody's looking at this. A is captured. It just started. The exact thing we framed up just happened, and that is not what you want to see because Space Force now need to play perfect defense at B, and it is way more difficult to do it at this zone than the other. So two minutes of some flawless defense going to be required on this very defensive stacked map. And well, the nades all coming out. Revenge trying to get a read on where some of these members are. One is right next door. He runs right into his line of sight. No problem on the first. Trade will not follow. Team shots now starting to come through quite nicely. This is Knock Knock who's there. Quick for Dale and back into the driver's seat for Space Force as they're trying to shake off that early A capture. They have the setup towards B that you want. And fortunately for Space Force, a B site like this is not something that's easy to retake once you go for down. You have a player who's going to be looking for control over towards the water street. Watch the cross through dark just pepper away damage at these members and unlike a this is not a site or a zone that's easy to flank with how close it is to the respawns of those attack those defenders well the setup's looking pretty solid for now you can actually see some pressure coming through this a street and if they can just trade this out one for one then that's enough to maybe start pushing through and in fact it actually comes through decently clean so we'll see if they can turn this into a second. Flameberg now looking for the trade onto tank. Mid tank control would be huge to grab on the offensive side, but so far so good. They had over two minutes to play with. They have had no progress on towards B, and exactly what we asked for, Space Force is currently delivering on. And it's down to the last minute of this attack for the army. Hale just continuing to cut down members of the army. Space Force now. You look at Revenge on four in a row, it's Hama on two in a row. You get a streak out of this, you've completely turned it around. So the army, a couple uh -oh. kills here, this is their chance. You got two members to try to shut it down. Yes, yeah, it's a big moment, you just have to trade out. That's really the key, and you can start to throw yourself on the zone. Kill's gonna come back through. Hale's gonna wisely back up, and he now tries to retake the zone, but it's gonna be Reacts that's there for one. 25 seconds now on the clock. Flank being watched. A lot of players defensively are not gonna be a part of this place. So you're looking at, really, Atama to try to get something big done. But Atama has to choose his fight. Cannot get ahead of the curve. Dexy watching the full flank. Atama's gonna be seen. Gets away with his life, and here come the nays. Kapase takes down check. Flamebird only with a segment at B. Space Force back into the zone. They battle into it. Reacts the only one up there to hopefully turn it around. Oh, Reacts is pretty far forward. He won't be able to find another one. Hale will take him down. Dexy now just trying to throw himself on the point. Goes to the pistol. Can't double up, but his teammate is there for the trade. Four now seconds. they're on the point. Nine lives playing up against 12 but they could very well stack and try to end it here on b four seconds the nades you gotta watch the nades to just continue to beat them down into the zone for army the kills back and forth the trades here seven v nine dexy's still on it they send them back to the respawns and the offense goes to the army offensive round win in the opening round, that is almost unheard of because of the no trophy systems, but sometimes that does work against you defensively, especially if you don't get an early read on how many players are hitting down A, and they just flood it. Get two players on the point, stack it, and there was no retake to follow after that whatsoever for, for Space Force. That one stings, because you're down 0-2 in the series, and now you're down 0-1 heading into an offense. Yeah, it comes down to a big hero moment out of Reacts, just staying alive over towards Treehouse, just drawing the attention away from the side of Space Force, who are opting into a B zone hit right off the bat. So not confident with A, they want to get this B zone done as fast as possible. But with that gamble, they're happy to battle against the break off from oh, Army, boy. and the break off is flawless. Things are looking quite bad here for Space Force early. 
in this round, they are pinned at the back of Castle, and you're already seeing the difficulty of trying just to get out of your spawns. You're not going to get a clean look at a zone, it feels like, for at least 20 seconds. There's so many players you got to battle through. That's a good job of dealing with one through the far right side of the street. Dexy, though, good shots and gets the wall bang over the top. He's now going to likely clean up this left side if he's needed, but his teammates coming out of spawn will do exactly that for him, and it feels like everyone on one playing well together. They've only lost three lives here so far. And after that, B capture back in the first round from Dexy, six in a row. So cruise missile for the army as the kills just continue to unfold and unravel the Space Force offense again and again. Revenge gonna sneak through. Kill there on to check. This time, 20 seconds left for the Space Force. Dexy thinking about the body shots again. Reacts lining oh. them up, not able to finish the top up. But the damage is so far done, Austin. Seven seconds remaining. You have to just sprint to the zone, try to touch, and they are just not getting through anything. Once again, a brick wall is set up on these zones. Army bringing it to Space Force. They are 2-0 up. They're looking to make this one fast, Colin. I'd say his Army team looks upset that they lost those winners' final games. Yeah. They beat the Marines. They beat them in a sweep. Back in a best of five, we changed things for the grand finals from a best of five to a best of seven. I thought for sure we were going the distance for these two, but the army, they have different plans. Maybe they got dinner plans later because they're trying to get to the fast. Listen, you got to take a breath here right now if you're Space Force. Big deep breaths coming into this round number three. It's not over by any means, but you need to get some big play, some life back into the veins of this squad. Just something to get you going. You're asking for a big moment. Someone's going to have to deliver. Reacts already off to a solid start as he's able to find that first one. And it looks like a bit of blue starting to pour into that feed. But you take a look at B, and Dexy's almost locked in the first tick, and there it is. Yeah, trying to get this B zone captured. Trying to at least, you know, the, if it's needed, get that round five defense, which almost is locked in with this B zone now fully finished off and Thomas not going to get there in time to contest Hail Dexy not actually going to finish it so oh, no. Space Force they do get there in time but for Army they've done enough to con like at least get that round five defense yeah that is going to be the case here for us they are set up for it if we end up going to a round five but one more tick to try to lock in this B zone Shot's gonna come through and looks like a lot of trades. A little bit more involvement in the kill feed has come through at least this round here for Space Force. They've been able to at least bring the numbers to a somewhat even state, just down by about two. Now looking to try to finish off the B zone. Reinforcement should come in and while this happens, they're already looking at pressure at A, but A will be cleared. Yeah, and Revenge not able to take them off of B. 21 playing 20, Army. Chance to 3-0 sweep this control and head up 3-0 in this best of five, put them, or best of seven, put them on grand final series points. So a lot of pressure here for Space Force to try to dig deep and win this. Time to play with Dexy. Working through the back, slow pre-aim. Hoping for someone to try to take him out. Oh. Oh, I think that was shots from the side. Yeah, that was in. Freehouse playing, able to keep his teammate alive, and that's now going to add in the support you need to try to get together with your teammates. More body shots. That's twice that's happened where they have found a kill and then immediately go for the shots and can't combine for the second. But who's to say, as it's been working out for them, they're able to get themselves a little bit further forward. But is it enough to get a touch so far? It's really just Flameberg in the back. The guy's just feeling toxic on stage. Nothing more than that. He wants to send a message, not just win this. Flameberg. Nice shot to the netty, cleans up revenge. Nobody on the A zone, and you lose Hale super towards A, S, and D. Oh, Flamberg still huge. alive somehow with a cruise wow. missile from Dexy. Three down from Space Force, and this could be it. That's a big investment, and it's going to work out here for them. More than likely, two players on the zone have to play retake, have to go for Space Force. First tick, locked in here on A. 40 seconds on the clock, have to clear, and then you have to hold, but it's not looking great. Finally, a bit of life here. Gotta say revenge, have to do all up, have to team up 1v1 for the point reacts trying to get a read but he will be shut down as space force will not go quietly into the night they are still here to fight breathing sighs of relief right now 
Four back up, 10 playing 11, 30 seconds left for Army to put this away to three. Oh, sweet, but now Space Force starting to get the gears turning a little bit. The kills going their way, the lives now just barely out of their favor. But it's time that you have to worry about 14 seconds and Czech's gonna be able to touch this one. But Tom on the flank, he's gonna get timing. Two down for Space Force, and it looks like they've done enough. It might just be, but Reacts trying to just bolt it to the point. Won't have an opportunity. No more arrows in a position to touch. And Space Force do grab their first round. That's not right. Scripted. <laughs> so it's not going to be a 3-0 sweep in the control. We go another round here. And Space Force they can start to wipe the sweat off their brows. How do they take an offense though, Austin? I, I think it starts with not breaking off to B. I, I think that was a strategy that you know some people will do to get the ticks under their belt, but right now you don't need ticks. You need a round win. And so you have to go to A, you have to capture it first. It starts with one round, but you're gonna need two offensive rounds here. We'll see if they can try to make something happen early. Have to get through Czech, who has been just so good in some of these moments. And it's gonna be a clean trade here. So they do get on the zone early. Flameberg looking to try to reinforce. Nades coming on out. Will get a good connection as the trophy now comes in, but he immediately will eliminate it. So they are not gonna be protected whatsoever. Attack nades can come flying in, but they are still losing a lot of their numbers. Tomasego, six in a row, revenge, big win there. Back in for the 1v1, but Taxi from downtown keeps the round going here for the A zone at least. And Thomas gonna sneak in, time stop, Dexy for the flank, and he wraps around just in time to hold on to A. Not bad whatsoever though, they get two ticks at A and they still got plenty of time to work with. So if they're able to capture this B zone, this gives them a lot of time to work for just a single tick at A, and revenge now starting to come alive as he finds himself a double. Kamase with the streak here, so we don't we know that army, well at least Flameberg used their streak back in that last round, so they're not gonna have a cruise missile if it comes to it. So for Space Force, is it gonna be a tool that wins them this game or he yeah, just continuing Huge. to be an issue? He's gonna get traded, and that's three down for the army. All right, they're here. They're starting to do it. Up by four lives. Both zones being attacked at the exact same time. Someone's gonna have to go to revenge. He's got a nice little jump spot. Chow's gonna come through. Check has no idea where he is. Secondary Chow almost there. Seven HP and a dream for Reacts. But while this happens, B has been captured and it looks like they will get that extra minute needed. Minute 47, one segment at a needed. Space Force starting to get the ball rolling here, and it's what you like to see. Better late than never to the party. As for Space Force, it hasn't been too much of a party just yet, but I'm sure they're ready to spin this action. Kamase starting to heat up, takes down Flameberg, and Reacts goes down. Now the gates are open. Oh boy, it's happening, Colin. Space Force are starting to put it together. Coming out big. It's not over till it's over. Kill after kill. The kill feed has just been lighting up blue. Flameberg, can he do anything from the back? Good for one. Can't get there in time. Space Force down 0-2. But they bring it back to round five. And now we got ourselves a grand final. This is what I've been waiting for from Space Force. They've been asleep at the wheel, but now here they are. And I think it's really, you gotta look at Kavase and what he's able to put away, put away for this, you know, map three control. Gets the cruise missile as well, and it wasn't needed. So you start to see the kills starting to go this way in Space Force. It's almost like they're giving hope to the crowd that yes. this grand final can maybe push further and further into the best of seven, but they have to win another offense. They have to do it twice. <laughs> Once is simply not enough. And sometimes that's all you ever see in a single map of invasion control. But here we go, right onto A. They get over here pretty quickly. It's Hama getting wall banked to the middle, but the kills are looking good. The cover fire is in. Dexy does a good job of finding one and now reacts, looking to pounce on the flank. Open shots, oh! reacts, and they line up. Three down for Space Force. Kappa stays still on A. So Czech's gonna have to commit himself over to this point. Cleanups are out. The second tick's gonna be denied. And over towards B, Space Force, they have to reel themselves back in. Oh, when they needed the most, Reacts comes up huge. What a two-piece that is. And then immediately flies to B, combines for a second, slows things down, and tries to get something going here with his squad. Army, will they have a chance to be able to get it in? No, they will 
will not. That's going to be three down and now a chance to lock in B. And I think this is a chance to fly to A even. If you can get some members over towards this A zone, you pull Army away from B. You allow these players to safely capture it. You still have player number six, Revenge, just being so annoying over towards Laundry. You need these kills at B. Sadly, they don't happen. You can see what Revenge was trying to do, draw pressure away, allow his teammates to lock in that final tick, but it's not gonna happen. The defenders were really just coming up huge for the side of Army. Check over the top of the tank, won't be able to find it. Can they find the trades? No, Flamer! How about that three piece? Has a chance at all four, as he's now gonna push forward. A huge multi-kill with 40 seconds left in round five. Slides in the door, says, say my name, Flamer with four in a row. Round five control and army, they have it all right now. The cruise missile finds nothing from Kabase, and that's gonna be this B zone on lock for the army. Oh, feels like this might be the final push. Space Force have to get this tick to get that extra minute on the zone. And Flameberg just will walk through every single member up to five in a row. Won't earn the streak, but doesn't even matter because you gotta still cut through a couple more defenders before you're gonna see this zone. 10 seconds on the clock. Oh, they gotta go. Oh, but they're just running into fire after fire. Nowhere to go. One final touch. One second on the clock. And Dexy says, no, you do not. That's map number three for Army. The Army, the Harbringers of Death right now in this grand final. Just non-stop kills at the end of that round five. And it was a valiant effort from the Space Force. You thought for a second they had it. Especially over towards that A zone. But some big clutch plays from Check some big clutch plays from Drexy, and it just falls out of your fingertips there. What a series we've had. The control, finally we get some semblance of life from this Space Force team, but now they have to do the impossible, what we've never seen before, and reverse sweep a best of seven. Four games in a row is required if they want to hoist that trophy. That is one of the biggest asks you will, you'll ever ask, especially when you have a team like Army that is just making so few mistakes. They are a, a difficult team to beat at the moment, and you're seeing it. They have certainly made the right adjustments, and they just need one more map to put it away. But this does give a chance for the player to take a quick break, go grab a drink, try to reset, try to bring this one back, because we're going to throw it to a break. When we come back, it might be all done and dusted in map number four.
Hello, everyone, and welcome back to ForceCon 2024. We are getting into the thick of it, maybe even the end of it, as it is 3-0 up for Army. They're looking to put it away in four, and we just have not got enough out of their opponents. We're looking for a big bounce back coming in here. We'll see if they can try to get it done here, Colin. A best of seven reverse sweep. Only once in the history of CDL slash challengers have we seen it and it was this year on this title back in Miami for the Miami challengers grand finals with only reverse sweep we've ever seen aside from that I think the only other thing that I could think of was a miracle like that was back in Cold War the Toronto best of nine reverse sweep that they lost right it was oh. heartbreaking but man way to bring that one up it was the only time those miracles have ever been seen in a Call of Duty Grand Final, and now we need to see another one from Space Force this time, heading into a six-star hardpoint, down 3-0. What are you saying to the team between the break, Austin, to kind of bring those hypes up? I mean, it, it's, a, it's a tall task to even say anything after this, but I mean, the only thing you can say is, it starts with this map right here, and you gotta win every single one. You take it map by map, you don't try to put too much pressure on anybody. You have to just collectively come together and just hope that everybody and trust that everyone's going to fulfill their role. That's all you can do in a situation like this. It felt like they got a bit of life at the end of that control. And if we got that earlier on in the series, maybe we'd be at a different score count. But this is how it's played out. This is the situation they're in. And now it is do or die from here on out. You've got to be perfect. It's all about trust. It's all about the comms that we're going to be getting from the Space Force. We know the Army loves Six Star, but for Space Force, this is their chance to turn it around. Down 3-0, Six Star, ready, go. We're hopping on with Army first. First blood will come through here quite cleanly. And now we'll see if they can turn this in to what will likely be a bit of a lockdown on P1, but if you're able to get that PT rotation, that's what really allows you to start soaking up some time and holding on to the favorite side of the map. We'll see if they can do exactly that, but for now, the kill's looking solid. Space Force have been able to get themselves on the time. Now they're just trying to hold on to it. Yeah, it's a good time, too, for P1. It's usually really hotly contested from both sides. Army just looking to hold on to these spawns for P2. Finally, a contest in. Jack is going to stay alive. Not for a long three down. Make it four down for the Army. Now Space Force not going to pull those spawns just yet. They still have to find another set of kills. 30 seconds secured. I mean, this is exactly what we saw in the first map on subbase, but it was in favor of Army. So a much better start, and it's also a nice little flank at the back. I would say almost able to combine for what would have been a massive two-piece. So not going to be able to finish off the second, but does enough damage to get his teammates forward, and now they push through the back. That will be a huge kill. Trying to influence the spawns. They find a very clean break. Well, this is the Space Force that I'm kind of waiting for, Austin. A couple kills going their way. Confidence showing in these gunfights, and they are locking down the lanes. 50 seconds now of time for the Space Force team as they are starting to work their way back into the Grand Finals. Wow, this is looking like a different Space Force so far. I like what I'm seeing, a team that wants to bring it back that is not out. But they still have to try to fight for 20 seconds here. Revenge, gonna give it a go. How about that little snap? Able to find one, gets a good read on Flameberg, who's gonna have to also hit the gas. And Flameberg does get those final couple shots, secures the kill, but it's just scrap time that's gonna come through. Now on the rotation for Army, looking for these spawns in the back. Dexy's gonna win a fight for his Kavase, backing up now for both members. I'm sure you know the other is here, but Hale slides in with wow. Renetti. Dexy wins it again, ridiculous, with just an MCW. That is gonna send these Space Force players in disarray. A couple of spawns out, and now to collapse in. Dexy three in a row to keep Army in contention for this hill. And Flameberg does a good job of getting to the back. Now we'll lock down that closer spawn to the hill. A lot of it's going to go neutral as they try to fight through mid. Not going to get an eye on React, who's able to finesse for one more. So does a good job of slowing down the push. Down to the front. Revenge has been great so far. Six and three. Looking for the entries. Won't combine for a second. And it's Flameberg that's up to five. Looking for number six to earn the cruise. React's cut down. Last chance for a break. Jack has been soaking up all the time in P3. But first Space Force, you're hoping to break through. Revenge, an unfortunate team nade onto Kavase. 
And that's definitely going to slow things down. That early lead off of P1 and 2, Army have made sure that it has been cut down to size now. Only a couple seconds lead these ones. Check still finding kills on the hill. Kamase stuck between three members. And that's the Army bringing us back into P4. Yeah, they've been able to rebound quite nicely. Very swift rotation to the back of P3. Locked down the majority of the time. But a great response here from Space Force. They'll get three down themselves. This is going to give them a bit of room to work with. And Atama, look at this position. Wants to pinch up this play. Flamebird going to call in the streak. Going to give his teammates the call it, but doesn't matter. Seems like it's going to be a two-for-one trade. Atama gets everything he needs to make sure this push doesn't come through fast. But there's still a chance now as they group up and break in. Uh, Cruise Missile is used, and Space Force, they still break in. Revenge still holding on to this time. And the gunfights wow. for Space Force keeps them in the lead for this map. Unreal plays coming out from Revenge, even when that kill streak gets burned from Flameberg so early on and then their set of kills you're looking over towards the rotations into the bottom right there's a big one-on-one -on -one going on between player number one check and player number eight Kamase Kamase is gonna win things out and now with numbers Space Force they have the lead and they have the rotation it's gonna have to be a break from the front of the army no flank setup hey I'm watching the hop up also responsible for trying to watch the back here so a lot to just rely on one person to do both but Hale's able to grab himself the kill nonetheless. Dexy wants to try his attempt at maybe coming up top, but Hale's good for two, so now it's going to be a push through the back. Flameberg able to get himself close enough to the point where he might be able to break. His teammates also getting close to the hill as well. Can they double up? Can they find the trades? All blue in the feed so far. Can Check get something done? No, he will not be able to do it. Space Force are looking solid on their holds now. It's the teamwork, the trades that we're seeing from them, the multi-kills when they need to for Space Force are giving them an edge in this game. Game, but there, when you have Flameberg set up and you're going to have another recontest from the Space Force team, you still have members from Space Force finding value in these moments and they're walking away with a big chunk of time on a lot of these hills. 141 to 79, heading into the second set of rotations here. A couple members to note for Space Force is Revenge and Atama heating up in a hard point. 11 and 8, 13 and 7. That is what was missing back on subbase. That's right. They're showing up in a big way. I mean, the kills are just on a different level this time around, but it feels like they're also first to just about every single hill, or they're finding quick breaks. And that's another three down, reacts the last one up, and that's now four down, as well as the favorite side of the map coming on through. So this is a very scary moment. What are you going to be able to do? Can you try to push all the way in and flip out the spawns? Also, potential streak also coming back in. A big play here for Flameberg, and Revenge is going to win it. Now looking to punish the spawns. Reacts in reaction, going to funnel through the fence cleans up revenge so it's a job well done in terms of locking down these spawns in the rotation over towards p2 but again look at revenge Austin, they're losing time on p1 and the pinch from revenge off the respawn finding value over towards the army it's too dead for revenge and another break in the back of p2 Wow, check goes big there, finding that trade. Flameberg has also been able to shut down just a few of the respawners coming back out onto the map. So everyone's going to be forced into this poolside area. And it's not always easy to try to funnel through, especially when you got no one pinching. But Revenge has won that gunfight through mid. So now the pinch through mid, the push through the back. Can they collapse? The kills are looking solid so far. They find two on the entry. Dexy able to get one back. He's waiting patiently for the secondary challenge. And Dexy comes up big for two. Army hold on to the 2v3. Yeah, big three-piece there off the back of Dexy. To Flameberg into the hard point, but you look at Space Force spawning right next to it, so they're gonna be able to battle for the back half of this scrap time. Still finding kills there is Jack, and the heads up play from Flameberg not able to take down Atama, but it's already too late. Atama has to decide to rotate through mid. Reacts is there, it's four down for Space Force. They spawn over towards P4, still have kills to find. It's Flameberg in the back, and Flameberg only able to get one. 123 to 183 now. Just a hard point separating both of these squads. Have to remember that Space Force, they need this as well as three more maps. So it only starts here, but it's been a much better look thus far. Check trying to cut through mid. Has to find the player, and he will be able to do so. Now turns his attention to the hill. Won't be able to combine for two. Flameberg in the back. Does enough to break in. One more gunfight to follow through, and he does manage to break in. Close spawn should be secured now for Army. Yeah, Flameberg starting to turn on for Army. 30 seconds here. 
It's gonna bring you into striking distance of an even game. Struggling oh there for the boy. kill is a top line check. He's been letting him know he since game two. Been. And he's not gonna stop anytime soon. Check still finding kills through the middle of the mag. Kaba say finally gonna cut him down and actually breaks through the front. Dexy's gonna have to play rebound here over towards this P4 side, but not able to find those players. Space Force have pushed over the 200 point marker. And we know this team already has broken this P4 hill. Army, they cannot feel comfortable now. And they do stiff out one. That was Hale who was just laying down by the poolside, looking to try to pull off a nice little sneaky position. It won't work out for him. They do a good job of taking him out. Now for the front and up top. Gonna have to try to break on through. Nate stuns all pouring over. Atama, that's a tough gunfight to take in the AR as well. Reign supreme through the poolside. So far, so good for the first 20 seconds. This is where you get a break if you're the army, but you have to make sure you lock down these lanes. Revenge hopping in for a potential break from the side, just waiting for the players to set up for the pinch. The check's gonna see him, pops up for one, swings around, Flamberg helps him. Wow. Still check finding the kills. It is a complete four down between the two. Flamberg has his streak again, 29 and 15. They have brought this all the way back. We're gonna have a lead swap by, I believe, one single second. The kill's now coming through on rotation. This could very well be the game. You lock down a full 60 here. That's enough to secure the dub. Both teams putting so much priority on getting into the point. Flamberg has a chance to blow it open. He's on seven in a row, but it's finally shut down, and the trade's coming through in the nick of time, but they have to flood from the front. Yeah, and they get the break in. Reacts is gonna jump through the back window. Time here for the Army. Space Force on the less preferred break side. Revenge is going to take down Atama, but they're going to funnel in the staircase. Reacts not able to swap to the Renetti. Dexy goes down, and Space Force in check, looking for the break. Definitely 9 HP. The respect being shown, and Kavase holding on for now. Oh, another lead change. It's tied 218 to 218. Flamer gets in. What a double up that is. Does he have a read in the back? Looks like the answer is yes, but he can't take the gunfight. Revenge finds the entry. Space Force trying to hold on. Fighting for this scrap time. 10 seconds left. Army will secure it, but now we reset. We go back to P1. It looks like we're setting up Austin for a photo finish here and a potential grand final finish. Space Force, they need to win this to keep this grand final going. Army, they win this. There, you're back to back champions only 16 seconds needed for the army space force holding on with everything they got left in the tank check though he's been great in these situations but they don't make sure he has no influence here flamer however a different story he's on two in a row looking to build it up a little bit further trying to end it dexy over the top of the pistol is good space force are gonna have to really gear up for a big push do they have a way in the answer looks to be yes for now Spawning up far here and back into it. Only five seconds left. The army, they're setting up to win it all. To be your champions. Nobody's in. Reacts finds a kill. Kaba Se goes down. And Czech's gonna call game. That's the grand finals. Your champions, the U.S. Army. They were tested, but they were never bested. They were pressed, but they were never finessed. They are your Force Con 2024 champions, and they do it in incredible fashion. Everybody getting up, handshakes, hugs. At the end of the day, it's all about that sportsmanship, that competitiveness. We saw it from the Army. They lose in the winner's final in a game five fashion to this Space Force team. They take down the Marines in the lower final with a quick 3-0 sweep. They battle back into that trophy chance. And now for the second year in a row, they hoist it above their heads. Give it up for Army! Back-to-back -back champions! What a way to go out. My goodness, these guys may have lost that winner's final, but it's all about the bounce back. And that's exactly what they do. They come out swinging 
in this grand final. They never gave them any room to breathe. Even when there was moments where it looked like they might have had a chance, they stole it away from them. They went clutch and they went big in those final moments. And that's what you love to see here from this squad that are now your champions. Uh, it's going to sting for sure for the Space Force. So close to being victors, being champions on the day. They kind of get that monster out of their closet back in the winner's final. But when the rematch comes, they're just a little bit too cold to arm up to this army team. And you started to see it towards the end of that game three. You started to see it in that game four as well. They have such a lead on that six star hard point. And for a second, you believed. But it was all snuffed out. The army, they take care of business. And, you know, champion sounds pretty good for the army branch. It sure does, man. They did it in incredible fashion. These guys the entire way through. They were your number one seed in day number one. And I love to see a team that struggles and then bounces back, comes out with that fierce competitive factor that gets them over the top, that gets them that big dub, and gets them that beautiful trophy in the back. They're going to be walking home with that. I know these guys got to be feeling great, Cole. It's going to be a memory that I'm sure a lot of these players are going to remember for a long time. It's a good thing going on here for Force Gone three years in a row. These branches going head to head. And it's not going to see a brand new champion just yet, Austin. <laughs> not just yet. But now we're going to throw it to Spider Tiff up on stage with your champion. Let's go, guys. Congratulations once again in order for your back to back Force Con champions. Look at them nodding. They're like, that's right, that's right. Come on, cheese it up a little bit. All right, Dexy, we're going to kick things off with you. That was phenomenal. Let Talk me back through the moment where, because this was a rematch, right? So what did you guys do to prep in order to come back swinging? So honestly, uh, all we really did was we went back. Uh, we talked about, we said, hey, look, we made a lot of mistakes. If we play our game, we're going to win. So that's what we did. Played the game and won. All right, for you though, in some of those critical moments, I almost thought that Space Force was gonna claw back. So how do you kind of regain in a moment where things start to look like they're slipping out of your control? I love that for you. All right, Reacts, this one's for you. We chatted earlier on the stage. You were like, I'm going to hit him with that sweep. Do I need to bring you a broom? Because you did it. <laughs> it happened. It happened. So how, what does that win mean to you then? We deserve it. All right, throw it on over to Flameberg because we saw a lot of monumental moments that came not only from all four of you, but specifically you. How do we always seem to find ourselves in the right place at the right time? I love that. I love that, guys. All right, so whoever's got it, you've got it here, but are there any shout outs, any final words that you want to give out to this moment? Because I mean, look, you guys just hoisted that trophy in sheer dominating fashion. I love it. Guys, once again, this is your 2024 ForceCon champions. Make some noise. In the meantime, we're going to throw it back on over to our casters for some final thoughts. Thank you so much, Spider Tiff, for that incredible interview with all of our champions up there. All of them, of course, feeling on top of the world. Why wouldn't they be? But I like what they're saying, you know, having trust in each other, making sure that everyone's fulfilling their role. I mean, that's what really matters when you talk about winning in Call of Duty. Yeah. That's exactly what they did today, Colin. Nobody told me these are substitutes on the Army branch either. No, I didn't know that Coming out with just a month of practice, looking that dominant, and you have Flameberg obviously kind of coaching them through this Getting one, yelling ready. at them at two hours of sleep, he said. But <laughs> uh, what a way to kind of whip this team into shape for the, the yeah. Force Con in such short time. It's win like that on the main stage. Uh, not just anybody could do that. That is some strong individual players with a great competitive mindset.
Well, let's take a look at our bracket and exactly see how we got here. It's been a heck of a day. Of course, this all started with our round robin yesterday. All of these guys were playing each other, all five of our squads, and that's what determined the seeding. But you take a look at that upper bracket. It was looking solid. We had a banger winner's final as well. But the Army, they lost that one. They had to win in the lower bracket, bring that one back, head into that grand final, and they had all the momentum, and they made sure to never let up on the gas whatsoever. Back in the winner's final, they said they just weren't able to play their game and they talked it over into the break and it's exactly the talk that kind of bounced them right back there they dominated the winners final or the grand final they didn't just do that they made it look so easy in some they of those did. early maps map one map two they looked unstoppable map three yeah, a little bit shaky map four you trail behind for so long quite like that vista back in the winners final but they get the job done in four a four oh sweep to be your back-to-back -back champions when it comes down to the army branch itself uh, that is a big thing to kind of take home. Absolutely it is. Who's your MVP, Colin? Who, who stood up for you? <laughs> I, I can't say anybody other than Flameberg. I mean, Flameberg, I like he said that he was listening to the communication. He was just you know, setting himself up in good spots, but just the amount of times it happened, the fact that it was such a consistent factor for this Army team, he has to be on top for the MVP. I like that call. It really did feel like almost every single life we saw him, he was creating some big influence on the map, and that doesn't go unnoticed. That impact is felt, and it was clearly felt on the other side because because this guy was putting up some huge massive numbers through just about every single game mode which is just as impressive the consistency was fantastic so that is going to do it here for colin and i it has been a fantastic day we are now going to throw it back at the spider tip for the medal ceremony all right and we're back with a very special segment here we've got to get our boys their hardware and presenting our medals today at forcecon will be chris wiley chief department of the air force esports who will be along some of our special guests we're going to be kicking things off with presenting the medal for our third place finisher technical sergeant justin guthier ncois from the Department of the Air Force Esports, going to the Marines. All right, Marines, those medals are looking pretty clean. One more time, give it up for them. Moving on over to present our second place finishers will be Tyler from Gold Star Gamers. And our second place finishers are the Space Force. Now, as we turn our attention on over to who will be presenting our top place finishing here at ForceCon 2024, Ryan from Gold Star Gamers presenting your 2024 ForceCon champions, the Army.
There it is, guys. Forcecon, once again, make some noise for all of our players on stage today. Thank you so much to everyone who made Forcecon a success. From the U.S. Armed Forces, the players, the crew, everyone behind the scenes, and more importantly, the fans who showed up in the stadium to support all of us. Because let me just tell you, ForceCon would not be the same without all of you. Until next time, guys, keep gaming. That's all for us at ForceCon, signing off.